Reincarnation of the Strongest Sword God Chapter 451 to Chapter 500 Have fun reading as well as listening. Hey guys! Can I trouble all of you for a moment? Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button so you won't miss new audiobook updates. That's all. Thank you. Chapter 451, Massacre At cold laughter's command, the other red names exploded into action. Elementalists and cursemancers started chanting, rangers knocked their arrows, and shield warriors, guardian knights, and the other melee classes prepared to intercept any escape attempts. Black Flame, both our parties will open a path to our left. There's a forest in that direction, so it will be easy to lose them once we're inside, Virtuous Cloud hurriedly said as she raised her shield in preparation to take damage. Seeing that Black Flame's party members had such high levels, it was very unlikely that they would be weak. Although they were still outnumbered, 12 on 50 was still a lot better than 6 on 50. Not to mention, Black Flame's party was clearly stronger than her party. There was still a chance for them to break through the encirclement. However, before Virtuous Cloud had finished speaking, Fire Dance had already taken action. Using Shadow Steps, Fire Dance immediately appeared behind Cold Laughter. In an instant, her blood red short sword slashed across the back of Cold Laughter's head. Cold Laughter had no hope against Fire Dance's speed. Before he knew it, a damage of minus 1106 points appeared above his head, his HP instantly falling by one third. When Cold Laughter saw the other True Fire Blade coming in for another attack, he was instantly afraid. Scram! Cold Laughter urgently used Whirlwind Slash, slashing his greatsword horizontally towards Fire Dance. Berserkers were known for their strength. In addition, Whirlwind Slash greatly increased the might of an attack by utilizing momentum. Even if Fire Dance had a higher strength, she couldn't defend against his attack. Dang. However, as if his greatsword had struck an immovable wall, the weapon stopped right beside Fire Dance, unable to advance. For a moment, Cold Laughter even felt his hands go numb. How? When Cold Laughter saw the blood-red short sword in Fire Dance's hand block his greatsword effortlessly, he could no longer hide his fear. Was this an assassin? This question echoed through Cold Laughter's mind. During Cold Laughter's brief moment of shock, Fire Dance twisted the true fire blade in her hand, disengaging from Cold Laughter's greatsword and forcing the berserker to retreat by a few steps. Fire Dance then swung her other arm, sliding the other true fire blade smoothly into Cold Laughter's chest. Although Berserkers focused on strength, with the difference in equipment, Fire Dance's strength left Cold Laughter's in the dust, despite her agility-focused class. This was the cruel reality of God's domain. Equipment spoke volumes. Class advantage was meaningless in the face of powerful equipment. Cold Laughter hurriedly tried to defend against Fire Dance's sword. However, the latter gave him no opportunity to do so. Shadow Strike Suddenly, Fire Dance disappeared, her entire person passing through Cold Laughter and appearing behind the Berserker. Although Cold Laughter tried to turn towards the assassin, the damage of minus 3,426 points that appeared above his head had emptied his remaining HP, immediately, Cold Laughter's vision began to gray. The battle had ended before it had even started. From beginning to end, Cold Laughter had not known what was happening. Wasn't she just an assassin who was two levels higher than him? Yet, he couldn't even put up a fight. Is the gap between players really that intense? Cold Laughter didn't understand. Fire Dance's appearance had shattered his past preconceptions. However, even if doubt filled the Berserker's mind, his body still fell to the ground. Only an instant had passed from the moment Fire Dance had taken action. The surrounding red names had only noticed Fire Dance's disappearance before she suddenly reappeared in front of Cold Laughter. In the next moment, Cold Laughter's body hit the ground. Their boss and the only expert in their team had died, just like that. The consequences of death for a red name spoke for themselves. Not only had Cold Laughter dropped a majority of his equipment, but he would also lose at least three levels. Seeing this, the surrounding red names were scared stiff. So fast. Admiration filled Virtuous Cloud's gaze as she watched Fire Dance. No matter how one viewed Cold Laughter, he was not an ordinary player. The fact that he was level 24 and the leader of these elite players proved it. His dark red name also spoke of his countless player kills. He could not be underestimated, and she wasn't even confident of defeating the Berserker. Yet, Fire Dance had killed the red name in the blink of an eye. Meanwhile, after killing Cold Laughter, Fire Dance had not stopped. Spinning around, she dashed towards the enemy magical classes. Currently, the stunned crowd was like a herd of frightened sheep. Fire Dance reached the magical classes easily, and killing each with a single hit, she instantly eliminated another three players. Unwilling to fall behind, Blackie also began to wave his staff and cast Hell Flame. Green pillars of fire suddenly rose among the crowd, and any players the flames touched received multiple damages of over minus 2000 points. 
Before these players could escape Hellflame's range, they died. In an instant, another dozen or so players had lost their lives. Aqua Rose joined the fray, casting Flame Barrage and downing another six players. Flying Shadow had long since charged into the crowd as well, massacring the red names. Even though many tried to resist, Flying Shadow dealt with all of them easily. The male assassin was like a ghost, his movements erratic. None of the red names could even catch sight of the man, let alone damage him. On the contrary, due to friendly fire, they even killed some of their own. By the time the red names realized the situation, they had lost over half of their numbers. Run. With less than half of their original army remaining, these red names no longer had the confidence to face fire dance and the others. Don't you think that it is a little too late to escape now? Shurfong could not help but sigh as he watched the scattering red names. Even if Shurfang's party and these red names were on the same level regarding attributes, which they certainly were not, Fire Dance and the others would still have annihilated them easily. In a moment's time, Fire Dance's group of five had devastated the fifty red names. Equipment and corpses littered the ground. With a rough estimate, the red names dropped close to three hundred pieces of equipment. Furthermore, the lowest quality was bronze ranked. If sold, they could make a fortune from the loot. Virtuous Cloud, who stood beside Shurfong all this time, was utterly shocked. Only now did she realize why Black Flame's party members had been so calm. So they weren't putting on an act at all. Virtuous Cloud glanced at Shurfong, a hint of shame surfacing on her face. Originally, she thought that Shurfang's group was simply a bunch of rich tycoons who were ignorant about worldly affairs. Now, however, it would seem that she had been greatly mistaken. With such frightening strength, it was no wonder they paid no attention to these red names. Thank you for saving our lives, Virtuous Cloud said as she took out a Warfire set piece from her bag, intending to give it to Shurfong. I don't have anything else on me that I can offer, so please accept these Warfire Bracers. When Virtuous Cloud's party members saw her use a Warfire set piece as payment for their rescue, although their hearts ached at the sight, none of them tried to hinder their party leader's actions. It had not been easy to reach their current levels. If they died, not only would they lose a level, but every one of them would also have to lose a piece of equipment. Losing the Warfire Bracers was more affordable. Moreover, Virtuous Cloud's decision could also allow them to forge a connection with an expert. This was a welcomed opportunity for all of them. Warfire Bracers Shurfong had plenty of Warfire set pieces in his bag, enough to form three sets and more. He only lacked the Warfire Bracers. Thanks, but you don't have to. Why not sell it to me instead? As we had previously agreed, I'll buy it for ten gold coins. Saying so, Shurfong traded ten gold coins to Virtuous Cloud. He then added the Warfire Bracers to his bag. Finally, a complete Warfire set equipment. When Shurfong looked at the completed Warfire set equipment in his bag, an indescribable sense of joy filling his heart. Chapter 452 Warfire In White Fog Canyon's inner region, a large group of players currently faced a level 27 Lord. Although these players only inflicted around minus 100 damage with each attack, there were over 2,000 players attacking simultaneously. In the end, the Lord died, unable to withstand the barrage of attacks. Haha. -ha. What good luck. A level 25 fine gold weapon dropped. Lone Tyrant laughed after he finished organizing the loot. During this period, aside from searching for Black Flame's whereabouts, they had also searched for and killed Lord ranked monsters. After such a long time, they had managed to kill over a dozen lords. However, the drop rate of level 25 fine gold ranked weapons and equipment was very low. They had only obtained two pieces, one was a cloth armor, while the other was the weapon that had just dropped. Everything else they obtained was mainly secret silver ranked. When the overwhelming smile elite saw the level 25 fine gold weapon in Lone Tyrant's hand, they nearly failed to contain their drool. A level 25 fine gold weapon was the equivalent of a level 20 dark gold weapon. The former's attributes were even slightly better than the latter. One could even say that level 25 fine gold weapons were the best weapons currently available in God's domain. Aside from Zero Wing, there was no news of other guilds in White River City possessing level 25 fine gold weapons. Now, however, Overwhelming Smile had finally obtained one of their very own. Although they possessed far fewer level 25 fine gold weapons than Zero Wing, it was still proof of Overwhelming Smile's strength. Unfortunately, the elite members of Overwhelming Smile could only look at the level 25 fine gold weapon. They would have to wait a long time before they could obtain one for themselves. In order to kill the dozen or so lords, Overwhelming Smile had sacrificed many members. The price they had paid was simply unimaginable. At this moment, however, Lone Tyrant handed the level 25 fine gold dagger to Summer Sunshine. Everyone's hearts ached when they saw the exchange. They had only obtained this level 25 fine gold dagger after killing over a dozen lords with great difficulty, yet they actually gave it to an outsider without batting an eye. Oh, this dagger is quite good. It's slightly better than my level 20 dark gold dagger, Summer Sunshine said after he gave the level 25 fine gold dagger a few swings. 
Nodding with satisfaction, he said, All right, let's search for another lord, then. Wait a minute, Yulan suddenly said. Is there a problem? Summer Sunshine asked as he turned to Yulan. Big Brother Summer, I've just received information that someone has spotted Black Flame. He is currently in the outer region of White Fog Canyon. If we hurry, we can still catch him, Yulan said. After Black Flame had killed Overwhelming Smile's expert, Oriental Sword, all traces of the man had vanished. To avoid letting Black Flame escape, Yulan had prohibited Overwhelming Smile's members from acting rashly and alerting the enemy, giving Black Flame the chance to take preventive measures. All this time, they had searched for Black Flame in secret and had posted a bounty for the man. Unfortunately, even after so much time, nobody had seen the swordsman. Now that they had received news of Black Flame, they could not let him go. Black Flame was too famous. At this rate, Zero Wing would become increasingly difficult to deal with, and it would become very difficult for Overwhelming Smile to take control of White River City. He has finally shown himself. Good. Let's head over there immediately. I want to see just how strong the number one expert of Star Moon Kingdom is, Summer Sunshine said as he sheathed the dagger he had just received, anticipation filling his eyes. I'll have to trouble Big Brother Summer, then. Yulan smiled faintly. Although she had constantly searched for ways to deal with Black Flame, she was still not confident of killing him. Now, however, they had an expert like Summer Sunshine on their side. Moreover, Summer Sunshine had just received a new weapon. Combined with the plans she had prepared, she was 90% certain that they could take Black Flame's life this time. Even if Black Flame were as strong as a lord, he would still die at her hands. Elsewhere, after Sherfong had obtained the Warfire Bracers and completed the Warfire Set equipment, he had not equipped the set himself. Instead, he passed it to Fire Dance. From the side, Virtuous Cloud and the others widened their eyes in shock when they saw Sherfong reveal the completed Warfire Set equipment. Cloud, is that the Warfire Set equipment, one of Virtuous Cloud's party members secretly asked through the party chat. For a moment, he had even doubted his own eyes. MHM. It should be, possible. I think. Even when Virtuous Cloud saw the flowing purple light unique to the Warfire Set equipment, she still found it hard to believe what she saw. Someone had actually completed the Warfire Set equipment. Just how difficult was it to collect each piece of the set? Since the discovery of the Warfire Set equipment in White Fog Canyon, less than 10 pieces of the Warfire Set had dropped. Various guilds and tycoons had purchased these pieces. Moreover, based the information she had obtained, many of the pieces obtained were duplicates. Even with all 10 pieces, a full set had still not dropped. However, Sherfong had retrieved 7 Warfire Set pieces from his back without a single duplicate. Virtuous Cloud could not fathom how Sherfong had accomplished such a feat she had grinded for the set pieces for several days now, so she knew full well just how difficult it was to obtain even one. Just how powerful was Sherfang's backing for him to gather a complete set? Guild Leader Fire Dance was astonished when she looked at the Warfire Set equipment inside her bag. She had personally seen the Warfire Set equipment's attributes before. It was definitely top-tier equipment. Only, the set required a lot of EXP to upgrade. However, if someone upgraded the Warfire Set equipment to find gold rank, below level 30, it was one of the best sets available in the game. Yet, instead of using it himself, Sherfong had actually given her the first set. Sherfang's actions confused her. Black Flame was famous throughout the Star Moon Kingdom. If Zero Wing wished to continue flourishing, Black Flame needed to continue improving. Hence, all equipment should naturally be prioritized for Black Flame. However, leveling up is my priority right now. Even if I equip the set, the bronze rank set effects are not particularly useful. If I sacrifice my EXP to raise the set's quality, it will do me more harm than good. Moreover, with Zero Wing's current situation, what the guild lacks isn't top-tier experts but experts with overwhelming might. Don't reject it. I still have Warfire set pieces, so don't worry about it, Sherfong laughed. MHM. Fire Dance understood Sherfang's intentions. Zero Wing had no lack of top-tier experts. Facing so many powerful guilds, what Zero Wing needed most was an expert capable of turning the tides of battle by themselves. Following which, Fire Dance replaced her equipment with the Warfire set equipment. Immediately, Fire Dance started upgrading the set's quality. After her level fell from level 26 to level 25, the Warfire set equipment had reached mysterious iron rank. The basic attributes of the set had increased significantly. Warfire set equipment, mysterious iron rank, can be evolved. Level 20, level 30. Can be equipped by any classes. Set consists of seven parts, head, chest, belt, hands, wrist, legs, and feet. Set effect, Mysterious Iron Rank. Two-piece effect, all attributes plus 15. Four-piece effect, ignore levels plus 10. Obtain free will skill, able to remove all control effects for 7 seconds. Cooldown, 1 minute. 
7 piece effect, main attribute increased by 12%. Skill cooldown decreased by 35%. Obtain more fire berserk skill, damage increased by 50%, attack speed increased by 50%, and movement speed increased by 30% for 20 seconds. Cooldown, 4 minutes. Chapter 453, Favor. Sister Fire Dance, you look so beautiful in that set. Violet Cloud said enviously. The rest of the party promptly nodded in agreement. One had to admit that the Warfire set equipment was indeed exquisite. The set Fire Dance wore a mix of red and black leather, coupled with the two dazzling True Fire blades hanging from her waist. Without a doubt, the set had enhanced the assassin's allure. A hint of awe moved her teammates' hearts. After Fire Dance had equipped the Warfire set, although her attributes had fallen slightly, no one present viewed her as any weaker. It had been some time since God's domain had launched. Even if one were only an ordinary player, their natural instincts had sharpened. Previously, no one had felt any particular way when they saw Fire Dance. Now, however, she gave off the same sense as a thorned rose, beautiful and deadly, and any who approached her would very likely pay with their lives. Previously, Fire Dance had a total of 4,960 HP. After equipping the Warfire set equipment, however, her maximum HP had fallen to 4,380. Her other attributes had similarly decreased. One of the main reasons was that the Warfire set was still mysterious iron rank right now. The set's basic attributes could not compare to the level 25 fine gold and secret silver equipment she had worn before, though it did possess set effects that the individual pieces of equipment had not. Among the set effects, the skill, free will, was extremely useful. When used against an enemy with powerful control skills, free will could instantly turn the tide of battle. Moreover, unlike her other attributes that had decreased, her agility had increased. As a result, she was now far more nimble. The 35% cooldown reduction she received for all her skills also increased the variety of skill combinations she could implement. Most importantly was the Warfire Berserk, a Berserk skill. Although Warfire Berserk was not as powerful as the Berserk skill Shurfung possessed, a player with a Berserk skill was still superior to a player without one. Because of this, Envy blossomed in Fire Dance's friends when they saw her in her new armor. After Virtuous Cloud recovered from her daze, she pulled her gaze from Fire Dance and turned to Shurfung. She was no longer as relaxed as she had been, growing far more cautious. Originally, she had intended to sell the remaining Warfire set piece to Shurfung as well. However, she now dismissed this idea. Even a fool could tell that Shurfong was a powerful character. Moreover, Fire Dance and the others had referred to Black Flame as their guild leader. Compared to minor existences like themselves, he was in an entirely different world. Not only had Shurfong saved their lives, but he had also purchased the Warfire Bracers they had for more than the market price. They already owed Shurfong a huge favor. If she tried to sell the second Warfire set piece to Shurfong at a high price, she would be ashamed herself. Virtuous Cloud disliked owing other people favors. She was not comfortable until she repaid what she owed. Hence, she looked towards Shurfong and asked softly, Guild Leader Black Flame. I have something I wish to seek your help with. Sure, Shurfong replied in a carefree manner. It was thanks to Virtuous Cloud that he had been able to complete the Warfire set equipment. He had no issues with helping her with a small request. Our party consists of only independent players, so it isn't easy for us to obtain equipment for ourselves. I still have another Warfire set piece with me. Would it be possible to trade it for six pieces of level 20 secret silver equipment? Virtuous Cloud asked, slightly embarrassed. The market price for the Warfire set was 8 gold per piece. As for level 20 secret silver equipment, a few days ago, each was worth roughly 1 or 2 gold. However, as players' levels increased and teams successfully raided more level 20 team dungeons, the value of secret silver equipment fell sharply. Currently, one piece of level 20 secret silver equipment was only worth around 90 silver, six pieces would cost around 5 gold at most. Listening to Virtuous Cloud's request, Shurfong immediately understood her intentions. She obviously did not wish to owe him a favor. No problem. However, I don't have that many level 20 secret silver equipment on me, though there are plenty back in our warehouse. I'm just about to head back to the city anyway. Will one of you follow me to pick out the equipment? Shurfong tried not to be a hypocrite. Since Virtuous Cloud wanted to avoid owing him a favor, he would not try to force her to accept his goodwill. I'll pass you the Warfire set piece first, then, Virtuous Cloud said as she happily traded a pair of Warfire boots to Shurfong. When Shurfong agreed to her request, she felt like a weight had been lifted from her shoulders. When Shurfong saw that it was a pair of boots, he was somewhat disappointed, but in the end, it was still another piece of the Warfire set. He'd rather have duplicates than none at all. After they had concluded their trade, Shurfong and the others wandered down the main road, heading towards the exit of White Fog Canyon. Players could not use return scrolls inside White Fog Canyon. Hence, Shurfong and the others needed to leave the canyon on foot before they could teleport back to the city. Shurfong had reaped a massive harvest from his trip to White Fog Canyon this time. 
Not only had he obtained a large stock of Starfire ore, but he had also gained many Warfire set pieces. Most importantly, he had managed to snatch the Golden Stone Tablet. Seeing as the Golden Stone Tablet warranted even a great lord's protection, it had to be incredibly precious. Sure Foam suspected it was just as valuable as an epic item, if not more. Initially, Sure Foam had planned to begin researching the Golden Stone Tablet as soon as possible. However, when he thought about how he was still in White Fog Canyon and that Anubis's gatekeeper was still alive, he immediately suppressed his excitement. After all, there was no guarantee that the Great Lord would not follow him. Hence, Sherfoam intended to return to White River City before studying the Stone Tablet. Even if the gatekeeper showed up in White River City, it would not be a threat. Sherfoam might even take advantage of the opportunity to get rid of the gatekeeper. After all, White River City was under Weissman's protection, a Tier 4 Great Wizard. With just the strength of a Tier 3 class, the Anubis's gatekeeper could not run rampant in the city. Just as Sherfoam and the others were about to reach White Fog Canyon's exit, a group suddenly blocked their way. Virtuous Cloud and her team turned grim at the sight. There sure are a lot of people. Sure Foam could not help but laugh as he surveyed the surrounding forests. Several thousand players had hidden in the forest on either side of the road. Even with dulled senses, Sure Foam could still detect them. Guild leader Black Flame, Yulan greeted as she slowly walked out of the forest, smiling faintly at Sure Foam. Since you've discovered us, I guess we don't need to hide anymore. Everyone, come out. Following which, swarms of players emerged from the surrounding cover, their numbers exceeding 2,000. Every player was an elite of overwhelming smile. These 2,000 elite players had blocked off the road leading out of White Fog Canyon, and they all emitted a cold killing intent as they glowered at Sherfang's group. Compared to the red names who had assaulted them previously, these elite players had far better equipment. I wonder what business overwhelming smile has with me today. Sherfang pondered aloud as he observed his surroundings, searching for a gap that he could take advantage of. In his current weakened state, it would be somewhat difficult to escape the encirclement of 2,000 elite players. Furthermore, he had his team to consider. Guild leader Black Flame must be joking, Yulan said as she watched her target carefully, finding the man truly interesting. Even against 2,000 overwhelming smile elites, his expression had not changed in the slightest. Previously, you killed over a hundred of our guild members. If word of that gets out, we'll be a laughingstock. I've specifically sought out guild leader Black Flame today to seek reparations. Chapter 454, Bloody Battle Listening to Yulan's words, even a fool could tell that overwhelming smile had come to redeem their reputation. Miss Yulan, are you suggesting that we start an all-out war? Sure Foam blatantly asked. Regarding the matter with Oriental Sword, if Overwhelming Smile had not been the one to take action first, Sure Foam would not have bothered with killing him. After all, Zero Wing currently wielded a relatively significant advantage in White River City. Although Overwhelming Smile's financial attack had been considerably powerful, it would not last too long. Even if Sure Foam ignored it, Overwhelming Smile would soon self-destruct. The opposing guild understood the situation quite well. Their current goal was only to delay Zero Wing's development and cause some trouble. Their true aim was to consolidate the strength of the five cities surrounding White River City. After Underworld secured full control of those five cities, taking Zero Wing out would be effortless. Guild leader, Black Flame, why must you put it like that? I have only come to demand justice for our guild's brethren. Why would I start an all-out war between our two guilds? Yulan said, chuckling. Demand justice. Sure Foam could not help but laugh. You must think highly of me. You've actually brought 2,000 people to deal with me. Am I really that scary? I don't know about others, but I know full well what you are capable of. If I don't have this many allies around me, how could I possibly stand before you, the number one expert of Star Moon Kingdom? Yulan said as she shook her head. If Shurfong had been alone, Yulan would have been certain that Shurfong could escape. He might even kill her before he fled. After all, he had done just that with Lone Tyrant. Now that so much time had passed, Yulan refused to believe that Shurfong had not grown stronger. Since Zero Wing was capable of offering top-tier equipment to even its ordinary members, as the leader of the guild, how could Shurfang's equipment be inferior? What are your intentions, then? Shurfang asked. As long as you let us kill you once, we will forget about this matter altogether. How about it? Yulan said. Neither of our guilds stand to benefit from an all-out war. In fact, such a situation will only allow other guilds to take advantage of us. I hope that you will consider your options carefully. Bah. Don't even think about it. Even if we die, we will not let our guild leader suffer such humiliation. Blackie and the others stepped forward in retaliation. Facing their current predicament, they had already prepared to fight to the death. If news about Zero Wing's guild leader becoming a martyr spread, Zero Wing would become the laughingstock of God's domain. How was Zero Wing supposed to continue developing in God's domain then? I'll open a path in a moment. 
Escape if you can. Sherfong sure ordered his party as he unsheathed the abyssal blade in the purgatory shadow, a cold glint flashing in his eyes. He then turned to Virtuous Cloud. Apologizing, he said, I really am sorry for dragging you into our guild struggles. However, if you are to clarify things with overwhelming smile, they should not touch you. After all, this is a matter between guilds, independent players are innocent. Currently, Sherfong was still in a weakened state with all of his attributes reduced by 80%. Although he did not know what the outcome of today's battle would be, he swore that he would repay this debt of blood tenfold in the future. Guild leader, Black Flame, don't worry about it. Those red names should have killed us. How can we sit by and do nothing when you've been cornered? Virtuous Cloud stated as she raised her secret silver shield and walked to the forefront of the team. Virtuous Cloud's party members nodded in agreement as they readied their weapons. They were prepared to face the 2000 elite players alongside Sherfone. An army of 2000 elite players, their silent stance in the distance was enough to frighten any ordinary player, much less the killing intent they emitted. When Virtuous Cloud and her party members saw overwhelming smiles battle formations, they paled. The pressure they felt from this army was far greater than any they had felt from red names in the past. Virtuous Cloud suddenly thought of the red names they had faced as nothing more than cute dolls. Against 50 players, they still had a chance to flee. However, against 2,000 players, only death awaited them. Since you insist on being stubborn, don't blame us for being rude. Yolan's lips unconsciously curled into a smile when she saw the stern expressions of Shurfang's team. Immediately, she made a wave with her hand. Kill them. Suddenly, the 2,000 elite players approached Shurfang and his allies slowly and orderly. Simultaneously, a gigantic black magic array emerged in the sky. Suddenly, the magic array released a black light that covered the sky before enveloping every player on the battlefield. Everyone's vision suddenly turned black, unable to see anything at all. After a brief moment of darkness, however, the players regained their sight and felt no discomfort whatsoever. Shurfong was suddenly shocked. This is the effect of the Tier 3 magic scroll, Dead Zone. Any life forms exposed to the black light are silenced for 5 minutes. The scroll's effects also prohibit the usage of any tools. The players tensed when they heard the word, silenced. Although it seemed as if Overwhelming Smile would suffer more from the silent state than Shurfong, his team still had skills such as Blackie Stars of Light and Shurfang's Firestorm. With these two skills, they could obliterate waves of enemies. Not to mention, Shurfang's group also had many AoE attack magic scrolls. Now, however, they couldn't use any of them. Ha ha ha. Black Flame is dead for sure this time. Let's see if he can escape without skills or scrolls. Lone Tyrant rejoiced as he watched his guildmates slowly surround Shurfong. What a pity. I had originally thought I would get a chance to solo that Black Flame. However, I never expected that you still had such a trump card hidden, Yulan. No wonder you are known as the female Juga, one. It seems that I won't have a chance to take him on, Summer Sunshine sighed as he shook his head. Big Brother Summer, Black Flame is not so simple. In a moment, we will still have to rely on you to get rid of him, Yulan said. She was not rash like Lone Tyrant. Before dealing with an enemy, she would always investigate them thoroughly and prepare for the worst possible scenarios. Although the situation seemed in overwhelming Smile's favor, melee combat experts such as Shurfong excelled in situations in which both sides were silenced. If not for the fact that Yulan had her own melee genius, Summer Sunshine, she wouldn't have been as certain of Shurfang's defeat. In that case, let me have a go at him. Hearing Yulan's words, passion and excitement filled Summer Sunshine's gaze as he watched his opponent. Finished speaking, he took a step forward before dashing towards the battlefield. Chapter 455, There Isn't Only One Expert After everyone had been silenced, only the physical classes could display any considerable combat power. The magical classes could only watch from the sidelines. Yulan had long since prepared for this. Among the 2,000 players from Overwhelming Smile, close to two-thirds were physical classes. Moreover, Overwhelming Smile's attack formation was well organized. Shield warriors and guardian knights led the attack, closely followed by the berserkers, swordsmen, and assassins. Rangers stood the furthest behind, launching a ranged attack. The road leading out of White Fog Canyon had suddenly transformed into an ancient battlefield. Advanced towards the left, Sherfong took the lead and charged towards thinnest concentration of enemies. His and Virtuous Cloud's teams promptly followed. However, before Sherfong and the others had taken even a few steps, hundreds of arrows suddenly blotted out the sky. Virtuous Cloud's three magical class members were simply too weak in terms of agility and strength. Moreover, magical classes were usually not adept at dodging attacks as they usually dealt damage from a safe distance. Hence, when the first wave of arrows rained down on them, the three party members immediately died and dropped a piece of their equipment. Stranger. Mouse. Roach. Virtuous Cloud's vision turned red after she watched her party members die. Glaring at the overwhelming smile members in front of her, she gripped her shield and charged forward, die. 
Unfortunately, although Virtuous Cloud's equipment and level were considerably good, she could not hold her own against five shield warriors and guardians knights of the same caliber. The overwhelming smile elites forced Virtuous Cloud back, preventing her from reaching the rear rangers. Virtuous Cloud's other two party members faced a similar situation. No matter how hard they tried to attack, the enemy held them off. In the end, Virtuous Cloud's party was forced into a constant retreat. In the next moment, however, two figures suddenly brushed past Virtuous Cloud's party, slamming into overwhelming smiles and tease. Among the two figures, the most dazzling was Fire Dance. Brandishing her true fire blades, she sent a blazing arc smashing into a level 23 MT's shield. In the next moment, the assassin forced the MT back by over a dozen steps, and even the players behind said MT had to back up. Immediately after, Fire Dance swung one of her swords at a guardian knight beside her. She flung that guardian knight back by half a dozen yards as well, his body slamming into his fellow guild members. Her strength was astonishing. With a single attack, Fire Dance had shattered overwhelming smiles formation. Her strength was overwhelming. She fought like a war goddess. Everyone from Overwhelming Smile was left utterly speechless. While the crowd from Overwhelming Smile was dazed, Fire Dance continued to brandish her short swords as she weaved her way across the enemy front lines. Every time she swung the true fire blades, red streaks of light would follow. And wherever those red streaks of light passed, the members of Overwhelming Smile would be blown off their feet. No one could block Fire Dance's swords. In a short moment, the assassin had shattered Overwhelming Smile's interception. Although Overwhelming Smile's members had tried to attack Fire Dance, the woman was too fast. Before they even swung their weapons, Fire Dance had already run off. She never focused on a single location, giving Overwhelming Smile no opportunities to surround her. On the other hand, although Overwhelming Smile's members could not attack Fire Dance, she could bombard them easily. Against level 23 MTs, her casual strike could deal close to minus 1000 damage. If she was lucky and triggered a critical hit or flame state, one attack could deal over minus 2000 damage. The elite MTs of Overwhelming Smile usually had around 4300 HP, whereas those with better equipment had around 4500 HP, Fire Dance only needed around 4 or 5 attacks to kill one of them. Flying Shadow also fared quite well. Although his attacks were not as frightening as Fire Dance's, against MTs, he could still deal around minus 700 damage with each hit. As if they were in a world of their own, Fire Dance and Flying Shadow started a bloodied massacre within Overwhelming Smile's front lines. On the other hand, Overwhelming Smile's players found it difficult to catch either of them, much less deal damage. A tier 1 class was significantly stronger than a tier 0 class. Even without skills, a tier 1 class could still overwhelm and suppress a tier 0 class with their attributes. Furthermore, Fire Dance and Flying Shadow both possessed equipment that was far superior to the enemy elites. By this time, Sherfone had also activated the 7 Luminaries Rings Aura of Time. Although silence prevented the usage of skills and spells, it did not impact passive effects. Immediately, enemies within a 150-yard radius of Sherfone had their movement speed and attack speed reduced by 30%. This debuff weakened Overwhelming Smile further in close quarters combat. In the meantime, Sherfone was responsible for protecting Aqua Rose and the other magical classes as they slowly advanced. Realistically, this task should have fallen to Flying Shadow. However, Sherfeng's attributes were currently reduced by 80%, he was about on par with a level 20 ordinary player right now. On top of that, he couldn't use any skills. Melee combat was a competition of attributes and techniques. Compared to Fire Dance and Flying Shadow, the power he could display was significantly inferior. Hence, it was better if he focused on deflecting arrows for the others. In a few moments, Fire Dance and Flying Shadow had carved out a path of blood, allowing Sherfone and the others to pass safely. How did that Fire Dance become so strong? Lone Tyrant, who observed the battle from afar, was dumbfounded as he watched the unstoppable assassin, his fists clenching. He refused to believe the scene was real. He had personally witnessed Fire Dance's strength before. Although she was certainly a top-tier expert, she had not been unstoppable. Moreover, Fire Dance was an assassin, not a strength-based class. Yet, her attacks could even overwhelm Berserkers. Against MTs, Fire Dance still required 4 or 5 hits to finish them off. Against other assassins, however, one of her attacks devoured their HP. If she achieved a critical hit, they would die instantly. This scene had frightened Overwhelming Smile's assassins to a standstill. Sure enough, Zero Wing is trouble. Yulan frowned as she watched Fire Dance's performance. When she had planned this assault, she had not considered Fire Dance and the others as forces to be reckoned with. Facing 2,000 players in a melee battle, a top-tier expert was limited in what they could accomplish. However, Yulan never expected such a performance from both Fire Dance and Flying Shadow. Kill them. Those in the back, keep up. Do not let them escape. Yulan shouted anxiously. Originally, one black flame was enough trouble. Now, however, there were Fire Dance and the slightly weaker Flying Shadow. If Overwhelming Smile did not kill these three people today and hinder their growth, they would only become more dangerous in the future. 
The longer Yulan watched fire dance and flying shadow slaughter her people, the more she felt that God's domain was completely different from past virtual reality games. It was far more beneficial to have individuals with overwhelming combat power than it was to rely on the strength of numbers. Overwhelming smile members began to converge on Shifeng's group faster. However, due to the aura of time's effect, the army could not keep up with Shifeng and his team's movement speed. As a result, the distance between them only increased as time passed. Meanwhile, the number of enemies between Shifeng's group and Freedom continued to decrease. Just as the Zero Wing members and their surviving allies were about to break free from the encirclement, a dark figure emerged from the crowd and dashed towards Shifeng. This was none other than the level 26 assassin, Summer Sunshine. Even with the movement speed reduction effect of the aura of time, Summer Sunshine was still frighteningly fast. He quickly caught up with Shifeng, who covered Aqua Rose and the others' retreat. You should just stay behind. Summer Sunshine chuckled as he stood in front of Shifeng, blocking his path. Chapter 456, Death God And just who are you, brat? What a big mouth you have. Believe it or not, if I wasn't silenced right now, I could wipe the floor with you at any given second. Due to having been silenced, Blackie had been disappointed that he could not display his strength. With Summer Sunshine's sudden appearance and his arrogant tone when he spoke to Shifeng, Blackie was instantly enraged. So fast. Looking at the youth in front of them, Aqua Rose discovered that he was actually level 26, the same level as her. She also felt an intensity radiate from this assassin. This intensity was heavier and more chilling than that from a lord-ranked monster. In particular, with confidence and arrogance, he looked at them as if they weren't even the same species, but some lower life forms. He looked down on them like a god over mortals. Just who is this person? Aqua Rose was stunned and confused. Currently, her intuition warned her to flee from this man. This was the first time since she had begun playing God's Domain that she had ever experienced such a feeling. Standing beside Aqua Rose, Violet Cloud was similarly on high alert. After participating in Uroboros' internal competition with Shifeng, she had some understanding of monster-like experts. Compared to Aqua Rose, she knew how frightening these kind of people could be. Immediately, she pulled Blackie, who was prepared to throw himself to Shifeng's defense, back, warning him, Brother Blackie, be careful. That man isn't as simple as he looks. He's on an entirely different level than we are. Violet Cloud's caution calmed Blackie immediately. When he examined Summer Sunshine again, cold sweat suddenly dripped down his forehead. Previously, the frustration of being silenced had clouded his mind, so he had failed to detect the powerful aura or the boundless killing intent that emanated from the cocky assassin. Oh! You guys aren't too shabby after all. You're only the second group of players that I've met since I arrived in Star Moon Kingdom to possess such sharp senses. White River City really is an interesting place. Summer Sunshine could not help his surprise when he saw Aqua Rose and the others' reactions. Not even Underworld's so-called great expert, Ming Sha, had sensed how powerful he was. Yet, Aqua Rose and the others had managed to do so. At least, this showed that they were slightly stronger than Ming Sha. Unfortunately, they were only slightly stronger. Summer Sunshine then pointed towards Shifeng, saying, I'm not interested in you guys, so you can leave. He, however, has to stay. You. Though Blackie wanted to sling a flurry of curses, Shifeng quickly stopped him. You guys can take off, Shifeng said. But. Blackie understood Shifeng's current situation. To face the great lord ranked Anubis as gatekeeper, Shifeng had used a berserk skill. He was still in a weakened state at the moment, and his strength had been significantly reduced. Nothing good would come from soloing Summer Sunshine right now. Can we not defeat him even though we outnumber him? Virtuous Cloud asked with astonishment. She could not understand the Shifeng's party's current performance. They were experts who were capable of defeating 50 red names single-handedly. Yet, now, a single assassin had stopped them in their tracks. Even if the magical classes could not join the fray, the three of them were still elite players. They could defeat a level 26 assassin easily if they worked with Black Flame. You guys need to get going. If you waste any more time, the enemy will catch up. Shifeng waved his hand, rejecting Virtuous Cloud's proposal. Virtuous Cloud and the others had yet to reach that level, so they did not understand how frightening the youth before them was. Aqua Rose was also helpless. If they had not been silenced, they could have helped in this fight. In their current condition, however, they would be nothing more than cannon fodder to the assassin. Hence, taking the initiative, Aqua Rose said, let's go. Following which, Aqua Rose led her party members away. Guild leader, I'll help you, Fire Dance said through the party chat when she noticed Summer Sunshine. No need. Lead Aqua Rose and the others away from here quickly. If anyone catches up, it will be very difficult to escape, Shifeng immediately rejected the offer. It was not because Shifeng did not believe in Fire Dance's strength. However, the youth named Summer Sunshine was not an ordinary expert. Rather, he was someone who stood at the peak of all assassins in God's domain, Death God Summer Sunshine. The reason he had the title of Death God was that Summer Sunshine had successfully become a tier 6 class in the past. 
He was an existence that stood at the peak of God's domain. Summer sunshine and violet cloud were different. Unlike the former, violet cloud had only begun to shine during the later stages of God's domain, eventually becoming a god and standing at the peak of God's domain. However, summer sunshine had stood at that apex since God's domain had launched. He was one of the few OP players. Initially, Sherfone had not believed the rumor about summer sunshine. Now that he saw the man in person, however, he believed it. Why is he participating in a battle between guilds? Based on the information Sherfone had obtained about Summer Sunshine in the past, the man had always been an independent player, he had never joined any powers and had never participated in struggles between powers. Now, however, he was actually helping Underworld. However, there was no point wasting his thoughts. The thing he needed to do right now was to escape. My attributes have been reduced by too much. Even though he is affected by the movement speed reduction of the Aura of Time, my speed should still be inferior to his. I need to figure out a way to shake him off. Sherfone had no intentions of fighting it out with Summer Sunshine right now. He was simply at too much of a disadvantage. If the fight dragged on for too long, the crowd of players from Overwhelming Smile would catch up. He definitely wouldn't be able to hold back the attacks of Summer Sunshine and the elite players. While Sherfone was thinking up of a plan to escape, Summer Sunshine suddenly asked, What? Trying to think of a way to avoid me in battle. I advise you to give up that idea and focus on our fight. I can tell that you are an expert who has also broken through that level. However, it will not be possible for you to throw me off. Saying so, Summer Sunshine took a step forward before abruptly vanishing. In the blink of an eye, he appeared right in front of Sherfone, and before anyone knew it, his snowbright dagger was just several centimeters away from reaching Sherfeng's chest. The entire process was simply too fast. How can he be so fast? Although Fire Dance was currently massacring the members of Overwhelming Smile, she had placed most of her attention on Sherfeng's battle. When she saw Summer Sunshine's attack, her heart was filled with an indescribable sense of shock. Summer Sunshine's swiftness was different from ordinary swiftness. He used an attack method that allowed his speed to become extremely fast by abandoning all unnecessary actions. However, when Summer Sunshine's dagger was about to pierce Sherfeng's chest, the latter suddenly vanished from everyone's sight. Where is he? Lone Tyrant, who was watching the battle from afar, asked in astonishment when he saw Sherfeng suddenly disappear. Sherfeng was definitely silenced. Thus, he was unable to use any skills or tools. Yet, he had still vanished from Lone Tyrant's eyes. This was simply inconceivable. What's going on? Yolan similarly widened her eyes, her complexion turning extremely gloomy. Did he get away, just like that? In reality, it wasn't just Yolan and Lone Tyrant who were shocked. Everyone on the battlefield was also shocked. While stuck in a situation where neither skills nor tools could be used, a living, breathing human being had actually vanished. No matter how one looked at it, this scene defied all common sense. Chapter 457, Fighting Against an Apex Expert This Aqua Rose also could not help her surprise when she saw Sherfone disappear. It wasn't just Aqua Rose who was confused. Even Blackie, who was standing beside her, was stupefied, not to mention Virtuous Cloud and her party, who had little knowledge regarding Sherfone. Everyone present couldn't use any of their skills, and the same went for their tools as well. Just what sort of method did Sherfone use to disappear from everyone's eyes? Moreover, unlike assassins who had to go through a short process before vanishing, Sherfone had taken only an instant to disappear completely. How could I forget that guild leader has this move? At this moment, Fire Dance suddenly recalled that Sherfone knew Void Steps. Aqua Rose and the others had never seen Sherfone use Void Steps before, so they did not know that Sherfone possessed such a card. As for Fire Dance, Flying Shadow, and Violet Cloud, they had personally seen Sherfone use Void Steps before, so they knew how powerful this technique was. Even if Summer Sunshine was incredible, he would be rendered helpless in the face of this move. After all, an enemy that one could not see was quite frightening, moreover, the attack method gave one no time to react at all. Even if Summer Sunshine removed all excess movements and increased his body speed to the maximum, he still could not block Sherfeng's sword. Meanwhile, traces of shock appeared on Summer Sunshine's face as he failed to locate Sherfeng's figure even after he searched his surroundings. Suddenly, Sherfeng appeared beside Summer Sunshine. The silvery gray abyssal blade also abruptly appeared at the assassin's waist, cutting across it. You. Although Summer Sunshine used everything he had to dodge and block Sherfeng's attack, the time the Abyssal Blade had taken to cut him was simply too short. The Abyssal Blade had already struck him before he could even dodge or block, and damage of over minus 400 points subsequently appeared above his head. In just an instant, Summer Sunshine had lost close to one-tenth of his HP. However, Summer Sunshine had quick reactions. After being attacked, he counterattacked, his dagger suddenly striking at Sherfeng's back with even greater speed. With the distance between them so close, there was simply not enough time for Sherfeng to withdraw his sword and defend himself. In addition, Summer Sunshine's attack had no unnecessary actions, so his dagger moved at an extremely fast speed. 
Let alone now, even if Shifeng was not in a weakened state, he would still have great difficulty defending against this strike. In Shifeng's desperate attempt at dodging, the dagger missed its mark and only managed to scrape Shifeng's shoulder. Still, this single attack dealt over minus 800 damage to Shifeng, taking close to half his HP away. You're quite good. You've actually managed to damage me. However, it seems that your attributes have been greatly weakened. I just attacked you once, and you already lost close to half of your HP, Summer Sunshine stated in a carefree manner as he looked at his injured waist. That footwork of yours is amazing. However, you are bound to reveal yourself when you attack. Your one strike took away only around a tenth of my HP. Even if I just exchange damage for damage, it will still be your loss three moves later. But since you were able to harm me, as a reward, I won't suppress you using my attributes. I'll let you see what real strength is. Summer Sunshine spoke in a very casual and overbearing tone. However, Shirfone did not think that Summer Sunshine was bluffing, because the moment the assassin finished speaking, the aura surrounding him underwent a complete change. Previously, he had still leaked out a little killing intent. Now, however, he completely sheathed it. The gaze in his eyes no longer focused on a single point. Instead, it was a gaze that took in everything in the surroundings, looking at everything objectively. This move was none other than Omnivision. However, compared to when Soaring Snake and the other amateurs used it, Summer Sunshine had mastered it to the realm of perfection. As expected of the Death God of God's domain. It seems he won't be that easy to deal with. Shirfong had never fought against such a powerful character in the past. To be precise, he had not had the qualifications to do so. Although a Tier 3 Sword King was similarly very amazing in the eyes of ordinary players, in front of God Tier players, he was no different from an ant. In the past, there was a saying that went around in God's domain, everyone beneath God Tier was an ant. Without becoming a Tier 6 class, one would never know how frightening Tier 6 players truly were. The assassin standing before him was an expert that had always stood at the very peak of God's domain. Shirfong had never expected to fight such an expert. However, the past and the present were different. First and foremost, the summer sunshine before him right now had yet to become a god-tier expert. Meanwhile, Shirfong himself knew void steps and advanced footwork. Defeating summer sunshine and escaping was not necessarily impossible. As for escaping. Looking at summer sunshine's speed, Shirfong knew escaping was not an option unless he defeated the assassin. In reality, there was another method he could use, and that was to execute void steps continuously. However, due to his attributes being reduced, the distance he could move each time was also greatly reduced. Moreover, using void steps multiple times in quick succession was mentally taxing. He would most likely lose consciousness before he could even run one or two hundred yards away. It seems that I can only try to take care of him by continuously using void steps. Shirfong really could not think of a better idea right now. Melee combat relied on attributes and techniques. In terms of attributes, Shirfong was no match for Summer Sunshine at all. Hence, he could only try to gain victory through techniques. Since using Void Steps only once was not enough, then he would use Void Steps twice in a row, once for attacking, and once for dodging. After thinking up to this point, Shirfong immediately used Void Steps and dashed towards Summer Sunshine. Suddenly, Shirfong disappeared from everyone's eyes once more. A short moment later, Shirfong appeared beside Summer Sunshine once more, and the Abyssal Blade was also sweeping towards the Assassin's abdomen. Dang. Suddenly, the sound of metal clashing rang out, a dazzling spark appearing around Summer Sunshine's abdomen. Instead of landing on the assassin's abdomen, the abyssal blade was actually blocked by his dagger. Immediately after, Summer Sunshine used his other dagger to strike at Shirfang's blind spot. Shirfang was shocked. However, with equally fast speed, he promptly used void steps and just barely dodged the dagger's attack. Everyone's hearts trembled when they saw Shirfang and Summer Sunshine exchanging moves. He couldn't have possibly seen through guild leader's footwork, right? Fire Dance could not help but be shocked. Void Steps was an advanced technique that allowed Shirfong to easily defeat a chieftain. Yet, Summer Sunshine had seen through it after just two uses. Your footwork really is mysterious, Summer Sunshine chuckled lightly as he looked indifferently at Shirfong standing four yards away from him. Originally, when I first saw that footwork, I really did think that you had disappeared. However, when you used it the second time, I can say with certainty that you did not disappear. Only, that footwork of yours forces my eyes to automatically ignore all information relating to your existence, which is why you seem to suddenly disappear from my eyes. Unfortunately, you've met me. If it were anyone else, they would really be rendered utterly helpless against you, without undergoing special training. That's right. Shirfong nodded, having no intention of hiding the mechanics of Void Steps. Although Void Steps was an advanced footwork, it was not invincible. In the face of a god-tier expert, it was nothing but a joke. Only, Shirfong had not thought that Summer Sunshine would see through it so quickly. Sure enough, Summer Sunshine's title of Death God was not undeserved. He really was as strong as a monster. Just as Shirfong was thinking of how he should deal with Summer Sunshine, the latter took a step forward, then abruptly dashed towards Shirfong. Chapter 458, Fleeting Sword 
Straight line attacks were very easily seen through, yet Summer Sunshine did not seem to care about using them at all. With Omnivision, Sher Feng's every action was being scrutinized by Summer Sunshine. Even if Sher Feng thought about his next move, Summer Sunshine could immediately see through it and react appropriately. He was not afraid of his attack being seen through at all. Moreover, unlike Summer Sunshine's previous assault, this time, whether it was his movements or the dagger he was swinging at Sher Feng, neither made any noise. His attack was both quick and silent, and it simply gave one no time to react at all. When an ordinary person was moving or attacking, they would always produce some form of sound. A sound would be produced because vibrations would form when an object moved through the air. These vibrations were caused due to energy dispersing from unnecessary actions, and the larger the vibrations, the louder the sound. Although attacks that generated thundering sounds looked very imposing, a lot of energy was wasted. In contrast, the less vibrations one produced when they attacked, the more concentrated the energy behind the attack would be. Naturally, the might of one's attack would also become greater. During a battle, other than sense of sight, a player also heavily relied on their sense of hearing and touch. Through listening to the noise produced by an attack, players could predict the general trajectory of the attack. The vibrations generated when an attack collided with air would also produce an impact, and by feeling this impact with their bodies, players could then take appropriate measures. However, Summer Sunshine's soundless attack was extremely hard to defend against. Originally, launching a soundless attack was already beyond the capabilities of ordinary men. However, Summer Sunshine's every single action was actually soundless. His movements dispersed practically no energy at all. This was already a realm that could not be reached by humans. Just who is he? At a distance, Fire Dance, who was battling while watching Shifeng's battle at the same time, was inwardly shocked when she saw Summer Sunshine's attack. She felt that it was simply inconceivable. Summer Sunshine fully embodied the class known as Assassin, and this was exactly what Fire Dance had been pursuing all along. Originally, Fire Dance had thought Shifeng was belittling her strength too much, which was why he had barred her from fighting against Summer Sunshine. Now, however, it would seem that Shifeng's decision was indeed correct. The gap between Fire Dance and Summer Sunshine was simply unimaginable. If they fought, she did not possess even the slightest chance at securing victory. Sure enough, he really is a monster. Shifeng inwardly sighed when he saw Summer Sunshine charging at him. He finally understood why Summer Sunshine was capable of standing at the peak of God's domain. After experiencing a decade of battles, Shifeng had only managed to achieve a soundless attack after much difficulty. Even so, not every move of his could achieve such a state of soundlessness. Yet, every single action of the assassin before him was actually soundless. The gap between them was simply unfathomable. Shifeng knew that he was currently not a match for Summer Sunshine at all. If he was not silenced nor in a weakened state, he might possess a chance of contending against Summer Sunshine. If he had to rely on pure techniques, however, there was simply no chance for him to win. If this fight took place in reality, it was highly possible that Shifeng would have been defeated by Summer Sunshine in just a single move. Although Shifeng knew that he was not a match for Summer Sunshine, for reasons unknown, there was a sense of joy filling Shifeng's heart right now. Come. Shifeng no longer held back. He used Void Steps again and charged at Summer Sunshine. Void Steps placed a severe burden on its user's mental power. At this moment, however, Shifeng couldn't care less. If he did not use Void Steps, then he would only last a few moves against Summer Sunshine. Since he was going to lose either way, he might as well take the final plunge. After Shifeng disappeared, even though Summer Sunshine hesitated for a slight moment, he still responded very quickly. With a twist of his feet, he suddenly swept the dagger in his hand to his side. Everyone was greatly surprised, confused at just what the assassin was trying to do. However, when the dagger was halfway through its course, sparks were generated as the weapon was abruptly stopped in its path. Immediately after, Shifeng's figure was revealed. Before anyone could react, Shifeng used void steps and disappeared from everyone's sight once more. For a time, everyone watched as Summer Sunshine continuously brandished his daggers, creating dazzling sparks with every swing he made. Those who were ill-informed would think that Summer Sunshine had gone insane. However, everyone present knew that the assassin was currently fighting Shifeng. Moreover, it was obvious that the Summer Sunshine currently held the upper hand in this fight. A battle of such level thoroughly stunned everyone present. Compared to this battle happening right before them, the videos spread on the forums showing the battles of experts were just complete and utter garbage. Presently, everyone had even forgotten about their own battles. All their attention was focused on the battle between Summer Sunshine and Shifeng. This is bad. Fire Dance grew anxious when she looked at Shifeng, who was currently in battle. The strain Void Steps put on its user's mental power was no laughing matter. Previously, when Shifeng had used Void Steps multiple times against a chieftain-ranked monster, his spirit ended up in an exhausted state. Despite his HP still being full back then, he did not have the energy to even move his body. As the battle continued to drag on, Shifeng could feel himself almost reaching his limit. Suddenly, he pulled a distance away from Summer Sunshine. You're really good. You are the first person capable of fighting against me for such a long amount of time. 
However, that move of yours should be placing a huge burden on your mental power, right? I wonder just how many more moves you can handle. Despite having gone through such an intense battle, Summer Sunshine still displayed a calm and indifferent expression on his face. Sure Foam did not give a reply. At this moment, his complexion was deathly pale, and even speaking had become an extremely exhausting task. It seems that you don't have much energy left. Let's finish things then. Ever since entering God's domain, nobody has ever seen this move of mine, and you will be the first one to do so, saying so, Summer Sunshine's expression turned serious. The killing intent he had kept hidden all this time suddenly exploded like a volcano, suffocating all those who felt it. Summer Sunshine was like a ferocious beast that had escaped its cage. In the next moment, his figure dashed towards Shurfoam. However, when Summer Sunshine was halfway to reaching Shurfoam, his body suddenly vanished. Immediately after, he reappeared behind Shurfoam, his dagger tightly held in a reverse grip as he swung it down towards Shurfang's back. Suddenly, the spectators of the battle were stunned. Does he know Void steps as well? Fire Dance said in shock. No, Violet Cloud said. That's second acceleration. Violet Cloud had previously witnessed Warwolf using second acceleration to attack many times before. Void steps was a footwork that caused the opponent to ignore the user's very existence. Even if the opponent was able to see the user, their brains would still categorize this information as useless and promptly ignore it. However, second acceleration was a trick used to fool a person's eyes. Overall, it was a technique inferior to Void Steps. However, Werewolf had used second acceleration on his attack, whereas Summer Sunshine had used second acceleration on his movements. It was clear that Summer Sunshine's technique was several levels above Werewolf. Meanwhile, Sherfone was feeling extremely weak. He was simply unable to block or dodge Summer Sunshine's soundless attack. At this moment, although Sherfone had discovered Summer Sunshine's attack, he was already close to exceeding his mental limit. His body felt extraordinarily heavy. Even if he tried to defend using the Abyssal Blade right now, it was simply impossible for him to keep up with Summer Sunshine's speed. Is this the end? The moment before the attack was about to hit him, Sherfone could not help but have such a thought. No. He definitely could not let it end here. He still needed to reach even greater heights. He definitely could not be defeated here. I need to block it. I must block it. My movements need to be faster. Much faster. At this moment, Sherfoam was wholeheartedly trying to make his movements much faster and more precise. However, he no longer possessed the energy to control the other parts of his body. He could only use the most conservative way he could think of to block Summer Sunshine's attack. At this moment, Sherfang's mind had already forgotten to think, his body forgetting to breathe. When there were only a few centimeters left between Summer Sunshine's dagger and Sherfang's body, the abyssal blade in Sherfang's hand suddenly slid into the Snowbright dagger. Dang! The impact of the two weapons caused the Snowbright Dagger's trajectory to shift, and as a result, the dagger only brushed past Sherfang's body. Chapter 459, Catastrophic An astonished expression appeared on Summer Sunshine's face when he saw his attack miss its mark. How did he manage to block it? Summer Sunshine turned to look at Sherfang. At this moment, he had yet to figure out just how Sherfang had blocked his full-powered blow. His attack just now used footwork he had created after entering God's domain. Not to mention Sherfang's current weakened state, even if Sherfang were in peak condition, it still should have been impossible for him to block it. At this moment, the spectating crowd was similarly shocked by the outcome of the exchange. The battle between Sherfang and Summer Sunshine had already exceeded everyone's understanding of the battles in God's domain. Meanwhile, the last scene only served to add to the confusion in everyone's minds. No matter how one looked at it, Sherfang was not in a good condition. Originally, Summer Sunshine was suppressing him. Yet, despite being clearly on his last breath, Sherfong actually managed to repel Summer Sunshine's mysterious attack. Is that Black Flame a monster? He's not dead even after this. Looking at Sherfang's fragile state, Lone Tyrant sucked in a cold breath in order to suppress the trembling of his body. It seems that Summer Sunshine won't be able to deal with Black Flame by himself. Everyone else, surround Black Flame. Don't bother about the other members of Zero Wing. No matter what, we cannot let Black Flame leave this place alive today. Yulan commanded as she squinted her beautiful eyes. Although she had long since considered the possibility that Summer Sunshine might fail, that had only been a scenario of hers. Now that such a situation had actually happened, she still found it somewhat hard to accept. However, since the problem had already occurred, they needed to solve it immediately. After seeing how powerful Black Flame was, they had even more reason not to let him go. Under Yulan's command, the day's delete members of Overwhelming Smile immediately started taking action, slowly moving to surround Shurfong. Even the members pinning down Fire Dance and the others promptly retreated to join the encirclement. Just as Overwhelming Smile's members took action, Summer Sunshine resumed his attack on Sherfoam. One stab. Two stabs. Three stabs. Five stabs. Ten stabs. 
Instantly, Summer Sunshine stabbed at ten different locations on Shurfang's body. It looked as if the assassin had released ten blades of light piercing directly at Shurfang. All ten attacks were aimed at Shurfang's vital points. If Shurfang failed to block even one of them, his little remaining HP would instantly zero out. Dang. 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 When Summer Sunshine's daggers approached Shurfang's body, a silvery gray glow suddenly flashed across them, deflecting all ten attacks. However, due to the difference in strength, although Summer Sunshine's attacks were all deflected, they still forced Shurfang to retreat several steps. Fortunately, the difference between him and Summer Sunshine was not too great, so Shurfang did not take any damage from the impact. You. How do you know, that swordsmanship? When Summer Sunshine saw Shurfang take action once again, he suddenly recalled a swordsmanship he had seen before. Although Shurfang's mastery of it was still incomplete, having only a few points of semblance, his performance was already very horrifying. Summer Sunshine's question did not receive a reply from Shurfang. At this moment, Shurfang's eyes appeared vacant. He had not heard Summer Sunshine's question at all. He's doing it unconsciously. Summer Sunshine was left slightly speechless when he noticed Shurfang's fragile state. A strong wind was all that would be needed to send Shurfang crumbling to the ground right now. However, Summer Sunshine couldn't care less at the moment. Since he had been entrusted with the task of getting rid of Shurfang, he still needed to complete it, even with Shurfang's mental state already at its limit. On the other hand, even if he did not take action, the approaching members of Overwhelming Smile could still finish off Shurfang. After all, Shurfang was now on his last legs. Just as Summer Sunshine was about to charge at Shurfang, a large black hole appeared in the deep blue sky all at once. A wolf-headed, human-bodied monster suddenly emerged from within the black hole, exuding a frightening aura that constricted the hearts of everyone present. Why is he here? Fire Dance's complexion paled as she raised her head to look at the monster in the air. That wolf-headed monster was none other than the Anubis's gatekeeper. Only, at this moment, the gatekeeper was no longer level 30 but a level 35 great lord, instead. His HP had also risen from 10 million to 15 million. When everyone present looked at the Anubis's gatekeeper, all of them were confused as to why a level 35 great lord would suddenly appear at this place. However, Shurfang's party members understood just why the gatekeeper would show up here. The Golden Stone Tablet The Anubis's gatekeeper had been guarding the Golden Stone Tablet all this time. Now that Shurfang had stolen it, the great lord was naturally here for payback. It's over. We're truly finished this time. As if dealing with overwhelming smile was not enough, now, one more great lord is added into the fray. Blackie had seen for himself how powerful a great lord was. Even after Shurfang went full berserk, the gatekeeper could still toy around with him as if he were a little boy. Not to mention, the gatekeeper's level had even received an upgrade now. Who knew how much stronger the great lord was? Although Blackie and the others sank into despair, the crowd from Overwhelming Smile was on cloud nine. Overwhelming Smile's main goal had been to raid the great lord of White Fog Canyon, only it was simply too difficult to approach the great lord inside the ruined shrine. The endless waves of goblins gave them no chance to raid the great lord at all. A great lord. Lone Tyrant's eyes blazed. A field great lord was a fantastic opportunity for them to obtain an epic item. Everyone, retreat for now. Scouting parties, keep an eye on the great lord. Have all overwhelming smile members inside White Fog Canyon gather at my location. We cannot let anyone else have this great lord. Yolan was similarly feeling very excited. Although the Great Lord's level was somewhat high, God's Domain's second system upgrade had significantly weakened the effects of level suppression. It was not like they didn't have a chance at successfully raiding the Great Lord. Other than assembling the elite members of Overwhelming Smile inside White Fog Canyon, Yolan had also sent for the elite members present at other locations. AOO, the Anubis's gatekeeper suddenly howled. All at once, a wolf's howl echoed throughout the entire White Fog Canyon, making all who heard it shiver in fear. Even the trees were trembling in the face of this howl. After the gatekeeper released his angry bellow, he turned to look at the crowd from overwhelming smile below him. Suddenly, the gatekeeper squinted his eyes, a bone-chilling light flashing in them. In the next moment, a black spear appeared in the gatekeeper's hand. Silver flames abruptly emerged from the spear as the gatekeeper aimed the weapon at the crowd from overwhelming smile and threw it. Shio. The black spear easily rent the obstructing air and landed in the center of the crowd. In the next moment, a fiery inferno erupted into the air high enough to be clearly visible to every player in the outer area of White Fog Canyon. When the spear landed, all players within a radius of 40 yards died. Not a single one survived. Since the overwhelming smile members stood very close together, just this single attack resulted in the loss of several hundred elite members. This. Lone Tyrant's eyes nearly popped out of their sockets. How was this a monster? Even a casual attack possessed such catastrophic power. This was practically a god. Players like them could barely even be considered cannon fodder. Before Lone Tyrant could finish his words, another black spear appeared in the gatekeeper's hands. 
Once more, the gatekeeper threw his weapon into the crowd below, killing hundreds with his attack yet again. Everyone, retreat. Retreat into the forests. Yolan's expression turned extremely ugly upon seeing these catastrophic attacks. She had never imagined that a great lord was actually this powerful. Not to mention five or six thousand elite players, even tens of thousands of elite players would not be enough as warm-up for this monster. If everyone were to continue idling around without taking cover, they would be completely wiped out in only a moment. As for Black Flame, they could only set him aside for now. Upon hearing Yulan's command, everyone promptly charged towards the forests without hesitation. Nobody was foolish enough to stand around and serve as live target practice for the Anubis's gatekeeper. Summer Sunshine looked at your phone, then at the gatekeeper in the sky. Heaving a sigh, he turned around and departed. Fire Dance immediately charged up to the nearly unconscious Shurfone and dragged him into the nearby forest to hide. After hiding themselves among the trees, Shurfone and the others were freed from their combative state. At this moment, Shurfone was forcibly logged out of God's domain and put into his sleep space. Chapter 460, All Out War During the time Shurfone was in deep slumber, White Fog Canyon had become a forbidden land for players. White Fog Canyon was a special region where returned scrolls were unusable. After the Anubis's gatekeeper came out from the land of the Fallen Star, he would kill any player he met. As a result, countless players grinding for the Warfire set equipment were massacred. Although the various guilds in White River City tried to overwhelm the gatekeeper through sheer numbers, how could a level 35 Great Lord possibly be that easy to deal with? After receiving a few annihilation spears from the gatekeeper, the various guilds in White River City acknowledged their mistake and promptly withdrew from White Fog Canyon, no longer daring to take even half a step inside. At this moment, everyone realized that, compared to the High Lords they had raided before, a Great Lord was on an entirely different level. Although High Lords possessed many AoE skills and could cause players a significant amount of trouble, their usage of such skills was infrequent. They would still give players a little breather. As for a Great Lord. Without hesitation, a Great Lord would immediately use spells of mass destruction. Moreover, it would use them repeatedly in quick succession. Even several tens of thousands of players would not suffice to raid a Great Lord. Fortunately, the Anubis's gatekeeper would not leave White Fog Canyon and only roamed inside the canyon itself. As a result, White Fog Canyon was no longer a gold mine for players but a forbidden land, instead. As for the players grinding for the Warfire set equipment, they all gave up on the Enterprise. White Fog Canyon was originally a very dangerous place. Now, there was even a roaming Anubis's gatekeeper inside the canyon. Any who met the gatekeeper only had death awaiting them. Moreover, the Warfire set equipment's drop rate was simply too abysmal. Many who were already entertaining thoughts of giving up had their resolves hardened with the appearance of the gatekeeper. However, the matter regarding White Fog Canyon was still insignificant because after the second system upgrade, it became somewhat easier to increase one's reputation in cities. Hence, the various guilds promptly started grinding for reputation. At the same time, they also began to secretly amass coins. As soon as they possessed sufficient reputation, they could go into high gear, purchasing real estate in the city and paving a path for their own development in the future. The various guilds throughout God's domain started waging a covert war as they all tried to earn coins. There was only a limited number of ways to earn coins in God's domain, obtaining it from the drops of monsters, quest rewards, trading with players, and selling junk to NPCs. A guild's main method of earning coins would be through monster drops and quest rewards. However, for guilds without their own guild residences, the amount of coins they could earn through quest rewards was minimal, so monster drops became the fastest source of income for such guilds. As a result, areas with abundant resources became the competition grounds of guilds, leaving independent players with no opportunity to grind for coins at those locations. However, at this critical juncture, a jaw-dropping incident occurred in White River City. Two of the major guilds in White River City, Zero Wing and Overwhelming Smile, actually started an all-out war with each other. They even declared each other as hostile guilds through the system. As long as their members met out in the fields, a battle was bound to occur. Since the two guilds were hostile guilds, members of both guilds would not become red names when killing each other. Hence, the members of both guilds had zero hesitation over starting a battle with members of the opposing guild. While other guilds were silently developing themselves and grinding for coins, Zero Wing and Overwhelming Smile had suddenly launched an all-or-nothing war against each other. Of course, the other guilds in White River City could not be more joyful over this development. They all simply chose to sit back and watch from the sidelines, taking advantage of the situation at appropriate times. They could not help but hope that these two guilds would suffer a mutual demise. After all, an all-out war like this would greatly affect both guilds involved. In just the first day since Zero Wing and Overwhelming Smile declared war on each other, thousands of members of both guilds had already died to each other out in the fields. Since these players were fighting for their respective guilds, both guilds had established a reward system. As long as their members killed a player from the opposing guild, the system would automatically record the achievement. Through these kills, members could receive contribution points. 
Moreover, the number of contribution points awarded would vary, depending on the position of the hostile guild's member killed. The higher the enemy's position was, the more contribution points awarded. Killing an enemy player who had killed many fellow members would also reward more contribution points. Contribution points could then be exchanged for guild points, and these guild points could be exchanged for items available inside the guild's warehouse. This was undeniably a competition between both guilds' background and financial prowess. Inside a bar in White River City, close to a hundred players were drinking and chatting merrily. They discussed their personal harvests, matters regarding the secret pavilion's God's Domain Experts list, and such topics. At this stage of the game, the bars throughout God's Domain had long since become the place for independent players to exchange information. Do you guys want to know why Zero Wing and Overwhelming Smile, two of the most powerful guilds in White River City, suddenly started an all-out war with each other? A level 20 ranger asked the female cleric seated beside him while drinking his beer. Do you know the reason? The cleric girl blinked her eyes, slightly skeptical about the ranger's words. Of course. I have a brother who is an elite member of Overwhelming Smile. He even personally witnessed the reason why both guilds started the war, the ranger youth said proudly. I got a shock when I first heard about this incident from the brother of mine. Can you tell me about it? The female cleric asked with great curiosity. The ranger's voice was quite loud when he spoke, so the players inside the bar heard his words very clearly. At this moment, all of them perked up their ears as well. Zero Wing and Overwhelming Smile were the tyrants of White River City. With the two guilds warring with each other, the hostilities would greatly affect White River City as a whole. As inhabitants of White River City, the players were naturally curious about why these two major guilds would wage an all-out war against each other. Proudly, that ranger you've said, in reality, it was because Overwhelming Smile's members had come into conflict with Zero Wing's members. In the end, Black Flame had slaughtered Overwhelming Smile's hundred-man team. In a fit of rage, the higher-ups of Overwhelming Smile secretly set out to kill the guild leader of Zero Wing, Black Flame. Back then, Overwhelming Smile had sent a total of 2,000 elite members. Overwhelming Smile had even invited the help of an extremely powerful expert. If not for the Anubis's gatekeeper showing up, Black Flame might have been killed back then. Having their guild leader encircled was a great humiliation for Zero Wing. Naturally, they would not let matters rest. In the end, they declared an all-out war with Overwhelming Smile. The players inside the bar felt that the ranger's words sounded logical. This was a matter of the guild's reputation. How could Zero Wing possibly concede this matter? Moreover, the hostility present between the two guilds was something long-standing. Obviously, after the encirclement this time, Zero Wing could finally endure Overwhelming Smile's antics no longer. I wonder which guild will come out victorious in this all-out war. I think that it should be Overwhelming Smile. The guild's main headquarters is based in Maple City. It also possesses massive financial support. Haven't you seen how excellent the benefits offered by Overwhelming Smile are? Just the monthly salary of the elite members is enough to make one drool. How could Zero Wing possibly compare? It should be Zero Wing. After all, this place is White River City. Zero Wing possesses a guild residence here. Moreover, there are plenty of experts in the guild. You can't imagine just how excellent the benefits provided by their guild hall are. Among them, the most welcomed is the private rooms. One can accumulate double EXP buffs by resting inside these private rooms. Moreover, Zero Wing's guild warehouse is the envy of every guild in White River City. There are plenty of level 25 equipment stored inside. Right now, many of the players who had defected to overwhelming smile regret leaving in the first place. For a time, everyone in the bar discussed the war between the two major guilds. However, a party of six, seated at a corner of the bar, smiled contemptuously over this matter. It seems that Black Flame only amounts to this much. Leader, must we really go searching for him, a level 26 swordsman murmured. Search. Only after testing him would we know whether or not he qualifies. Chapter 461, Exceeding Potential When the sun set, Sherfone had already been in deep slumber for over a dozen hours. D. 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 The virtual gaming cabin inside the bedroom continuously let out a warning sound. At this moment, the nutrient solution inside the virtual gaming cabin was already depleted. After the alarm of the gaming cabin rang for some time, the cover of the cabin suddenly opened. So tired. Sherfone opened his eyes and unwillingly climbed out of the virtual gaming cabin. He then took a look at the time. What? I've actually slept for 18 hours. Although he had exceeded his mental limit once again, it was not as severe as the first time. Even so, he had still slept for such a long time. Just what is going on here? After Sherfone woke up, his entire body felt drained. Even the nutrient solution he had refilled just a few days ago was completely exhausted. Normally, a full tank of nutrient solution could last a player 15 days. The previous time Sherfone had exceeded his limit, some solution still remained. Now, however, the tank was completely emptied. However, compared to the matter of the nutrient solution's depletion, his body's current condition was much more inconceivable for Sherfone. 
Not only was his body extremely weak, but he also felt a piercing hunger that he had never felt before. He was so hungry that he could eat an entire cow right now. Although Shifeng did not understand what was going on, he did know that, if he did not replenish his body's nutrients at once, he could very well faint from hunger. He immediately retrieved the two bottles of S-rank nutrient fluid he had set aside for his parents. At this moment, Shifeng could clearly tell that the hunger he was feeling did not come from his stomach. Instead, it was his body that starved of energy. Even eating a meal would not sate this hunger. What he needed to do right now was replenish the energy of the cells inside his body. Meanwhile, the S-rank nutrient fluids were the best solution for this problem. After removing the cap, Shifeng directly gulped down a bottle of S-rank nutrient fluid. When the S-rank nutrient fluid reached Shifeng's intestinal tract, the originally cooling liquid suddenly transformed into a warm current that moved through his blood, re-energizing his entire body. Five minutes after drinking the S-rank nutrient fluid, Shifeng felt much more comfortable than before. His spirit had also recovered significantly, and his body was no longer trembling as it had before. The value of 1 million credits was really not overstated. However, this feeling only lasted for a short while before the feeling of hunger flooded his mind once more. He felt as if he was a wolf that had been starving for three consecutive days, a bite of meat was simply not enough to save him. The hunger he was feeling right now was even more intense than earlier. Is one bottle not enough? Shifeng was speechless. A single battle actually required him to sacrifice two bottles of S-rank nutrient fluids. No choice. Shifeng could only remove the cap on the last bottle of S-rank nutrient fluid and empty its contents. Originally, one had to wait an interval of three to five days before consuming another bottle of S-rank nutrient fluid as the energy contained within the liquid was extremely concentrated. A person's body was simply incapable of completely absorbing all that energy. Instead, drinking two bottles consecutively would only damage one's body due to overnutrition. When Shifeng drank the second bottle, he felt a little heartache. Each bottle cost one million credits. Moreover, one could not simply purchase S-rank nutrient fluids even if they could afford it. In the past, even though he had been the guild leader of Shadow, he only got to drink one bottle a month. Now, he had actually drunk two bottles in a single day. If others were to find out about this, they would definitely look down on him as a wastrel. However, S-rank nutrient fluids were indeed amazing. After drinking two bottles and resting for a few minutes, Shifeng was already completely rid of his fatigue. His body had also recovered to normal. Following which, Shifeng drank another dozen or so bottles of A-rank nutrient fluid before recovering to his peak condition. Is it my imagination? After recovering completely, Shifeng suddenly discovered that his five senses were much more acute than before. Originally, he could never hear the chirping of birds when inside his bedroom. Now, however, he could actually hear it. Besides being able to hear the chirping of birds, when Shifeng looked at his own room, he was also able to see with much greater clarity than before. His mind had also become much faster. Did breaking through my mental limit multiple times allow my brain to become more active? Shifeng's heart was filled with ecstasy. He had tried fortifying his body many times before to increase the flow of blood into his brain, in addition to providing his body with various nutrients. He had done so to develop his brain's potential and boost its activity level, so that he could create his legacy in God's domain. Now, he had actually achieved a breakthrough. The human brain had always been a domain filled with mystery. In the past, even the most amazing human could only exhibit 10% of their brain's potential. Advancements in technology had made developing the brain's potential possible, but it was extremely difficult to do so. It was not something one could succeed at just by trying. In Shifeng's previous life, countless people had tried their best and had spent large sums of money just to raise their brain's potential by a tiny fraction. Yet, even so, these people had felt that slight improvement worth their sacrifice. As the activity of the brain increased, a person's control over their body would also improve significantly. In God's domain, there were many genius players who possessed extraordinary talents. However, why were these geniuses better than ordinary players? It was because their brain's activity was out of the ordinary. As a result, their control over their game avatar surpassed ordinary players, allowing them to carry out actions that no ordinary player was capable of. Just like Soaring Snake whom Shifeng had met some time ago. Soaring Snake was a gifted genius who possessed unmatched reflexes. Meanwhile, Shifeng had broken through that limit by chance, so how could he not grow excited? Although he had only received a slight improvement, Shifeng could now see a new path opening up for him. Moreover, this was a path that led directly to the peak of God's domain. It seems that I need to prepare many more bottles of S-rank nutrient fluid in the future. Shifeng felt uneasy when he recalled the piercing hunger that was transmitted to his brain earlier. After breaking past the limit of his mental power, his brain naturally needed a massive amount of energy to recover. This time, he was only fortunate that he had sufficient bottles of S-rank nutrient fluid to allow him to achieve a breakthrough. 
Otherwise, he would have had to be admitted into the hospital to rest for some time. Moreover, resting at the hospital would not necessarily increase his brain's activity and develop its potential. When Sher Fong thought about improving his brain's activity, his thirst for S-rank nutrient fluids grew even more intense. Only now did Sher Fong understand why the first-rate guilds and super guilds in the past were purchasing S-rank nutrient fluids in bulk. There was an 80% chance that they had done so in order to nurture Apex experts. On the other hand, he had been under the misconception all this time that S-rank nutrient fluids were only used to strengthen a person's physique. Ding. 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 Suddenly, Sher Feng's quantum watch started ringing. Meanwhile, the person calling him was none other than Big Dipper Training Center's chairman, Xiao Yu. Master Sher Feng, our side has already completed the preparations for the fighting competition. As for the exact time of the event, it will be set at two days from now, at 10 o'clock in the morning. May I know your opinion on this? If you are not free, I can still delay the event by two or three days, Xiao Yu said. Let's go with two days from now, then. Sher Feng was in a very good mood at the moment. Hearing Xiao Yu's words, he became even more elated. As long as he won the competition, he would obtain not only 5 virtual gaming cabins but also 15 bottles of S-rank nutrient fluid. I have already sent the information regarding your opponent to your quantum space. However, that person is very mysterious, and the information we have collected on him is very limited. We only have the records for a few of his matches. He had ended a majority of his matches in just a single move. Xiao Yu had not expected Sher Feng to remain so calm. He knew that Zhao Ruashi had long since told Sher Feng every little detail about his opponent's strength, so Sher Feng should know how amazing his opponent was. Yet, now, not only was Sher Feng not anxious, but he was even showing a hint of anticipation. I understand. I'll research it a little. Sher Feng nodded. I still have other matters to attend to, so I'll be hanging up first. After saying so, Sher Feng disconnected the call. Following a period of rest, Sher Feng was already fully recovered. He still had many matters he needed to deal with in God's domain. Since he had slept for so long just now, he naturally could not delay any longer, which was why he had ended the call in such a hurry. After refilling the nutrient solution inside the virtual gaming cabin, he lay down inside the cabin and entered God's domain once more. Chapter 462, War of Attrition When Sher Fong logged into the game, the location he appeared at was still within White Fog Canyon. At this moment, the sky in God's domain was dusky. There was still over an hour until dawn. It sure is quiet. Sher Fong took a look at his surroundings, failing to notice any players or monsters. There was only the sound of leaves rustling in the cold wind. This was a very abnormal situation in White Fog Canyon. However, Sher Fong did not stay in this spot for too long. He dashed towards the exit of the canyon. At this moment, Sher Feng's weakened state had already ended, having recovered his peak condition. If one were to look at Sher Feng's running figure right now, they would not be able to see him clearly at all. They would only see a black figure darting across the map. Sher Feng was like a healthy and elegant leopard. Just as Sher Feng was about to leave White Fog Canyon, a group of over 100 crimson-eyed battle monkeys leaped out of the forest and blocked his path. The monsters in White Fog Canyon were very dangerous due to being in a constant berserk state. Now that was nighttime, players would have their vision reduced while monsters would not be affected in the slightest. As a result, players would find it much more difficult to fight at night. Facing against over 100 elite monsters, even an elite party would die unavenged. Only a large team of over 100 players could possibly endure the assault of so many crimson-eyed battle monkeys. However, as if he had not seen the monsters in his way, Sher Feng dashed into the group of battle monkeys. The crimson-eyed battle monkeys had similarly charged at Sher Feng like a group of mad cows. However, just when the sabers held by the battle monkeys were about to land on Sher Feng, the weapon struck air and simply brushed past Sher Feng's body. It was as if the battle monkeys' target was not Sher Feng at all. T allowed Sher Feng to easily shuttle through them. After their first attack failed, the crimson-eyed battle monkeys turned around and attacked Sher Feng once more. This time, seven battle monkeys surrounded Sher Feng. However, Sher Feng was just like flowing water. Just like before, when the battle monkey sabers were about to reach Sher Feng, the weapon simply brushed past his body. In just a moment, Sher Feng had weaved his way through the group of crimson-eyed battle monkeys. Although the battle monkeys felt enraged by the situation, they could not do anything about it. They could only watch unwillingly as Sher Feng exited the canyon. The improvements brought about by an increase in brain activity sure are significant. Sher Feng was full of smiles as he turned back to look at the crimson-eyed battle monkeys. Although he could defeat such a number of battle monkeys by himself, he definitely would not have been able to effortlessly dodge such an encirclement. This achievement was all thanks to his increase in brain activity. Not only did this change improve his brain's perception of danger, but it had also advanced his control over his own body. Whether it was in regard to an enemy's attack or his own ability to dodge, the ability to control his movements had become very precise and refined. He had already entered the refinement realm. 
Before, Sherfone could only barely achieve refinement with his actions, and he could not maintain that achievement for long, he could only be considered to have taken half a step into the refinement realm. Even so, half a step was already an amazing feat meanwhile, he had now completely entered this realm, becoming much stronger than he had been before. Even if he had to face Summer Sunshine's assault right now, he believed that he would not end up in such a miserable state where he would be required to use void steps to dodge. After leaving White Fog Canyon, Sherfone immediately unfurled a return scroll and activated it. Shortly after returning to White River City, Sherfone discovered that the number of players here were much more numerous than before. The players were all recruiting team members. Money farming team, 17 waiting for 3. DDs are welcomed. Must be level 20 or above. Frozen Waterfall Independent Party Recruiting, 12 waiting for 8. We welcome all sorts of pros. Must be level 21 or above. Equipment must be at least bronze rank. Twilight Lighthouse Independent Party Recruiting. Party is being carried by an expert. Noobs, do not disturb. Equipment must be at least bronze rank. Drops will be auctioned among team members. Many players were recruiting for level 20 team dungeons out in the streets. This situation really surprised Sherfone. Whether it was Frozen Waterfall or Twilight Lighthouse, both were challenging 20-man team dungeons, their difficulty was considered intermediate among level 20 team dungeons. Currently, even a normal guild team would not necessarily succeed when clearing one. Yet, there were actually so many independent teams recruiting for these dungeons. This situation truly confused Sherfone. He had gone offline for just one day. Just when did the independent players of White River City become so powerful? Aside from the shouts of recruitment by independent players, Sherfone also heard news regarding the all-out war between Zero Wing and Overwhelming Smile. Up to now, the losses suffered by both guilds had already exceeded 2,000 players. Moreover, the battles between both guilds were growing intenser as time passed. In the beginning, the skirmishes that occurred only involved dozens of players, before slowly growing into the hundreds. At this point in time, both guilds were already waging wars involving over a thousand players. Zero Wing really is amazing. Their total kill count right now has already exceeded 5,000 players. Meanwhile, Overwhelming Smile has only managed to kill around 2,000 Zero Wing members. I know, right? I heard that Zero Wing's Assassin Fire Dance alone has killed more than 300 Overwhelming Smile members. Many players were done in by her, and she has even managed to kill Lone Tyrant, giving Overwhelming Smile a huge headache. Right now, her fame is no longer beneath Black Flame. Other than Fire Dance, there is also Flying Shadow, another assassin of Zero Wing. His kill count is just slightly below Fire Dance's. Right now, he has already killed more than 200 members of Overwhelming Smile. In addition, there are also Aqua Rose, Violet Cloud, Cola, Blackie, and so on. Every one of them has killed over 100 players already. Other than the core members of Zero Wing, there are also many rising experts in Zero Wing. Among them is a berserker called Shadow Sword, his kill count is over 50. I hear that he has even managed to exchange for a level 25 fine gold equipment with the contribution points he obtained. Say, even though Overwhelming Smile also has a large number of experts, why aren't they able to fight against multiple enemies by themselves like Zero Wing's experts? Just why are Zero Wing's experts so strong? You don't know. I hear that Zero Wing's core members have completed their class change and have become tier 1 classes already. In terms of attributes and skills, they are much more powerful than us players who have yet to complete our class change. Even when facing a player with the same attributes and equipment, a tier 1 player can still easily defeat half a dozen tier 0 players. Moreover, I hear that Zero Wing has over 50 tier 1 players. Overwhelming Smile is naturally unable to contend against Zero Wing. It can't be, right? I hear that the class change quest is absurdly difficult. It is practically impossible to complete it without reaching level 27 or 28. Many have tried before, but all of them had failed. Moreover, if one fails their class change quest, they will have to wait a very long time before they can challenge the quest again. Just how have so many players from Zero Wing completed their class change? The players holding discussions on the street marveled at Zero Wing's strength. At the same time, they had also received a glimpse of how powerful a tier 1 class was. It was not something a tier 0 class could compare to at all. When Sherfone heard these conversations, a faint smile appeared on his face. After so many days of effort, there were finally some results. Over 50 tier 1 players could indeed play a huge role in a battle involving thousands of players. Unfortunately, with just two guilds battling against each other, wars involving thousands of players rarely occurred. A majority of the battles fought between the two guilds were merely small skirmishes that involved several dozen players. As a result, the potential of these 50 plus tier 1 players was less than it could be. Moreover, when comparing the backgrounds and fundings of the two guilds, Overwhelming Smile was leaps and bounds above Zero Wing. Although Overwhelming Smile's death count was more than double Zero Wing's death count, Overwhelming Smile was supported by Underworld from behind. Their financial prowess was definitely more than a dozen times greater than Zero Wing's. Even if the compensation and rewards they gave was triple or quadruple of what Zero Wing gave, they could still afford to grind Zero Wing into dust. 
This was the reason why Shifeng had been unwilling to start an all-out war all this time, as doing so would be very detrimental to Zero Wing. Following which, Shifeng contacted Aqua Rose to get a more detailed understanding of the present situation. He then increased the contribution points awarded for killing enemy players as well as increased the compensation of the guild members who died battling against the enemy. At the same time, he also made preparations to start raiding 50-man team dungeons and 100-man team dungeons. Guild leader, now that we have started an all-out war with overwhelming smile, if we increase the compensation and rewards, the expenses of the guild will increase by several times. If the war is extended, this amount will become astronomical. Moreover, the compensation and rewards we are currently giving out are already quite high. Even the guild members feel that they are good. There is simply no need for this extra spending. Aqua Rose knew that Shirfone was rich, but even so, money should not be wasted in such a way. It was especially true for the rewards given out. If the guild members managed to kill 10,000 enemies, even if the guild only gave one additional contribution point for each kill, the guild would still have to pay for the cost of an additional 10,000 contribution points. Not to mention, as the fighting continued, large wars would occur more frequently. At that time, the contribution points the guild would have to pay out would increase by several times. No problem. I'll figure out a way to deal with the matters regarding money, Shirfong said, shaking his head. The reason why he was increasing the amount of contribution points awarded was not for the purpose of exciting the guild members. Instead, he was doing so in order to hasten up the consumption speed of both sides. If it had been in the past, Shirfong definitely would not fight a war of attrition with overwhelming smile. Now, however, things were different. He now had a large amount of starfire ore in his hands. He would let overwhelming smile know what it truly felt like to crumble apart. Chapter 463, Imperial Heirloom I'll make the adjustments now, then. Aqua Rose could only nod her head in reply upon hearing Shifeng's confident answer. Right, have you compensated Virtuous Cloud and the others? Shifeng suddenly asked. After all was said and done, Overwhelming Smile had ambushed them because of him. He also still owed Virtuous Cloud six pieces of secret silver equipment. However, due to his short hibernation this time, he had not been able to bring them to make their selection. I've already brought them to the guild's warehouse to exchange for 10 pieces of level 20 secret silver equipment. However, there is one matter that you definitely won't be able to guess, Aqua Rose said, revealing a mysterious smile. What happened? Shirfong asked curiously. After Virtuous Cloud and her party saw our guild warehouse, they were downright stupefied. Originally, they were planning to return to the Black Dragon Empire to continue their development there. Now, however, the party has joined Zero Wing and should be carrying out some high-level guild quests at the moment, Aqua Rose replied. Aqua Rose was very optimistic about Virtuous Cloud's crew. An independent party attaining such high levels and good equipment was quite an amazing feat now that they had entered Zero Wing, it wouldn't be long before they became experts. In God's domain, though elite players were easy to find, experts were not. Now that Zero Wing was in an all-out war with overwhelming smile, it would be a long time before things settled down. After all, it was not possible for either side to defeat the other in one fell swoop. Moreover, battles between two warring guilds consisted mostly of small-scale skirmishes, large-scale engagements occurred very infrequently. As a result, the importance of players with top-tier combat power grew even greater. If a large group of players took action together, they could easily be discovered, as well as easily countered. However, if a party or an individual took action, they would be highly mobile, hence, they would not be discovered so easily. If Zero Wing could form a party of experts and give a huge blow to Overwhelming Smile from time to time, they could easily force Overwhelming Smile into a passive state. Guild leader, why don't we start raiding 50 men team dungeons now? Although the benefits we offer could attract quite a number of players to the guild, it is still not enough of an attraction for many independent experts. The things these experts seek are top-tier equipment and room for growth. Meanwhile, we can use the top-tier equipment we obtain from large-scale dungeons to attract these experts, Aqua Rose suggested. After seeing the reactions of Virtuous Cloud's crew yesterday, Aqua Rose came up with this idea. Previously, she had also tried inviting Virtuous Cloud and her party to join Zero Wing, but they had been reticent. However, after seeing the large number of level 25 fine gold and secret silver equipment, as well as plenty of level 20 dark gold equipment, they made up their minds right away. At that time, Aqua Rose had even considered displaying the two epic items inside their guild's warehouse. However, the epic items were Zero Wing's trump cards. It would be best if other guilds did not know about the existence of these items, so she had promptly dismissed this idea of hers. If she were to really put the epic items on display, then many guilds would definitely scheme against Zero Wing. Her action would no doubt create many more enemies for Zero Wing. The guilds that were maintaining neutrality might even side with overwhelming smile. At that time, Zero Wing's position would become very tenuous. Hence, only core members, who had signed a confidentiality agreement, could know about the existence of the epic items. We still have to wait for some time regarding the matter of the large-scale team dungeons. However, we can begin raiding 20-man hell mode team dungeons. Shirfong had been the guild leader of Shadow for many years, so he naturally knew what attracted experts. Although he fully agreed with Aqua Rose's suggestion, large-scale team dungeons were northwest walk in the park. They needed to accumulate even more strength if they wished to raid one. 
On the other hand, they could give 20 man hell mode team dungeons a try. Players had a fixed probability for obtaining dark gold items from 20 man hell mode team dungeons, though the majority of the items were fine gold rank. In addition, there were plenty of production materials that were available only in hell mode dungeons. The guild could also obtain guild popularity by clearing hell mode dungeons. As the guild's popularity increased, the guild quests commissioned by NPCs would also improve in quality, and this was what Zero Wing needed the most at the moment. I'll get everyone prepared right now, then. Upon hearing Shifeng's words, Aqua Rose immediately went into action with great excitement. As for Shifeng himself, he made a trip to the bank. Although there were many things demanding his attention right now, the all-out war with overwhelming smile, in particular, at the end of the day, there was only one task that he needed to complete, which was to earn money. Shifeng had experienced countless all-out wars between guilds in the past, so he had long since known what took priority. Although he himself possessed frightening combat power, allowing him to easily hunt and kill Overwhelming Smile members out in the fields, just how many members were there in Overwhelming Smile? Even if he ran around all day, hunting players, how many could he possibly kill by himself? Doing so would allow him to collect the immortal souls of players he killed, but it was still not worth the effort. Moreover, even if he did nothing but hunt players from Overwhelming Smile all day long, completing his quest would take many days. During this time, Overwhelming Smile with its huge funding could easily recruit a large number of additional players. Even if Shifeng worked himself to death, he still wouldn't be able to win the war by himself. After all, this was currently the early stages of God's domain. The various guilds had yet to possess their very own towns and cities. Killing Overwhelming Smile's members would only cause the guild a little trouble and slightly affect its development speed. Most importantly, Shifeng simply did not have the time to do something like this. He only had a little time left to complete the epic quest Darkness Descends, and he was still far from his goal of earning 30,000 gold. If he failed to complete the quest, at that time, he would have to face the wrath of a tier 4 demon. With his current strength, he would certainly die. Hence, earning money was his top priority right now. The war between the two guilds would definitely grow more intense as time passed, and the same was true for the expenditure of both guilds. It was especially true for the expenditure on equipment. Aside from losing equipment as a result of dying, fights between players would also cause the durability of weapons and equipment to fall at a faster rate than when fighting monsters. Naturally, repairing these weapons and equipment would also require a large sum of coins. Presently, guilds had a limited source of income for coins. Guilds would only begin raking in large sums of coins once they possessed their own towns and cities during the middle stage of the game. Although Overwhelming Smile had large funding, having a large funding did not necessarily equate to having a large number of coins. This was where Shifeng's confidence came from. Half an hour later, Shifeng arrived at the bank. He then retrieved all the Starfire ore as well as the Philosopher's Stone from his warehouse. He also retrieved the Dragon Scale set equipment forging design he had stored away all this time. At present, aside from the Warfire set equipment, the level 20 fine gold ranked Dragon Scale set equipment was definitely the best set equipment available. It was naturally an item that all guilds would fight desperately to obtain. After Shifeng organized the items inside his bag, he suddenly noticed the Golden Stone tablet inside it. How could I have forgotten about this thing? Shifeng's mind had been occupied with too many things during this period of time, and he had completely forgotten about the Golden Stone tablet he had snatched away from the Anubis's gatekeeper. An item guarded by a great lord was definitely not an ordinary item. However, Shifeng had also never heard about a Golden Stone tablet, so he did not know exactly what function this item possessed. Glancing at it, he was unable to read its information, all that was displayed about the Golden Stone tablet was that it was an unknown item. Shifeng then used omniscient eyes and started appraising it. The seconds ticked by slowly as countless data flickered in front of his eye. After a total of 22 seconds passed, the appraisal process was finally completed. An Imperial Heirloom. Shifeng muttered in disbelief when he read the information displayed about the Golden Stone tablet. Chapter 464, Shocking Treasure Shifeng could not help but tremble when he looked at the Golden Stone tablet inside his bag. God's domain was very large, and there were many kingdoms and empires within it. Naturally, these realms would go through growth and decline. Countless kingdoms and empires had disappeared into the long river of history by now. Although they had already been forgotten by people, some of these kingdoms and empires had left behind shocking treasures that were unknown to others. In God's domain, these shocking treasures were called heirlooms. Heirlooms could be categorized into four different ranks. The first would be Kingdom Heirlooms. Just as its name implied, it was a treasure once owned by a kingdom of God's domain. First-rate guilds would fight tooth and nail for just one Kingdom Heirloom. In the past, there was even a super guild that had offered up a city with a population of over a million players in exchange for a Kingdom Heirloom. From this, one could just imagine the value of a Kingdom Heirloom. Back then, although Shadow had become a second-rate guild and controlled ten city-states, it did not even possess the qualifications to compete over a Kingdom Heirloom. Meanwhile, one rank above Kingdom Heirlooms were Imperial Heirlooms. An Imperial Heirloom was an heirloom left behind by a fallen empire of God's domain. 
Normally, the wealth of an empire was at least three to five times greater than that of a kingdom. The value of an imperial heirloom, naturally, was proportional. In the past, a small unrated guild called Thunder Family had taken less than a year to develop into a first-rate guild. Back then, Thunder Family had shocked the entire god's domain. In terms of experts or financial power, Thunder Family had possessed neither. Yet, it had still managed to develop into a first-rate guild in such a short amount of time. How could such a feat not shock others? Only after many different parties investigated the guild did they find out the secret behind Thunder Family's success. It turned out that Thunder Family had accidentally encountered an item called an Imperial Heirloom, and the guild had secretly developed itself at a rapid pace through this Imperial Heirloom. Thus, Thunder Family had managed to become one of the overlords of God's domain in less than just a year. From then on, everyone started searching for heirlooms out in the fields. Many wars were waged in God's domain because of heirlooms, and many guilds were completely annihilated because of heirlooms. In addition to Imperial Heirlooms, there were Continental Heirlooms, which were one rank higher, as well as World Heirlooms, which were the highest ranking heirlooms in God's domain. However, the last two heirlooms were only mentioned in the libraries of God's domain. As far as Shirfone knew, nobody had come upon either one in his previous life. Now that there was an Imperial Heirloom in his bag, how could Shirfone not be excited? Even as a reincarnator, Shirfone had to carefully plan, make countless preparations, encounter many miracles, and nurture a large number of experts in order to establish his very own virtual empire. Meanwhile, just a single Imperial Heirloom had allowed a small guild to grow into a first-rate guild in less than a year, becoming the owner of a real empire. As for what treasures were hidden within an Imperial Heirloom, Shirfone was completely ignorant. After things got out of hand in the past, any who obtained an Imperial Heirloom would put a tight lid on it, keeping all information about it a secret. In this life, Shirfone would naturally also keep quiet about his possession of an Imperial Heirloom. Hence, he immediately suppressed his excited heart as he considered where to carefully research the Imperial Heirloom. After he was done organizing his bag, he made his way stealthily to the Star Street trading firm and entered one of the forging rooms on the fourth floor. At this moment, the Star Street trading firm had already become the number one trading firm in White River City. The variety of items sold at its shop was matchless. As long as it was something the current players of God's domain needed, the trading firm would sell it. Therefore, players who visited the Star Street trading firm would have no need to visit any other shop. The trading firm's business was thriving, raking in large sums of money daily. Although many guilds had sought cooperation with the trading firm, all were promptly rejected by the firm's manager, Anna. Shirfone had picked an unoccupied forging room at random and entered it. I'm interested to see just what sort of secret is contained within an imperial heirloom, Shirfone muttered as he retrieved the golden stone tablet from his bag and carefully placed it on the stone platform. Other than being named an imperial heirloom, the golden stone tablet revealed no other information. Shirfone was also clueless as to how he should operate an imperial heirloom, so he had no choice but to slowly experiment with it. There were many drawings and runes engraved on the stone tablet. However, Shirfone could not understand a single one of them. He quickly spent over half an hour researching the Imperial Heirloom. But no matter what sort of methods he used, he failed to find even a clue to how to activate it. Despite the mountain of gold placed right in front of him, without the activation key, he could only stare helplessly at the Imperial Heirloom. Thunder family from back then was able to discover the secret of the Imperial Treasure, so why can't I? Frustrated, Shirfone played around with the golden stone tablet in his hands. Is there still some other secret to the Imperial Heirloom? It sounded logical when he thought about it. How could a great treasure capable of allowing an empire to thrive be so easily obtainable by players? If the activation of the Imperial Heirloom were a quest, then the difficulty of this quest should be legendary rank. A legendary quest was definitely not something players could easily complete. Let alone a legendary quest, right now, Shirfone already had a huge headache over just an epic quest. I can only set it aside for now. I might encounter some clues in the future, Shirfone thought optimistically. Everything was bound to be difficult at the beginning. With the Imperial Heirloom now in his hands, what he needed to do next was to inquire around about it. There was bound to be a solution. Shirfone then stored the Imperial Heirloom and piled up the large amount of Starfire ore he had on the floor. During this period of time, Zero Wing had harvested over 20,000 pieces of Starfire ore again. If sold at a price of 1 silver per piece, the total value of all this Starfire ore would be over 200 gold coins. However, Shirfone was going to convert them all into Starfire Essence right now. Originally, if players wished to refine Starfire ore, they needed to hire an alchemist to refine the ore for them. Just a single refinement cost one silver coin. Moreover, the production of Starfire Essence was not guaranteed. However, there was a large possibility of obtaining one piece of Starfire Essence out of two pieces of ore. As a result, the market value of Starfire Essence was usually set at four silver coins per piece. Shirfone, however, did not seek the services of an alchemist. After all, the Philosopher's Stone he possessed was much more powerful than any alchemist. In addition, not only did he not need to spend a single coin when using the Philosopher's Stone to refine Starfire Ore, but his odds of producing Starfire Essence were also much higher than those of NPC Master Alchemists. 
Following which, Sherfone started refining the Starfire ore. One piece. Two pieces. The refining speed of the Philosopher's Stone was very fast. In just a moment, Sherfone had already refined 100 pieces of Starfire ore and obtained 83 pieces of Starfire Essence. Starfire Essence, consumable. Increases success rate of forging if added during forging process. In addition, the more Starfire Essence added, the higher the success rate. The refinement rate is good as expected. When Sherfone looked at the sparkling red gems scattered across the stone platform, an indescribable sense of joy filled his heart. The Philosopher's Stone was definitely worthy of being called a treasure of alchemy. By using it to refine all the Starfire ore he had, he could save over 200 gold coins. Time passed little by little. Before he knew it, Sherfone had spent more than 7 hours refining all the Starfire ore he had. In total, he had obtained 18,000 odd pieces of Starfire Essence. If converted to coins, the value of these Starfire Essences would be worth over 720 gold. In just 7 hours, Sherfone had more than tripled the original value of the Starfire Ore. I can finally start forging now. Although Sherfone had spent in excess of 7 hours repeating the same task over and over, he did not feel bored or tired. On the contrary, he was filled with excitement right now. Just the thought of being able to mass-produce the Dragon Scale set equipment thrilled him greatly. If he let the members of the guild equip the set and take a stroll out in the city, the uniform equipment would definitely earn the envy and admiration of players all over White River City. Chapter 465, Rapid Promotion Blue Moon Restaurant, a high-class restaurant located in White River City. At this moment, the entire restaurant was completely reserved by overwhelming smile, and tens of elite members stood guard outside the building. Each and every one of these elite members of overwhelming smile was in a very bad mood, which showed in the fierce expressions on their faces. Any unrelated players passing by Blue Moon Restaurant would no doubt distance themselves from the building, as far away as possible, in fear of meeting with bad luck and getting into trouble. Currently, Zero Wing and Overwhelming Smile were waging an all-out war with each other. While there was nothing bad to speak of about Zero Wing, the members of Overwhelming Smile were infamous for their tyranny. As long as Overwhelming Smile members felt even the slightest displeasure, they would try to make trouble for someone else. What Overwhelming Smile members did most frequently was field hogging. They would lay claim to an entire area and chase away all non-guild members. However, although many independent players of White River City were furious over Overwhelming Smile's actions, nobody dared to actually voice their opinion. No doubt many independent players were cheering and clapping secretly over the war between Zero Wing and Overwhelming Smile. It was especially true when news spread mentioning that Overwhelming Smile's death count had increased significantly lately, and was now past the 8,000 threshold. At this moment, two people, a man and a woman, were seated inside one of the booths on the second floor of Blue Moon Restaurant. The man was Feng Xianyang, and the woman sat opposite of him was the quiet and elegant beauty Yolan. I've already looked through the information you sent me. It's very well written, I'm quite satisfied with it. I also forwarded your analysis to the higher-ups, and they have already determined that Zero Wing is indeed a thorn in Underworld's side. They've also said that if we cannot obtain Zero Wing, then we're to destroy it to save us from future troubles. In addition, they have a very optimistic view on White River City right now. The current population of White River City has already exceeded 2 million. Many players from other cities, and even other kingdoms and empires, are constantly migrating here. At present, White River City has already become the second most populous city in Star Moon Kingdom, so we must obtain control over White River City. This time, not only have the higher-ups sent a great load of manpower, but they have also increased our funding and are prepared to focus on the nurturing of Overwhelming Smile. I heard that after Zero Wing increased the compensations and rewards it is giving out, you increased Overwhelming Smiles as well. I believe it should have increased the burden on your side significantly, right? However, you can rest easy and feel free to continue contending with Zero Wing. The higher-ups have already gathered 500 gold as well as 300 million credits for you. The credits should have been sent to you by now. As for the gold coins, that will arrive in another hour or two at most. Afterwards, they'll be sending even more gold coins and credits. I hear that the higher-ups are very serious this time. Just the total amount of coins they are planning to invest into overwhelming smile may be over 5,000 gold, not to mention the credits. Saying so, Feng Xianyang snapped his fingers. In the next moment, another 20 people entered the private booth. Every one of these 20 people was shrouded in a thick layer of killing intent. Their bodies were as robust as a grizzly bear's. Instead of looking like ordinary players, they looked more like a group of well-trained soldiers. These men are the underworld guards the higher-ups have dispatched. All 20 of them are party leaders, and every one of them leads a party of 6 members. In total, you will have 120 underworld guards to command as you see fit, Feng Xianyang said, smiling. They are different from the other underworld guards. I'm sure you can tell, but they have all worked as mercenaries in the past. They are people who have walked on real battlefields. Isn't Overwhelming Smile waging an all-out war with Zero Wing right now? As long as you have these underworld guards to assist you, those players who have never seen fresh blood will be easy pickings. Even if Zero Wing has more than 50 tier 1 players, they will still be finished. I've already handed the men over to you. What they do next is up to you. 
Young Master Fong, rest assured, I definitely will not disappoint you. Originally, Yulan had already been confident of slowly exhausting Zero Wing to death. Now that she was looking at the two rows of neatly lined up underworld guard party leaders, a sense of indescribable joy filled her heart. Zero Wing's 50 plus tier 1 players had been giving Overwhelming Smile a huge headache recently, forcing the members of Overwhelming Smile into a state of passiveness. At this moment, they needed to similarly send out experts or tier 1 players. Otherwise, they would simply be helpless against Zero Wing's tier 1 players. However, Yulan had suddenly come to a realization. Overwhelming Smile had plenty of elite members, but they were sorely lacking in experts and tier 1 players. Although not all 20 of the underworld guards standing before her were necessarily experts, and their levels only ranged between 23 to 24, they were all veterans of the battlefield. Meanwhile, now that the battles in God's domain were growing increasingly realistic, these people would have an undeniable advantage. They were much more powerful compared to ordinary elite players. If they worked together, they should have a very frightening effect on field battles. Yulan could tell that the upper management of Underworld was taking things seriously this time. Currently, the various guilds in God's domain were desperately purchasing coins. They had even secretly established many money farming teams. It was very difficult to accumulate 500 gold. Not to mention, they were also planning to invest an additional 5,000 plus gold coins in the future. With such a sum of money, dealing with Zero Wing would be a piece of cake. With the subsequent funding from Underworld, Yulan no longer had to worry about equipment. Currently, there were three main sources of equipment, dungeons, the auction house, and the virtual trade center. Unlike the auction house, one used credits instead of coins when purchasing equipment from the virtual trade center. As a result, the prices of equipment sold there were very expensive. Even so, the wealthy did not mind doing their purchases through the virtual trade center. The first reason was due to the supply of weapons and equipment there being much more abundant. This was because, in order to earn credits, many workshops and players would post their items up for sale at the virtual trade center. The second reason was due to convenience. The currency of God's domain was not easily obtainable. Moreover, the trading procedures involved were very onerous. With such a large sum of credits, she could immediately fill up Overwhelming Smile's guild warehouse and rebuild the confidence of the guild members. At the same time, it would give Zero Wing immense pressure. Hence, on the same day Yulan received the funds from Underworld, she purchased weapons and equipment ranging between level 15 and level 20 from the Virtual Trade Center in bulk. The quality of the items ranged from bronze rank to fine gold rank. In total, she bought over 5,000 weapons and equipment, greatly boosting Overwhelming Smile's morale. At the same time, she also raised the death compensation and kill rewards. Seeing this change, many more members of Overwhelming Smile were tempted to join in the field battles. For a time, Overwhelming Smile's momentum in White River City surpassed Zero Wings. However, as the guild leader of Zero Wing, Sherfone was completely ignorant about this occurrence. At the moment, he was focused on producing the Dragon Scale set equipment and frantically raising his forging proficiency. Recently, Sherfone had been constantly busying himself with other matters. As a result, his forging proficiency had stagnated. Despite being the first person to become an advanced forging apprentice, he had long since fallen behind Cream Coco and the others. These future master forgers had already become true forgers. Meanwhile, Sherfone himself still needed a lot of forging proficiency before he could become a forger as well. It should be known that only 3,000 proficiency points were required to get promoted from an intermediate forging apprentice to an advanced forging apprentice. Yet, in order to advance from an advanced forging apprentice to a basic forger, 10,000 proficiency points were required, the amount required to rise a rank had more than tripled. Moreover, advanced forging apprentices did not receive proficiency points from producing common ranked items, resulting in a drastic reduction in promotion speed. Melancholic Smile and the other two had only managed to become basic forgers so quickly because of the basic strengthened armor kit forging designs Sherfone had provided them. In the future, however, even the basic strengthened armor kits would not be able to help them with their promotions. Fortunately, the Dragon Scale set equipment Sherfone possessed was different. Not only was it of a very high rank, but it could also provide him with bonus proficiency every time he succeeded in producing the set equipment. He also had the Forging Talent, Forging Genius, which had a fixed chance of giving him additional proficiency points whenever he succeeded in forging an item. Moreover, as the Dragon Scale was a fine gold set equipment, the EXP rewarded from its successful production was also very generous. However, when producing the Dragon Scale set equipment, Sherfone had to spend 10 Starfire Essences for each individual set piece. Moreover, even with the help of the various support tools he possessed, his success rate was less than 25%. Even so, Sherfone was already very satisfied with this result. If it were anyone else producing the Dragon Scale set equipment, let alone 25%, it would be a miracle if they even managed a 10% success rate. Furthermore, the materials needed to produce the Dragon Scale set equipment were not particularly precious, and he also had plenty of Starfire Essences. Hence, Sherfone madly produced the Dragon Scale set equipment unmindful of cost. The more sets he produced, the more proficient he became. 
In addition, his increased brain activity also gave him an accurate grasp of the production process, allowing him to become increasingly faster and better at producing the Dragon Scale set equipment as time went by. Sher Fong never imagined that he would also have such a fortunate development. Finally, after investing more than a day's time, Sher Fong managed to completely use up all his materials and had succeeded at producing over a hundred sets. He was also promoted to a basic forger during this period of time, his promotion speed leaving one simply speechless. Furthermore, he had also leveled up to level 26, his leveling speed even faster than when he was grinding monsters at White Fog Canyon. Chapter 466, Dragon Claw Set Equipment That should be about enough. Sher Fong looked at his bag containing Dragon Scale Set Equipment with satisfaction. Currently, God's Domain players did not have very high levels, with a majority being around level 20. Hence, level 20 equipment had already become more common. This was apparent from the large number of independent teams raiding level 20, 20 men team dungeons. Even raiding normal mode, 20 men team dungeons would drop plenty of mysterious iron equipment at the very minimum. There was even a certain probability that a mysterious iron set equipment would drop. Even ordinary players wore a few pieces of level 20 bronze equipment, not to mention veteran and elite players. It was no surprise if one ran into a player with a full set of bronze equipment. The equipment that guilds elite members wore was even more impressive. Unlike independent players, guilds would very frequently form teams to raid dungeons. Hence, the equipment available to guilds elites was far superior to what independent players had access to, and a majority of such elite members possessed at least a few pieces of mysterious iron equipment. The lowest quality equipment guilds core teams would wear at this point was level 20 mysterious iron rank. Normally, core members wore secret silver equipment. Only the top experts in a guild had the chance to equip level 20 secret silver set equipment with a few pieces of fine gold equipment. To ordinary players, fine gold equipment was something they could only obtain in their dreams. Such items were out of their reach, and they could only fantasize about owning one. As for level 20 fine gold set equipment, not even the upper management of guilds possessed a single piece. Level 20 fine gold set equipment would only drop from level 20 large-scale team dungeons. Not a single guild was ready to set foot in a level 20 large-scale team dungeon at this stage of the game. This was why everyone had shifted their focus to the Warfire set equipment, which dropped in the White Fog Canyon. Meanwhile, the level 20 Dragon Scale set equipment was definitely one of the best level 20 sets available. Although it could not compare to a Warfire set equipment that had been upgraded to fine gold rank, if one equipped the entire set, they would still surpass the requirements to raid a level 20, 100-man team dungeon. The set would be of immense help to raiding large-scale team dungeons. Dragon Scale set equipment, fine gold rank. Level 20 can be equipped by plate armor classes. Set consists of six parts, head, chest, hands, wrist, legs, and feet. Set effect. Two-piece effect, ignore levels plus 10. Has a chance to trigger fury effect when attacking, increasing damage by 20% for 6 seconds. Four-piece effect, strength and endurance attribute increased by 10%. Defense increased by 20%. Six-piece effect, all skill cooldowns decreased by 20%. When attacking with a skill, there is a chance to trigger effect multiplier, increasing the skill's effects by 50%. Although the set effects of the Dragon Scale set equipment could not compare to those of the Warfire set equipment, they were still enough to tempt both guilds and players. Originally, Sherfone had intended to equip the Dragon Scale set equipment himself. However, a level 20 fine gold set equipment was only as strong as a level 25 secret silver set equipment. Currently, he had several pieces of level 25 fine gold equipment and level 25 dark gold equipment. Combined, they were far superior to the Dragon Scale set equipment. Hence, Sher Fong gave up on the idea. However, after Sher Fong had spent over a day forging and produced the 105th set of Dragon Scale set equipment, by some stroke of luck, he had triggered the Black Steel Insignia's attribute increasing effect. As a result, the Dragon Scale set equipment had upgraded by an entire rank, becoming a level 20 Dark Gold set equipment. Now, it was equivalent to a level 25 Fine Gold set equipment. Sher Fong was overjoyed. After the Dragon Scale set equipment had upgraded, it was no longer called Dragon Scale, he had now created a Dragon Claw set equipment. This was also the only Dark Gold set equipment Sher Fong had ever produced. Dragon Claw set equipment, Dark Gold rank. Level 20. Can be equipped by plate armor classes. Set consists of six parts, head, chest, hands, wrist, legs, and feet. Set effect. Two-piece effect, ignore levels plus 15. Has a chance to trigger Fury effect when attacking, increasing damage by 40% for 6 seconds. 4-piece effect, Strength and Endurance attribute increased by 15%. Defense increased by 30%. 7-piece effect, All skill cooldowns decreased by 30%. When attacking with a skill, there is a chance to trigger effect multiplier, increasing the skill's effects by 100%. Aside from the fact that the Dragon Claw set equipment's basic attributes could overshadow even level 25 fine gold set equipment, the set effects had massively improved. 
The Dragon Claw set effects were only slightly inferior to the fine gold ranked Warfire set equipment. Only, the Warfire set was more suited for PvP, whereas the Dragon Claw set was more suited for raiding dungeons. In God's Domain, experts would normally prepare multiple sets of equipment for themselves, and every set had different purposes. At the very minimum, experts would prepare a set for PvP and a set for dungeons. There were also sets that focused on flexibility, damage, and so on. In the past, Sherfong had owned several sets of equipment at a time, which he used when he fought dungeon bosses, during field PvP, and various other situations. In this life, however, he still did not have the capital to afford multiple sets of equipment. In the early stages of God's Domain, top-tier weapons and equipment were very rare. Having a full set of top-tier equipment was already impressive, let alone multiple sets. Now that Sherfong had the Dragon Claw set equipment, he immediately replaced the equipment he currently wore. As for the unused level 25 fine gold and dark gold equipment, he would store them in the guild's warehouse, leaving them for other members. As for the level 25 flame boots, however, Sherfong kept them for himself. If he encountered an extremely fast enemy, he could use them to replace the Dragon Claw boots temporarily. After equipping the Dragon Claw set, Sherfang's basic attributes increased significantly. His strength was close to exceeding the 500 point threshold. His HP had also exceeded 10,000, granting him more HP than the Tier 1 Guardian Knight, Kola. If I activate the 7 Luminaries Rings Aura of Earth, I could easily become the number 1 tank in Zero Wing. Sherfong smiled as he looked at his own defense. Due to the Dragon Claw's set effects, he already possessed the defense of an MT. In addition, the Aura of Earth's effects would increase his defense by 45% and reduce the damage he received by 35%. Just as Sherfong was about to begin producing basic mana armor kits to serve as guild benefits, Aqua Rose suddenly contacted him. Guild leader, I've just received news that someone from Overwhelming Smile has become a Baron. They have purchased a plot relatively valuable private land in White River City and are currently establishing their own guild residence. Overwhelming smile. Sherfong could not help his surprise. Sherfong was not surprised that someone from Overwhelming Smile had obtained the rank of a baron in White River City. After all, after the second evolution of God's Domain, it became much easier to earn reputation in cities. Moreover, due to the appearance of Zero Wings Guild residents, the various guilds had long since turned their focus to grinding for reputation. It was natural that someone would have become a baron by now. However, purchasing a plot of private land and establishing a guild hall required a lot of money. Private land, in particular, was a huge headache. Sherfong had only managed to obtain the Purple Sun Mansion due to a quest reward, saving him a ridiculous amount of gold coins. However, Overwhelming Smile could afford to purchase private land, and even had the money to proceed with building a guild hall immediately. Even the cheapest plot of land in White River City cost over 1,000 gold. Adding in the cost of the cheapest guild hall, Overwhelming Smile would need to spend at least 1,500 gold. Although it had become much easier to earn coins, even a first-rate guild would need over a week to accumulate so much money. Moreover, purchasing coins in bulk through the virtual trade center would cause the price of coins to soar. How many credits would one need to purchase so many gold coins? Since when had overwhelming smile become so wealthy? Chapter 467, Sweeping God's Domain Aside from establishing a guild residence, overwhelming smile has also recruited a team of experts. These experts have been ambushing our teams and killing many of our members. Some of our Tier 1 members have encountered them before, and although they were no match for our members in a one-on-one -on -one battle, those experts are well-trained and coordinate with each other flawlessly. With three people working together, they can finish off one of our Tier 1 members quickly. We estimate that Overwhelming Smile has over a hundred of these experts and has scattered them across various leveling areas. They randomly appear and kill our members who are questing or leveling, causing us tremendous losses. Although we have invested a lot of time and manpower into hunting these experts down, we have come up with nothing. Aqua Rose ground her teeth with frustration as she spoke about Overwhelming Smile's mysterious experts, and she wanted to hunt them down and end them personally. Thanks to these experts, Zero Wing had lost an additional 2,000 or so members in just one day. Ever since Zero Wing had declared war on Overwhelming Smile, the guild had only suffered around 6,000 deaths. This little group of experts had caused over 2,000 of those deaths. Moreover, they had caused so much damage in one day. Aside from the lost equipment and levels, the compensation costs wounded the guild's finances. If this situation repeated itself every day, the several hundred gold the guild had accumulated through guild quests would only last a few more days before it dwindled to nothing. This means that Overwhelming Smile is finally getting serious. Frowning, Sherfong said, since they wish to send experts to ambush us, we have no need to hold back. Have Fire Dance and the others eliminate them. However, scatter the group to separate locations. We'll hold off on the team dungeon for now. As for our regular guild members, have them form teams to grind in the fields from now on. Okay, I'll notify Fire Dance and the others immediately, saying so, Aqua Rose disconnected the call. She then contacted Fire Dance and Zero Wing's other top combatants. Meanwhile, Sherfong halted his work in the forge. After tidying up, he left the forging room and hurried to the bank. Sherfong had never expected Overwhelming Smile to possess such a card. 
This situation certainly surpassed Sher Feng's initial estimation of his enemy. Fortunately, Zero Wing had far more experts than Overwhelming Smile. In particular, Zero Wing possessed an absolute advantage when it came to Tier 1 players, as Overwhelming Smile still did not have a single Tier 1 player. All this time, Zero Wing's experts had split into two batches and took turns slaughtering Overwhelming Smile's members. This way, not only could they make Overwhelming Smile suffer, but they also wouldn't significantly hinder their own development. Now that over a hundred experts had suddenly appeared in Overwhelming Smile, Sher Feng would not let them run free. Moreover, the fact that Overwhelming Smile now possessed their own guild residence was bad news for Zero Wing. Originally, Zero Wing had only attracted so many new players to the guild due to their guild residence. The benefits a guild residence offered persuaded the guild members to ignore Overwhelming Smile's high offers and continue their development with Zero Wing. Now, however, Zero Wing's members would be tempted to join Overwhelming Smile as the benefits they could obtain there were not inferior in the slightest. However, gold coins were still what was most important. Originally, Overwhelming Smile was only wealthy in terms of credits. To Sherfone, the guild was no threat at all. After all, many of the items in God's domain could only be purchased with coins. Even if one had an endless supply of credits, the number of coins they could buy was limited. Furthermore, Overwhelming Smile was not the only guild in God's domain purchasing coins in bulk, further limiting what was available. In an all-out war between guilds, coins were the most consumed resource. There was the cost of purchasing and repairing equipment to consider, in addition to compensating guild members. Battles between players placed a massive burden on equipment durability. Take Sher Feng's battles for example, a single strike from his sword could scrap bronze equipment. Only mysterious iron equipment could withstand his attack, and even then, it would only last a few extra hits. Even if the equipment was not destroyed, even elite players would cough blood with shock at the repair fee to recover the item. Although equipment could be purchased from the virtual trade center and compensation could be paid out using credits, the system controlled equipment repair fees, and it did not acknowledge credits. A single player's repair fee was not much, costing around 2 silver coins. The repair fee for 10,000 players, however, would be at least 200 gold coins, a very frightening amount. Not to mention, the higher quality equipment a player wore, the higher their repair fee would be. Although the repair fees were not the guild's responsibility, but the players, how many times could a player afford to repair their equipment in a long war? Once players ran out of money, how could they continue to involve themselves in the war if their equipment was close to breaking? Unless they decided to risk themselves without weapons and armor. In the early stages of the war, the guild members would accept credits as compensation and reward. However, after some time, they would need to purchase coins with the credits they received. Hence, coins were the true foundation of wars in God's domain. Meanwhile, a guild residence was a guild's main source of income for coins during the early stages of God's domain. If Overwhelming Smile included coins in their frightening financial power it would create a terrifying combination. Sher Feng could not afford to continue focusing on plots to earn money. He needed to take action. After returning the Philosopher's Stone to his warehouse, Sher Feng used the Seven Luminaries Gemstone and teleported to Blackwing City, taking the Dragon Scale sets with him. At present, Blackwing City had become a gathering place for players from kingdoms and empires all over God's domain. Compared to Sher Feng's previous visits to the city, the player population had grown significantly. Moreover, there was an important difference between the players in Blackwing City and the players in other cities. Wealth The players in Blackwing City were extremely wealthy. Moreover, the money these players possessed did not only involve credits, but also included gold coins. A majority of the players in Blackwing City were the upper management personnel of various large guilds, and they had come to Blackwing City specifically to do business. Hence, the amount of credits and coins they had on hand far surpassed anything that an ordinary player possessed. Blackwing City was truly the gathering place for tycoons. This was also why Sher Feng had come to this place today. Sher Feng had no intentions of selling the Dragon Scale set equipment for credits. His goal was to earn gold coins. If he sold the Dragon Scale set equipment in Star Moon Kingdom's auction houses or at the Star Street trading firm, he would not get a good price. In addition, unlike the players in Blackwing City who would spend several gold coins without even blinking, players who could afford such large expenditures were few and far between in Star Moon Kingdom. After arriving at Blackwing City, Sher Feng searched for a secluded location. He then used the demon mask to don a false identity. Unlike his previous visit when he tried to keep a low profile, Sher Feng changed his appearance to that of a very handsome youth. He had even slightly altered the appearance of the Dragon Claw set equipment he wore, making it look more imposing. He also chose not to hide the special glowing effect of the Dragon Claw set equipment, revealing the telltale light of dark gold equipment. When he reached the streets, the dark gold rank glowing effect that enveloped his body nearly blinded other players. Damn. My eyes aren't playing tricks on me, right? That's a dark gold set equipment. Impossible. It looks awesome. Our guild doesn't even possess a set of fine gold set equipment. Just who is he? Sher Feng dominated the attention of the players wandering the streets, their eyes nearly popping out of their sockets as they stared at him in a daze. 
They were all upper managers of various large guilds, so their knowledge of the game was extensive. Even if they saw a player wearing fine gold set equipment, they would not reveal such exaggerated reactions. At most, they would briefly admire the player's equipment. A dark gold set equipment, however, shattered their understanding of the game. Chapter 468, Ninth Heaven Pavilion In just a short moment, news about Shifeng's sudden appearance had spread throughout Blackwing City. Have you heard? There's a player wearing a full dark gold set equipment. Heard about it. I saw that player with my own eyes. You don't know just how imposing he looked. He was like a ferocious tiger. He had only glanced at me, and my entire body trembled. Ah, a dark gold set equipment. It would be awesome to wear one. Don't even think about it. The various guilds throughout God's domain can't even obtain a fine gold set equipment, let alone dark gold. With a dark gold set equipment, PvP and dungeon raiding would be child's play. If an expert wears the set, they will become practically invincible. Do you think that person will sell his dark gold set equipment? Sell? Are you insane? Do you even know the significance of a dark gold set equipment? A dark gold set equipment is the best equipment currently available in God's domain by far. This set could even become the symbol of a guild, attracting countless players to join. On top of that, the rise in combat power the set provides would make grinding and dungeon raiding far easier. It would play a huge role in one's future development. If it were up to me, I would rather sell my house than sell my dark gold set equipment. I guess you're right. If purchased with credits, a dark gold set equipment should be worth at least 2 million. Including its ability to increase a guild's influence, it is worth more than a single house located in the city center. The players occupying the streets and alleys of Blackwing City discussed your phone. They envied and admired his dark gold set equipment. Before, many of them had dreamed of equipping a fine gold set equipment themselves. Yet, now, someone actually wore a dark gold set equipment. No, to be precise, someone ran around Blackwing City while wearing a house. While players talked about Shurfone, the various guild representatives in Blackwing City overworked themselves as they followed Shurfone while reporting back to their respective guilds. Currently, they no longer had the serenity befitting an upper manager of a guild as their anxiety was on full display. This has worked out quite well. Shurfone revealed a faint smile as he glanced at the various guild representatives behind him. Although he was in Blackwing City, it would not be so easy to sell out of the Dragon Scale set equipment quickly. Soon, Shurfone found a high-class restaurant and rested for a moment. Before Shurfone could get comfortable, a few players abruptly sat across from him. These players were all level 25 and above, and their equipment was at least Secret Silver rank. One could easily tell that these were not ordinary players. They would be the center of attention on the streets of any other city. However, they could not compete with Shurfone. Shurfeng's dark gold set equipment was as dazzling as the sun, and one would find it difficult not to notice. What business do you have with me? Shurfeng spoke softly as glanced up at these players. These players felt their chests tighten under Shurfeng's pinning gaze, and their opinions of the player before them rose. Friend, please don't misunderstand us. This humble one is called Swallow Nine. We noticed your extraordinary bearing, and that you wear a full dark gold set equipment, so there is certainly no need to discuss your strength. We have also noticed that you are an independent player. We few are the representatives of major guilds, and we want to extend invitations to our guilds. The one who spoke was an elegant middle-aged man with a thin figure. On his chest, the man wore the guild emblem of a super guild, the Ninth Heaven Pavilion. Compared to the other representatives before Shurfone, it was obvious that the power supporting Swallow Nine was far more extensive. If first-rate guilds were the princes and princesses of the virtual gaming world, then super guilds were emperors and empresses. Whether regarding financial powers, influence, or history of super guilds, first-rate guilds could not compare to any of them. In God's domain, a first-rate guild was capable of controlling the majority of a kingdom's territory. A super guild, however, possessed the capacity to control one or two empires' territories. One could just imagine how massive the gap was between the two. Meanwhile, Ninth Heaven Pavilion was a rather ancient super guild. Before the appearance of God's domain, they had been the overlords of several dozen large-scale virtual reality games. They had long since created a gigantic virtual empire for themselves. However, due to the appearance of God's domain, many virtual reality games had lost their markets. Thus, the Ninth Heaven Pavilion focused their investments on God's domain. Meanwhile, the fact that the middle-aged man before Shurfone was the guild representative of the Ninth Heaven Pavilion spoke volumes of his abilities. I'm waiting for someone. I also have no interest in joining any guild, so please leave. Shurfone expressed his impatience, going so far as to reveal a trace of killing intent. Shurfeng's strength allowed him to face a lord as an equal. After going berserk, he could even overwhelm a lord-ranked monster. After living in God's domain for a time, players' intuitions had improved somewhat. Even ordinary players could vaguely sense things such as killing intent, let alone elites and expert players. If Shurfone casually released a little killing intent, he could inflict a suffocating fear onto an ordinary player, the feeling was more intense for elites and experts who could sense killing intent with more clarity. So strong. Swallow 9 was inwardly shocked. 
Although Sherfoam had not taken any action, he could feel how powerful Sherfoam was. The swordsman before him was definitely not an ordinary expert, and he was someone who could rival even the top powerhouses in the Ninth Heaven Pavilion. If factoring in his equipment, the top powerhouses of the Ninth Heaven Pavilion might not even be a match for Sherfoam in a one-on-one -on -one fight. However, this revelation had only served to excite Swallow Nine further. Friend, if you are not willing to join, why don't we become friends? Swallow Nine did not mind Sherfang's killing intent at all. Smiling, he said, with such strength, I believe that you must have a lot of weapons and equipment that you do not need. I am willing to purchase your items 20% higher than market value. How about it? The other representatives had nodded in agreement, though they were not as calm and carefree as Swallow Nine. They had never thought, even for a second, that Sherfang would join their guilds. Experts of this level normally had quirky personalities and would never submit. Meanwhile, joining a guild meant accepting someone else's control. Sherfone would not agree to such an invitation. However, seeing that Sherfone was an expert capable of possessing a dark gold set equipment, he should have many other top-tier weapons and equipment. Even if Sherfone did not possess an extra dark gold set equipment, at the very least, he should have a stock of dark gold or fine gold ranked items. Such items were extremely difficult to purchase. It was common knowledge that top-tier equipment could not be bought from the market. Even top-tier workshops would keep such equipment for themselves, they definitely would not sell it. If one wished to obtain such equipment, they could only rely on themselves. However, it was easier said than done. Now that they had encountered such a rare opportunity, naturally, they could not let it get away. You wish to buy my items? Sure Fong laughed. With disdain, he then said, do you think you can afford them? If you have something to sell, regardless of how many items there are, I, Swallow 9, guarantee that I will purchase all of them at 20% above market value. If you have top tier equipment, I will purchase it at 50% above market value, Swallow 9 confidently declared. Right. Our guilds have no issues doing the same, the other representatives promptly voiced their agreement. Although their guilds could not compare to the Ninth Heaven Pavilion, they were still major guilds. They had more than enough money to purchase a single expert's extra equipment. Ha ha ha. Interesting. Interesting. Sherfeng sure suddenly laughed. However, Sherfeng's sure actions only made Swallow 9 and the others turn to look at each other. 1000 gold. If you have 1000 gold on your persons right now, I will consider letting you look at the equipment I no longer need. Otherwise, scram. Find someone else to disturb. Chapter 469, Gathering of the Powerful Sherfoam was very loud, and every player on the second floor of the restaurant had heard his words loud and clear. 1000 Gold Many of the guild representatives in the restaurant with similar ideas as Swallow 9 immediately sucked in a cold breath. To any guild in God's domain, 1000 gold was not a small sum. Super guilds were no exception. Guilds supported a majority of the layers in Blackwing City. Although they were all very rich, their maximum trade volumes would not exceed 100 gold. Meanwhile, Sherfone casually demanded a price of 1000 gold. Moreover, this was only the bottom line. If they did not have 1000 gold in their bags, he wouldn't even consider a trade. How arrogant. He was simply too arrogant. However, despite Sherfeng's arrogance, not a single person present had chosen to turn around and leave. On the contrary, they promptly contacted their respective guilds, ordering the preparation of 1,000 gold. 1,000 gold. You're insane. Do you know the significance of 1,000 gold at this stage of the game? What? That expert in the dark gold set equipment stated that he would only consider a trade with someone possessing 1,000 gold. The various guilds were shocked upon receiving this news. However, that shock soon turned into rage, as these guilds felt that Sherfeng was only toying with them. 1,000 gold. Currently, gold coins were still scarce. Although the prices of coins had decreased significantly, even 10 million credits was not enough to purchase 1,000 gold. Moreover, not even a dark gold set equipment was worth 1,000 gold. What? Don't have it. Sure Fong smirked at Swallow 9 and the others. Impatiently, he said, since you don't have it, please leave. Stop disturbing my peace. No, please wait a moment. It is true that I do not have that much money on me right now. However, someone will send the money over quickly, Swallow 9 said as he calmed his pounding heart. He had to admit that Sherfong had given him a fright. However, the more arrogantly Sherfong behaved, the more Swallow 9 believed that Sherfong had something valuable to offer. Experts of this level had very high self-esteem, and an arrogant attitude was normal. However, one thing was certain, such experts would not fabricate false rumors. If Sherfong dared to make such ridiculous statements, then he definitely had the capital to do so. Although Swallow 9 did not know what the capital was, he knew that it would not be insignificant. TCH, truly annoying. Sherfong sure frowned at Swallow 9's words. Paying no more attention to the middle-aged man, Sherfong sure called up the official forums and began to browse. Everything was going according to plan. Moreover, shortly after he had stated his price of 1000 gold, a post about him had set the official forums of God's domain on fire. 
There was even a post mentioning the 1,000 gold trade qualification he had demanded. Many people had begun to discuss the situation. They all felt that Sherfone was a lunatic and was too arrogant. Some had even begun to doubt his equipment. Quickly, this news had attracted the attention of even more guilds. After a dozen minutes or so, the restaurant Sherfone occupied exploded with activity. Players filled the restaurant, and every one of them represented a guild. The majority of the guilds present were first-rate guilds, with the lowest being second-rate guilds. Two additional super guilds had even arrived. One of the new super guilds to arrive was Sanctuary, while the other was King's Return. These two super guilds were powerhouses similar to the Ninth Heaven Pavilion. Currently, the representatives of so many famous guilds, including three super guilds, had gathered in this one high-class restaurant. This was something that had never happened in the past. And all of this was due to the sudden appearance of a mysterious expert. Of the three super guild representatives, two were men, and the last was a woman. Among them, Swallow Nine represented the Ninth Heaven Pavilion, a polished woman named Flourishing Colors represented Sanctuary, and King's Return was represented by a crude and brawny-looking man named Thunder Tiger. Flourishing Colors was a level 26 summoner, whereas Thunder Tiger was a level 26 berserker. It was clear that the three super guild representatives knew each other, as the moment the three met, they began to chat as if they were old friends. Sure Phone glanced at the second floor, discovering that the high-class restaurant seemed to represent God's domain's current power. As Swallow Nine, Flourishing Colors, and Thunder Tiger were representatives of super guilds, the three sat opposite of Sherfone. As for the representatives of first-rate guilds, they hovered nearby. As for the few second-rate guilds, they sat near the staircase. The hierarchy had been clearly established. The three belonging to super guilds paid no attention to those belonging to first-rate guilds, and those belonging to first-rate guilds paid no attention to the second-rate guilds. The representatives present only spoke to those on the same level as themselves. If Zero Wing attended this gathering, its representative would most likely have to stand at the restaurant's entrance. After half an hour, Swallow Nine finally spoke. I've put together my 1,000 gold. Please take a look, Swallow Nine said as he smiled at Sure Foam. He then placed his coin pouch on the table. Although the coin pouch was only the size of a fist, this was only an illusion. Regardless of how much money it contained, the coin pouch would retain the same size. Moreover, a player's coin pouch was bound to them, and nobody could steal it. However, others could still check the amount inside with the owner's permission. Brother Expert said that one would qualify to trade with you so long as they have 1,000 gold. I happen to have 1,000 gold with me. Please check it for yourself, Brother Expert. Thunder Tiger similarly placed a coin pouch on the table. I have the same. Flourishing Color smiled faintly as she, too, revealed her coin pouch. For a time, the various guild representatives on the second floor promptly presented their coin pouches to Sherfone, allowing him to inspect them. As the crowd waited for Sherfeng's inspection, instead of actually doing so, Sherfeng smiled and said, that won't be necessary. I believe that the guilds present should not be so poor as to not even possess 1,000 gold. Since all of you have 1,000 gold on your persons now, you all qualify to trade with me. However, the items I wish to sell are limited. Since there are so many people here, I'm sure none of you will oppose an auction, right? Suddenly, the crowd understood Sher Feng's intentions. This was a public auction. If so, the items would definitely be sold far above market value. Realizing the truth of the matter, everyone's expressions darkened. Of course, you can also choose not to buy my items. I won't force those who are unwilling. Sher Feng yawned. Slowly, he said, if anyone is not interested, you are welcome to leave. Yet, even after Sher Feng's declaration, not a single representative turned to leave. They all wanted to see the reason behind Sher Feng's confidence. Since everyone agrees, I'll begin with the first item, then, Sher Feng said as he swept a glance over the crowd in the hall, nodding with satisfaction. Everything was going according to plan. What happened next would depend on how these people would compete. Hearing Sher Feng begin the auction, the crowd grew tense. Even Swallow Nine, Thunder Tiger, and Flourishing Colors, the representatives of three super guilds, focused on Sher Feng's every move. In the next moment, Sher Feng took out a piece of equipment from his bag. Looking at the glow of the equipment, it seemed to be fine gold rank, not dark gold rank as everyone had expected. Even so, fine gold equipment was quite valuable. Currently, fine gold equipment was very rare. Although some were available on the virtual trade center, most of those items had inferior attributes. Initially, everyone had thought Sherfone would state the starting bid for the equipment, signaling the representatives to begin. However, Sherfone proceeded by revealing another piece of equipment. Moreover, this item was also fine gold ranked. One piece. Two pieces. Three pieces. Sure Phone displayed a total of six pieces of equipment. Moreover, although these six pieces were all different, they possessed a single style. That is a fine gold set equipment. The crowd was stupefied when they saw the dragon scale set equipment on the table. They even wondered if their eyes played tricks on them. Though large guilds had several pieces of dark gold equipment, not even the super guilds possessed a fine gold set equipment. Yet, an unknown expert like Sure Phone had one. 
Chapter 470, Strong Appearance Both the appearance and attributes of the Dragon Scale set equipment were far more powerful than ordinary fine gold equipment. Furthermore, one had to consider the set effects. When Sherfone placed the Dragon Scale set equipment on the table, he did not hide the set's attributes, allowing everyone to examine the set. These are the set effects of a fine gold set equipment. The effects of this Dragon Scale set are insane. It could rival the effects of that rumored Warfire set. I've seen the effects of the Warfire set before. Warfire is more suited for PvP, while this Dragon Scale is suited for dungeon raiding. It is what guilds need most right now. The crowd was dumbfounded after reading the Dragon Scale set equipment's information. Aside from how important the Ignore Levels effect was to players right now, the Fury effect alone could raise their damage to a whole new level. There were also the Strength and Agility attribute increases, both of which were the most important attributes to any physical class. Overall, every set effect of the Dragon Scale set was very useful to a physical class. If equipped, a player's combat power would instantly rise by two or three levels. It was frightening. You've seen the equipment for yourselves. The bidding will start at 100 gold, with a minimum bid increment of 1 gold. Sure phone chuckled. He then announced, you may begin. Before the crowd could recover from their shock, Shurfang's opening price stunned them once more. The market offer for the Warfire set equipment was also 100 gold, and the set could be upgraded to fine gold rank. Moreover, the set's level would increase with the players, and it could become a level 30 fine gold set equipment. The Dragon Scale set equipment was only a level 20 fine gold set equipment. The opening bid was simply too expensive. If the set were a level 25 fine gold set equipment, it might be worth 100 gold. What? Nobody's bidding. Sherfone watched the silent crowd. Leisurely, he said, since nobody wants to buy it, then our trade comes to an end. We don't have anything to talk about, so let's dismiss this issue. Even after Sherfone said this, the various guild representatives stood as still as stone, showing no intentions of leaving. Right now, they were like a pack of hungry wolves that had meat placed before them. How could they leave without a bite? Brother expert, your price is somewhat high. If it were the set you wear right now, I would pay double. That's right. I'm willing to buy the Dragon Scale set equipment at 60 gold. The guild representatives voiced their opinions, expressing their refusal of the high price of the Dragon Scale set equipment and imploring Sherfone to lower the price. After all, gold coins were not easy to come by. Now that every guild purchased coins in bulk, it had resulted in an abnormal shortage of coins. Currently, most of the guilds in God's Domain relied on their money farming teams to supply them with coins. Don't buy it if you think it is too expensive. I don't need to sell my equipment to you specifically, Sherfone said disdainfully. Sherfone knew exactly what these representatives were trying to do. At this moment, however, a crisp voice echoed throughout the restaurant's second floor. 100 gold. I want it. Immediately, everyone's attention shifted towards the person who placed the bid, discovering a bright and attractive beauty. Moreover, the majority of the equipment this beauty wore was fine gold rank, and the staff strapped to her back even emitted the glow unique to dark gold items. Isn't she Aqua Rose of Twilight Echo? I seem to recall Aqua Rose having left Twilight Echo. I believe she joined a small unknown guild. Her actions had caused quite the commotion. That's right, I remember it as well. Many guilds had tried to recruit her. Unfortunately, she rejected all of the offers, insisting on joining a small guild instead. At that time, many had sided her choice. How could she possibly achieve anything in a small guild? Twilight Echo even expressed that, as long as Aqua Rose acknowledged her mistakes, they would gladly welcome her back. Unfortunately, she refused. After not hearing anything about her for so long, I thought she had quit God's domain. It is somewhat unfortunate. However, based on her current appearance, it seems that she is getting by quite well. She even wields a dark gold weapon. No matter what was said or done, Aqua Rose is very talented and powerful. With the nurturing of a small guild and some luck, it isn't exactly impossible to obtain level 20 fine gold and dark gold equipment. However, she probably won't grow beyond that. After all, a small guild is still a small guild. The crowd instantly fell into a discussion about Aqua Rose. She was quite famous in the virtual gaming world, and like the Snow Goddess, she had been nicknamed the Rose Goddess. Naturally, the guild representatives recognized her. The crowd's attention turned from Aqua Rose, shifting towards Twilight Echo's representative. Twilight Echo's representative, Brilliant Wargit, had also noticed Aqua Rose's appearance. He was visibly delighted. It was especially true when he heard everyone's evaluation of the woman. Ever since he had suffered defeat at Shurfang's hands, due to the punishment from the system, his leveling speed had slowed to a crawl. Even when he accompanied others, he could not level any faster. Having no other choice, he chose to act as the guild's representative and mingled in Blackwing City. He hated Shurfang fiercely for placing him in his current situation. Previously, he had allowed Aqua Rose to leave Twilight Echo with ulterior motives. He wanted to teach Aqua Rose that she was nothing without Twilight Echo, and in the end, she would beg to return to the guild. 
However, upon seeing Aqua Rose's equipment and level, Brilliant Wargit's expression sank, disappointed. Keep up your pretenses. I want to see just how long you can keep up the act. Brilliant Wargit had paid close attention to Zero Wing, so he knew that Zero Wing was currently engaged in an all-out war against Overwhelming Smile. Others might not know Overwhelming Smile's backer, but he did. A tiny guild like Zero Wing would only last a few more days. All right, 100 gold going once. 100 gold going twice. Sure Fong did not care whether the crowd paid attention to Twilight Echo's representative or not. He just smiled faintly as he confirmed the bid. Immediately, his words shook everyone back to their senses, and the representatives promptly started shouting their own bids. 101 gold. 103 gold. 108 gold. The dragon scale said equipment that nobody wanted had suddenly risen to a price of 132 gold. What had happened to 100 gold is too expensive. Their complaints had been nothing more than nonsense. After all, this was a level 20 fine gold set equipment that none of the guilds in God's Domain possessed. Although the set was not particularly suitable for MTs, it still had better effects than the individual equipment pieces that their MTs currently wore. How could they possibly give up on it? When Thunder Tiger placed a bid of 132 gold, the crowd began to hesitate. 150 gold. Aqua Rose calmly rose the bid. The crowd turned to look at each other, shocked. Even to a large guild, 150 gold was not cheap. To a small guild, that should practically be all they had. Yet, Aqua Rose seemed not to care about the price at all. The representatives began to wonder what kind of guild supported Aqua Rose. 155 gold. Swallow 9 stated. 158 gold. Flourishing colors began to bid as well. 150 gold was almost the limit a first-rate guild would willingly bid, any more would be too expensive. However, the three super guilds did not care about this price. Just as the three super guilds began to compete with each other. 200 gold. Although Aqua Rose's voice was not particularly loud, her bid swept through the crowd like a chilling wave. Chapter 471, It is difficult to breed true dragons in shallow waters. 200 gold coins. The crowd immediately fell silent. Everyone turned to Aqua Rose, the rose goddess who had left the first-rate guild Twilight Echo. She's insane. Spending 200 gold coins just to garner some fame is foolish. Does the guild behind her really possess so much money that they can disregard 200 gold? Every representative had their own speculation. Some believed that Aqua Rose was trying to use the money to buy fame, while some believed that the guild supporting her possessed an extraordinary background. However, regardless of the reasons behind her actions, everyone's admiration for Aqua Rose grew. Every guild here could afford to spend 200 gold. After all, before Sherfone had started his auction, he had required that anyone who wanted to trade with him must first carry 1,000 gold on them. If not for the 1,000 gold in their bags, they would not be so shameless as to participate in the auction. Every guild in this restaurant was a reputable major power. If others discovered that they did not have 1,000 gold in their bags, it would tarnish their guild's reputation. However, although they had the money, they would not spend it on useless items. They would only buy that which had value to their guilds. After all, their members had struggled to earn every gold coin. Nobody wanted to be played for a fool. The three super guild representatives were also silent. They looked at Aqua Rose with curiosity, confused as to what the Rose Goddess was attempting to do. 200 gold going once. Sherfone watched the calm and composed Aqua Rose, silently praising her performance. He had to admit that Aqua Rose's confident smile even led him to believe that 200 gold was no different from spare change to her. 200 gold going twice. Just as Sherfone shouted the second time, Brilliant Wargit suddenly shouted, 201 gold. This young master wants it. 210 gold, Aqua Rose said as she glared at Brilliant Wargit, disgust and hatred filling her eyes. 211 gold, Brilliant Wargit sneered. Although he was not particularly interested in the Dragon Scale set equipment, he could not stomach letting Aqua Rose garner fame in front of this crowd. If that happened, it would wound his reputation. Hence, he could not allow Aqua Rose to have the Dragon Scale set equipment, allowing her to enjoy the limelight. 300 gold. Done wasting time, Aqua Rose significantly raised the bid. The other guild representatives were stunned. The three super guild representatives shook their heads helplessly. The price was simply too high. Previously, everyone had believed that Aqua Rose would never rise without the help of Twilight Echo. Yet, Aqua Rose's current performance was more domineering than during her time in Twilight Echo. She was no less imposing than Ouroboros's guild leader, the snow goddess Gentle Snow. They could not understand why Twilight Echo had discarded Aqua Rose. Brilliant Wargit's heart trembled upon hearing this bid. Gritting his teeth, he shouted, 301 gold. 
It had not been easy for the guild to raise the 1,000 gold he had on him right now, and part of the money had been taken from the funds set aside for Twilight Echo's guild residence. If he spent 300 gold here, it would undoubtedly delay the purchase of the guild residence by one or two days. 400 gold. Aqua Rose shouted without flinching. She then shot Brilliant Wargate a disdainful look. None of these representatives were fools. They could tell that, rather than purchasing an item, Brilliant Wargate and Aqua Rose currently competed via wealth. However, when they saw Aqua Rose's resolve as she called out a bid of 400 gold, they could not help but admire the Rose Goddess. Just what kind of financial power did she possess to ignore 400 gold? You. Seeing Aqua Rose's contemptuous glance, Brilliant Wargit had never felt such humiliation. Suddenly, he gritted his teeth and shouted, Aqua Rose. Don't even think of taking what's mine. So what if you bid 400 gold? I bid 500 gold. 500 gold going once. 500 gold going twice. As Sher Foam announced the price, Brilliant Wargit's anxiety grew. He was deeply afraid that Aqua Rose would place an even higher bid. At that time, he would have to raise his bid even further. Only when Sher Foam shouted the third time did Brilliant Wargit reveal a victorious smile. He then shifted his gaze towards Aqua Rose, smirking at the woman with pride. 500 gold, Sher Foam said as he walked up to Brilliant Wargit, placing the dragon scale set equipment in front of the man. He did not care about whatever thoughts occupied Brilliant Wargit's mind. When the crowd watched Brilliant Wargit hand over 500 gold in exchange for the Dragon Scale set equipment, envy, admiration, and disdain filled their hearts. However, they admitted that the Dragon Scale set equipment was currently the only level 20 fine gold set equipment available in God's domain. Although it was somewhat foolish to spend 500 gold, once they had the Dragon Scale set equipment, the profits they could reap with it might exceed 500 gold. Thinking up to this point, the various guild representatives felt somewhat regretful. Why had they not competed over the set? What if they could gain far more than 500 gold with the use of the set? After obtaining the Dragon Scale set equipment, a sense of indescribable joy filled Brilliant Wargit's heart as he watched the silent Aqua Rose. However, before he could ridicule the woman, Sherfong suddenly spoke again. Let's begin the auction for the second item, then. The auctioned item is another Dragon Scale set equipment. Like before, the starting bid is 100 gold with minimum increments of 1 gold. Saying so, Sherfong placed another Dragon Scale set equipment on the table. You. How? Why do you have a second? Brilliant Wargit felt his heart shatter when he saw an exact copy of the Dragon Scale set equipment he had just purchased. Who said I only had one set? Sure Foam rolled his eyes at Brilliant Wargit before proceeding with the auction. Brilliant Wargit's elation deflated. When he saw Aqua Rose's laughing expression, he even had the thought of killing himself, one. When the crowd saw the second Dragon Scale set equipment on the table, they all glanced at their fellow representatives. Nobody had expected Sure Foam to have a second set. The regret that they had felt immediately vanished. They had somewhat admired Brilliant Wargit for spending 500 gold to purchase the first level 20 fine gold set equipment in God's domain. Now, however, that admiration turned into ridicule. 150 gold. I bid 155 gold. Previously, everyone had felt that 100 gold was too expensive. Now, however, multiple guilds simultaneously began the bid with 150 gold. However, just like before, Aqua Rose immediately dashed everyone's hopes by bidding 200 gold. This time, the three Super Guild representatives did not hesitate as they shouted higher bids. Items of rarity were expensive. It was especially true during the early stages of God's Domain. Just a single piece of equipment could significantly affect the future development of a guild, not to mention a fine gold set equipment. In the end, Aqua Rose purchased the second Dragon Scale set equipment at 280 gold. The many guild representatives envied and admired her. Simultaneously, they also could not help but acknowledge that Aqua Rose was really amazing. Even after leaving Twilight Echo, she was still so well off. One could just imagine how capable she was. On the other hand, Twilight Echo had been so blind as to chase Aqua Rose out of the guild. As everyone admired Aqua Rose, interest in her guild also began to grow. It was difficult to breed a true dragon in shallow waters. Aqua Rose was undoubtedly a true dragon. No ordinary guild would be good enough to catch her eye. Soon, Sherfone took out the third dragon scale set equipment, rendering the crowd utterly speechless. They had even started to suspect that the Dragon Scale set equipment was some kind of common good that could be purchased anywhere. However, nobody complained. On the contrary, they all were elated because they had another chance to compete. Sure Fong had never mentioned how many sets he had on hand. What if this one was the last? Hence, everyone gritted their teeth and placed their bids. In the end, Swallow 9 won the third set for 291 gold. Following which, Sure Fong revealed the fourth set, which Sanctuary's flourishing colors won for 303 gold. Thunder Tiger of Kings Return won the 5th set for 322 gold, whereas a first-rate guild purchased the 6th set for 337 gold. Initially, everyone had believed that Sure Foam would reveal the 7th set. In the end, however, Sure Foam announced that the 6th was the last he had on him. This revelation had caused the crowd to regret not bidding higher. 
None of the guilds had cared much for obtaining a fine gold set equipment when no one else had owned one. However, now that some guilds had obtained one, things had changed. It was highly possible that due to the dragon scale set equipment, these guilds would take the lead in conquering level 20 large scale team dungeons. At that time, these guilds would gain a massive advantage over the others. Chapter 472, Massive Profits Rare items were expensive. Although Sherfone had over a hundred copies of the Dragon Scale set equipment, if he wished to sell them at a good price, he could not sell too many at once, he needed to regulate the number of sets he sold. Currently, the six sets he had actioned would not sate these guilds' thirst. Even if he tripled or quadrupled that number, the price they were willing to pay would not decrease. However, Sherfone would not do so. Six sets were the limit. If he sold any more, it would lead to everyone to believe that the Dragon Scale set equipment was easily obtainable. If he tried to sell it later, it would become impossible to get a good price. Although Sherfone had produced over a hundred sets of Dragon Scale set equipment, they were not cheap to forge. Aside from the basic materials, each set piece required ten Starfire Essences. One Dragon Scale set equipment cost more than ten gold to produce. After factoring in the forging success rate, a single Dragon Scale set equipment cost thirty gold. If anyone else forged the set, it would cost them over one hundred gold. Naturally, Sherfone could not sell the Dragon Scale set equipment for a low price. Despite Sherfong stating that he did not have another Dragon Scale set equipment on him, none of the various guild representatives believed him. Sherfong had been able to reveal six sets in a row. No matter how one looked at it, Sherfong must have found a special channel to obtain the Dragon Scale set equipment. Unfortunately, only he knew his source. However, they could do nothing if Sherfong insisted that he had run out of stock. Many of the representatives who had failed to purchase a set for themselves struggled with their reluctance to accept the situation. On the other hand, Aqua Rose's appearance had incited a heated discussion. The crowd was quite curious about the guild behind Aqua Rose. Even first-rate guilds like theirs had to hesitate before finally deciding to bid for the Dragon Scale set equipment, their hearts aching at the expense. The guild behind Aqua Rose, on the other hand, was actually willing to spend so much gold just to purchase a Dragon Scale set equipment. It was really surprising. After the auction concluded, Sherfone did not linger in the restaurant. Instead, he left and searched for a hotel to rest and change his appearance using the demon mask once again. Sure enough, there are quite a number of people following me. Sherfone glanced at the players inside the hotel's lobby. The moment he came downstairs, these players had promptly turned to look at him. No matter what was said or done, the Dragon Scale set equipment was a level 20 fine gold set equipment. The various guilds' desire for the Dragon Scale set equipment was self-evident. Even if he did not sell the set in bulk, it difficult to avoid attracting attention. These guilds would naturally try to discover the origin of the Dragon Scale set equipment. If these guilds learned that the Dragon Scale set equipment originated from Zero Wing, Zero Wing would become a target. It was already troublesome enough dealing with one overwhelming smile. If other first-rate guilds and super guilds joined the fray, Zero Wing would be cut off from its path of survival. Currently, unlike other guilds that branched out to various cities and kingdoms, Zero Wing developed itself solely in White River City. In general, the guild was only famous in Star Moon Kingdom. Outside of Star Moon Kingdom, it was simply another unknown guild. To these first-rate guilds and super guilds in Blackwing City, Zero Wing was not even a speck of dust, it was not worthy of their attention in the least. No lion recognized the ants beneath its feet. Sherfone could cope in White River City while facing one overwhelming smile. However, Zero Wing would end up in an extremely precarious situation should the many large guilds present move against it. This was also why Sherfone had called Aqua Rose. The first reason was to hike up the price of the Dragon Scale set equipment. The second was to avoid attracting these large guilds' suspicion when the set appeared in Zero Wing. You guys have fun waiting here, then. Sherfone smiled faintly as he left the hotel. From the moment he entered the lobby to the moment he left, none of the trackers paid him any mind. After leaving the hotel, Sherfone immediately hailed a horse carriage and rode it to the Blackwing Auction House. Other than holding the weekly large-scale auctions, the Blackwing Auction House was also a hub for players to sell their items. However, the items sold here were only available through the Blackwing Auction House, these items would not be available elsewhere. Although the sales scope was very narrow, Blackwing City's main role was to act as a trade hub. Guilds and players from various kingdoms and empires preferred to sell their items in the Blackwing Auction House, as it was far more lucrative to sell them here than it was to use their respective auction houses. Upon his arrival at the Blackwing Auction House, Sherfone placed 80 sets of the Dragon Scale set equipment up for sale without hesitation. He sold the sets in batches, selling only two or three sets at a time at intervals of around one hour. Meanwhile, the starting bid he set was 200 gold. After Sherfone finished his tasks, he left Blackwing City. However, shortly after Sherfeng's departure, the Blackwing Auction House exploded. It's actually the Dragon Scale set equipment. It can't be, right? Someone is actually selling the Dragon Scale set equipment on the Auction House. The price is high. That person set the starting price at 200 gold. 
Players who frequented the Blackwing auction house drooled when they saw the Dragon Scale set equipment. Who knew how many items they had to sell to afford the price tag of this set equipment? News of the situation swiftly spread throughout Blackwing City. Previously, due to sure phone auctioning the Dragon Scale set equipment, information regarding the set had long since flowed between the various large guilds. Moreover, the fact that the three super guilds had each purchased a Dragon Scale set equipment had placed a significant amount of pressure on the first rate guilds, increasing their desire to own one for themselves. However, since Sure Phone no longer sold the sets, they could only dream of owning one. Now that they had received news of more sets being available, they had to compete for them. For a time, the Dragon Scale set equipment's price increased rapidly. In a short moment, the bids had risen from 200 gold to 280 gold. In the end, the first three sets of Dragon Scale set equipment in the Blackwing auction house had sold for 316 gold, 324 gold, and 328 gold. In an instant, Sure Phone had made a massive profit. However, Sherfone knew that this was only the beginning. The competition between the various large guilds was intense. It was of utmost importance to have a strong MT. Although the Dragon Scale set equipment was not particularly suitable for MTs, the set effects could increase an MT's strength significantly. This alone was enough to drive the large guilds crazy over the set. Hence, the price of the Dragon Scale set equipment would only increase from this point forward. Meanwhile, all of these gold coins secretly flowed into Sherfeng's pockets with none the wiser. The speed at which he currently earned money far surpassed the Star Street trading firm. However, this could not be helped. The Star Street trading firm's scope of operations was limited to White River City and the few surrounding cities. Meanwhile, Blackwing City catered to players across all of God's domain. Even a dozen Star Street trading firms could not compare to the Blackwing auction house. During Shifeng's visit to Blackwing City, overwhelming smile had not sat idle. The slightly over 100 mysterious experts had suddenly increased to more than 200. Although these mysterious experts had slaughtered Zero Wing's members, Zero Wing was no pushover, either. The guild's 50-plus tier 1 experts had similarly caused a significant amount of trouble for overwhelming smile. The experts of both sides had suffered some losses. However, as Zero Wing had fewer members on their side, it began to fall behind. For a time, the level 20 maps around White River City had become the battlefield for the two guilds. This had frightened other players, and nobody dared go anywhere near these battlefields. In just a few hours, both sides had suffered over a thousand deaths. The gold coins each guild had to spend was also shocking. Each guild would, most likely, have to spend over 500 gold a day. Is overwhelming smile aiming for a swift conclusion? Sure Phone was confused, and he frowned deeply when he saw the death count of both guilds. Chapter 473, Black Dragon Phantom Sure Phone could not help but admire overwhelming smile's decisiveness. They had actually increased the number of well-trained open warfare experts they had to over 200. Even first-rate guilds would not dare station over 200 experts in a single city. Not even Star Moon City would receive such treatment. After all, there were over a hundred cities in the entire Star Moon Kingdom. It was not wise to put all of one's eggs in one basket. Guild leader, should I have our members go to areas with fewer resources to level? If we continue this exchange with overwhelming smile, it will severely affect our guild's development rate, Aqua Rose inquired, worried. Originally, Aqua Rose had been very confident of defeating overwhelming smile. After all, Sherfone had earned quite a lot of money through the sales of the Dragon Scale set equipment. He had earned over 1,700 gold just from the auction in the restaurant. With so much gold on hand and the follow-up income, they could easily drown Overwhelming Smile in gold coins if they wanted to. However, Overwhelming Smile's current performance was too effective. How, exactly, had Overwhelming Smile managed to recruit so many experts? Overwhelming Smile gave them no room to breathe as its attacks became stronger with each consecutive wave. Although the experts on their side were more powerful, their opponents would flee whenever they encountered Zero Wing's Tier 1 players. Moreover, Overwhelming Smile had more experts on their side than Zero Wing. When comparing the number of players each side could kill, Zero Wing was outmatched. Sure enough, these mysterious experts are a big problem, Sure Fong scowled. If he did not deal with this matter properly, Zero Wing would fall. At that point, money would be useless. However, experts that used hit-and-run tactics were also the most difficult opponents to face. This was why so many powerful solo players and independent teams had caused the various large guilds massive headaches in the past, to the point where the latter did not dare provoke the former. After all, when these powerful independent players were forced into a corner, they could simply turn to guerrilla warfare and ambush the guild's members. By the time the guild's experts arrived, these independent players would be long gone. Unless the guild's experts arrived at the scene as soon as the independent players took action, catching them in the fields was only a dream. Currently, although both Zero Wing and Overwhelming Smile employed these hit-and-run tactics, Overwhelming Smile's experts outnumbered Zero Wing's by 4 to 1. In the long term, Zero Wing would definitely burn out first. Appear immediately. That's right. Appear immediately. Sure Phone suddenly received a flash of inspiration. Smiling faintly, he said, Aqua, notify the members out in the field to report their coordinates through the guild channel should they meet Overwhelming Smile's experts. 
I've already tried that. It's useless. Our men cannot arrive in time. Moreover, those experts are very sly. Even if we encounter them, they run the moment they see our reinforcements, Aqua Rose said, shaking her head. Give the order and leave the rest to me, Sherfone chuckled. Anyone else might be helpless in this situation. At most, he could join the hunting parties and slaughter Overwhelming Smile's members. How could he possibly be more efficient alone than Overwhelming Smile's large number of experts? However, he had the Seven Luminaries Ring. As long as his target was within 40,000 yards, he could easily arrive at the first sign of trouble. I understand. Although Aqua Rose was confused about Shurfang's intentions, since he had given the order, he must have his own countermeasures. Before, when she had worried over the lack of guild funds, Shurfang had suddenly revealed so many sets of dragon scale set equipment. He had even converted them into a large amount of gold, utterly surprising her. Moreover, after her act of purchasing the dragon scale set equipment and the display of her frightening wealth, several representatives of first-rate guilds had sought her out for cooperation and resource trading. Unknowingly, Zero Wing had obtained another channel for earning gold coins. Shurfang's single move had taken care of her worries in one fell swoop. He was godlike. Aqua Rose struggled to believe that someone like Shurfang had actually remained unknown all this time. It's about time I make overwhelming smile pay back some of its debt. Following which, Sherfone placed the remaining sets of the Dragon Scale set equipment in the guild's warehouse. Of them, two were available for guild members. He then took out one level 25 fine gold weapon and ten level 25 secret silver weapons. Although his current combat power was already quite high, like a lion pouncing on a hare, it was necessary to go all out even when fighting a small enemy or tackling a minor problem. Hence, Sherfone intended to upgrade the Abyssal Blade's level. He was currently level 26, he could upgrade the Abyssal Blade to level 25. However, every time he upgraded the Abyssal Blade, the weapon would create quite a commotion. Hence, Sherfone left White River City, teleporting to the Watch Cemetery. Due to war, the Watch Cemetery had become a land of death. Even the sky here remained dusky, and tombs crowded the cemetery. The majority of the monsters that appeared here were undead type, and although there were a lot of them, their HPs were relatively low. As it was a level 22 to level 28 map with an extremely abundant amount of resources, over a quarter of White River City's level 20 plus players had come here to level up. The Watch Cemetery contained many treasure chests and hidden quests. However, the cemetery was most famous for its treasure chests. In the past, countless lucky independent players had encountered mysterious iron and even secret silver treasure chests here, obtaining plenty of top-tier equipment and items. Because of this, battles between players had frequently happened in the Watch Cemetery. Similarly, over half of the battles between Zero Wing and Overwhelming Smile occurred here. There sure are a lot of players who have died here. The moment Sherfone teleported to the Watch Cemetery, he was greeted by the sight of corpses littering the ground. The tragic scene could easily match the one in White Fog Canyon, this scene may have even been more tragic. After all, usually only elite players visited the White Fog Canyon, whereas ordinary players had come to the Watch Cemetery. One could just imagine how intense the battle here had been. Nobody should be able to discover me here. Sherfone found a hidden underground tomb. After investigating his surroundings and failing to discover any nearby players, he unsheathed the Abyssal Blade. Devour. Sherfone lightly tapped the Abyssal Blade's level up button. After Sherfone selected a level 25 fine gold weapon and 10 level 25 secret silver weapons, the silvery gray Abyssal Blade suddenly released a black fog. Compared to the previous level ups, the black fog was denser this time. The 11 sacrificial weapons instantly transformed into ash when they came into contact with this black fog. In the next moment, the power within these weapons flowed into the Abyssal Blade. Immediately, Sherfone felt the Abyssal Blade release a massive pulse. Rather than a pulse, it was more like a heartbeat. Underscore thump. Thump, underscore. Each consecutive heartbeat grew clearer and more intense. In the next moment, the Abyssal Blade struggled free from Sherfeng's hands, sending Sherfeng flying into one of the walls of the tomb. What's happening? Sherfeng watched the hovering Abyssal Blade, surprised. This was the first time he had encountered such a rejection. As the pulses grew more intense, the tomb began to tremble. Suddenly, a large boom resounded as the entire underground tomb collapsed and vanished, revealing the dark gray sky above. Soon after, the abyssal blade fragmented and transformed into a massive pitch black heart. Along with the heartbeat, the phantom of a massive black dragon emerged. The black dragon was over a dozen meters tall, and its bone-chilling eyes focused on Sherfoam. Suddenly, it spread its maw and released a thundering roar. Chapter 474, Abyssal Upgrade The black dragon's roar shook the sky, loud enough that anyone nearby would notice it. What a powerful roar, a high-level monster must have spawned somewhere nearby. We'll be rich if it's a chieftain. Let's go and take a look. We can't let others snatch it from us. When a team of over 20 players a short distance from the tomb noticed the black dragon's roar, they finished off the monsters they currently faced and rushed over to the tomb. 
The watch cemetery was a land of treasures, and one could even discover a treasure chest by accidentally falling into a hole. However, powerful monsters were rare in the watch cemetery, and normally, these monsters lingered near treasures. This had already become a publicly acknowledged trend. This monster's roar alone was already so powerful. No one who heard it would risk missing this opportunity. At the same time, many other teams who had heard this frightening roar also ran towards the tomb and sure foam. At the epicenter of the roar, however, one man and one dragon stared each other down. The dragon released a frightening aura, and the surrounding air had started begun to stagnate. Is this the backlash? At this moment, Sherfone had heightened his five senses to their very limits, wearing a grim expression. All of his concentration was on the black dragon phantom before him. Although the black dragon was not the real thing, only a phantom, Sherfone proceeded with caution. Moreover, Sherfone had not reacted in such a way intentionally. His response had been an unconscious decision. The chilling killing intent in the phantom's gaze was so intense that Sherfone was breathless. He had never felt anything like this before, even against a great lord. Sherfone had never encountered the backlash of a magic weapon before. He had also never heard about what exactly occurred during a backlash. However, seeing that so many top-tier experts had fallen to it in the past, a magic weapon's backlash was no trivial matter. A single mistake in Sherfone might end up with a crippled character. This was also why every player had to consider their options carefully when they obtained a magic weapon. While Sherfone prepared to face a powerful enemy, the Black Dragon's Phantom only pinned Sherfone with its crimson eyes. It had not attacked. You're not going to strike. Sherfone was slightly surprised. Although Sherfone had not taken any measures to deal with the Abyssal Blade's backlash, his brain activity's improvement had allowed him to reach the refinement realm. With the techniques he had learned, he was already more powerful than he had been in the past, so he was confident that he could deal with the backlash. The Black Dragon's Phantom suddenly revealed a human-like sneer, deep disdain filling its eyes as it glared at Sherfone. Following which, the Phantom vanished, leaving behind only a pile of ruins and the Abyssal Blade, which buried its blade in the ground. At this moment, the Abyssal Blade had recovered its original black color and was now thoroughly pitch black. There was a faint layer of black smoke surrounding it, and no one could see the weapon during the dead of night. Is this not the backlash? Sure Fong examined the Abyssal Blade, disbelief coloring his expression. Sure enough, the more I level up the Abyssal Blade, the more powerful the Black Dragon becomes, and the weaker the suppression becomes. Sure Fong walked over and pulled the Abyssal Blade from the ground. He then checked the attributes of the magic weapon. Abyssal Blade, one-handed sword, magic weapon. Attack power plus 423. All attributes plus 36. Attack speed plus 12. Ignore levels plus 12. Attacks have. 45% chance to cause 200% damage. 20% chance to cause 300% damage. 20% chance to induce doom curse, reducing all attributes by 40% for 35 seconds. If wielder belongs to any swordsman related class, all skill levels plus 3. Increase free ability points received for every increase in level by 2 points. Equipment level 25. Can be upgraded. Devour 10 level 30 fine gold weapons and 1 level 30 dark gold weapon to upgrade to level 30. Can be evolved, unknown. Additional skill 1, phantom kill. Instantly creates a doppelganger. You can control this doppelganger. Doppelganger will have 70% of original body's attributes and all skills. At the same time, doppelganger and the original body can be swapped. Duration, 45 seconds. Cooldown, 5 minutes. Additional skill 2, Abyssal Bind. Binds enemies and prevents movement, reducing defense by 100%. Duration, 4 seconds. Cooldown, 1 minute. Additional skill 3, 9 Dragon Slash. Instantly creates 12 phantoms of the Abyssal Blade for the wielder to use, each phantom sword is capable of dealing up to 45% damage. Duration, 30 seconds. Cooldown, 5 minutes. Additional skill 4, Dark Violent Dance. 50% of the total damage dealt to the target spreads in a cone-shaped area towards targets within a distance of 12 yards. Duration, 30 seconds. Cooldown, 1 minute. Additional Profound Inheritance, Black Emperor. When activated, every critical hit will accumulate one layer of death aura. Each layer of death aura can be used to increase all attributes of wielder by 2% and attack speed and movement speed by 1% for 10 seconds, or be used to reduce the cooldown of a skill by 3 seconds. Maximum of 30 layers of death aura. Duration, 10 minutes. Cooldown, 16 hours. The Abyssal Blade was personally created by Master Smith Alice's using the Black Dragon King's Fangs as material. It is one of 36 famed swords, and it is ranked 31st. However, this sword has been cursed by the Black Dragon King. 
Aside from providing the wielder with immense strength, there will be a backlash every period of time. However, after being remodeled by Jack using a star crystal, the strength of the backlash has been greatly reduced. If the wielder is unable to suppress the backlash, the wielder will receive the curse of the Black Dragon King, permanently reducing all attributes by 50%. Unable to be dropped. Unable to be traded. The basic attributes and the skills of the Abyssal Blade had not undergone any significant changes. However, the magic weapon's attack power had massively improved. Previously, its attack power was only slightly over 300. After this evolution, its attack power had soared past 400. It was nearly 50 points higher than Fire Dance's level 25 Dark Gold ranked True Fire Blade. After retrieving the Abyssal Blade, Shurfong swung it a few times. He swung the weapon at a damaged stone pillar nearby. Tseng. Shurfong had not encountered any resistance as he cut into the stone. The sturdy pillar felt like air as the Abyssal Blade sliced through it, splitting it in two as it fell to the ground. So sharp. Shurfong stared at the remains of the stone pillar with shock. He then glanced back at the magic weapon in his hand. The Abyssal Blade was practically a weapon of gods. With such sharpness, not even secret silver equipment could defend against it. Just as Shurfong was about to leave the tomb, over a hundred players suddenly emerged from the dark forest. With a quick glance, it was obvious that these players were not all members of the same team. These new arrivals were also independent players. This. What happened here? These players were stupefied upon arriving at the thoroughly ruined underground tomb. Currently, the underground tomb looked more like a crater. Someone's there. A ranger with sharp eyesight pointed at Shurfong who was preparing to leave the area. Suddenly, everyone shifted their gaze towards Shurfong. At this moment, Shurfong wore a black cloak that obscured his appearance. He had also hidden the glow effects of his equipment. However, judging by the fine workmanship of his equipment, it should be of high quality. At the very least, his equipment should be mysterious iron rank or above. Shurfong was also level 26, so one could easily tell that he was not someone to provoke. Just as these independent teams hesitated over whether to take action against Shurfong or not, another party emerged from the forest. Every member of this party was level 25 and above, and all of them were as robust as a bear. The other payers avoided eye contact with these newcomers, intimidated by their cold gazes. Most importantly, all of their names were crimson. Brother Deep, we seem to have good luck today. With such a large commotion, a treasure must have spawned here. That brat definitely has the treasure. Yeah. His level is quite high as well. If we kill him, we will not have wasted a trip even if there is no treasure. This six-man party paid no attention to the hundred-plus independent players standing in the distance. Instead, their eyes were glued onto Shurfong, looking at him as if he belonged only to them. Just who are these people? They actually dare act so arrogantly, a male player from one of the independent teams grumbled. The leader of said party glanced the party of six red names. Immediately, cold sweat beaded on his forehead as he hurriedly said, Enough, we're leaving. But what about the treasure? Why should we let a single party have it? We outnumber them, the male player asked, confused. Enough. You stop talking. If you want to die, go ahead, but don't drag everyone else down with you. You've just arrived at Watch Cemetery, so you don't know about the unspoken rules here, there are two types of people you can never provoke. The first are the Tier 1 experts of Zero Wing, they are the second, overwhelming smiles parties. If we anger them, not a single one of us will get out of here alive, the team leader scolded as he glared at the male player. Upon hearing his team leader's words, the male player immediately shut his mouth. Before he had arrived at Watch Cemetery, he had heard of the two types of people his leader referred to. Nothing much would happen if one encountered the experts of Zero Wing. However, if one encountered the killing gods from Overwhelming Smile, they better pray that the other side was in a good mood. Otherwise. Following which, the other independent teams promptly departed from the area, not a single one of them dared to stay for the show. Chapter 475, Silent Massacre As the independent teams departed, many had sent pitying gazes to Sure Foam. That fellow sure is unlucky. If we had gotten a hold of him, we would have let him live so long as he handed over the treasure. Now that those people have arrived, he won't survive. I heard that those red names seem to have some sort of special treasure that causes the players they kill to drop more items than normal. It's not seem to, but it must have. One of Overwhelming Smile's expert parties killed a friend of mine, and he lost three pieces of equipment when he died. He had even dropped some of the items from inside his bag. Because of that, my friend was so frightened that he refuses to return to the watch cemetery. Shut up. We need to hurry up and leave this area. We won't be so lucky if we encounter those killing gods a second time. That's right. Let's get out of here. Although these independent teams possessed the numerical advantage, the expert parties of Overwhelming Smile were like fearsome tigers. They picked up the pace, leaving as quickly as possible. Shortly after the independent teams left, the expert party from Overwhelming Smile approached the motionless Shurfong. Brother Deep, that fellow must be scared stupid, he isn't even trying to escape. 
How boring, a simple and honest looking berserker laughed as he watched her foam. And here I thought that we had encountered a somewhat powerful player that can use for exercise. Killing noobs has become really boring. Enough, little whistle. Don't think that I don't know what's going through your mind. You just want to test out your new battle axe. Since this player has a fairly high level and is traveling alone, he should be relatively skilled. You can take care of him. The level 26 assassin referred to his brother deep laughed as he glanced at the simple looking berserker. Right, his items seem quite good. Don't forget to use that thing, we might get some good stuff from him. Leave it to me, the berserker, little whistle, squinted as he smiled at Shurfong, excitement flashing in his eyes. Step by step, he approached Shurfong slowly. He also retrieved a black potion from his bag and emptied the contents into his mouth. This thing seriously tastes horrible. If you didn't seem to have some valuable stuff on you, I wouldn't have to suffer such a nasty fate. Brat, stand still. I'll be done in just a second. Saying so, Little Whistle raised his blood-red battle axe and swung it down towards your phone. Although this swing seemed casual at first glance, it contained speed, accuracy, and ferocity that far surpassed any ordinary player's attack. Moreover, the battle axe flew towards Shurfang's neck, making the attack difficult to dodge. Little Whistle's casual, yet well-calculated, attack was clearly a habit developed after many years of training. He was unlike other players whose attacks would contain many unnecessary actions and were easy to dodge. Boom. The battle axe struck the ground heavily. Ah! Huh. I missed. Little Whistle looked at his battle axe, which landed next to Shurfang's feet. He had aimed properly. Did I have too much to drink earlier? However, just as he was about to lift his blood-red battle axe once more, he suddenly saw a streak of black light flash across his eyes. Before he could react, his field of vision began to flip. In the next moment, he felt a slight pain, and his vision began to gray as his body fell to the ground. As Little Whistle was a red name, over half of his equipment dropped upon his death. Immediately after, his immortal soul flowed into Shurfang's hand. Although he can't be considered an expert, he is still a skilled veteran. He is significantly stronger than an elite player. It's no wonder a single party has been able to wipe out teams easily. Shurfong thought as he frowned at the berserker lying at his feet. He then shifted his gaze to the five other party members a short distance away, paying no attention to the large amount of equipment scattered before him. This. When the five experts from Overwhelming Smile saw their teammates suddenly fall to the ground, disbelief colored their faces. Just what had happened here? Why was Little Whistle suddenly dead? From the beginning, they had focused on Shurfong. However, they could say with certainty that Shurfong had not moved. They only saw a streak of black light flash across Little Whistle's body. Black light. Right, it's that black light. Everyone, be careful. That brat has some sort of special item, the assassin named Brother Deep cautioned his team. He immediately activated stealth and melded with the darkness. The other four party members responded by unsheathing their weapons, watching Shurfang's every action. They had finally understood that they had encountered a slightly more difficult foe. If they did not respond properly, they might lose their lives without even knowing how they died. However, while they watched your phone, they discovered that the swordsman had suddenly disappeared. Where is he? The five of them examined their surroundings, failing to discover any signs of movement. A player had disappeared so simply right before their eyes. Was he an assassin? This thought suddenly popped into their minds. However, they had previously checked and could say with certainty that Shurfong was definitely a swordsman. Otherwise, they would not have been so carefree. After all, it would be extremely difficult to catch an assassin in stealth. While the five experts from Overwhelming Smile searched for Shurfong, he suddenly appeared behind the five players. Crap. Behind us. All five players were war veterans, so their sensitivity towards danger was extraordinary. They instantly discovered Shurfong, turning to attack him. At this moment, however, several streaks of black light emerged from Shurfang's hand. The black lights gave the five experts no time to react at all, even with their acute sensitivity. Damn, the assassin named Brother Deep hurriedly used Vanish, utilizing the moment of invincibility to block this mysterious strike. However, the assassin's four party members were not as fortunate as the Abyssal Blade bit into them, their HPs, ranging from 3000 to 4000, instantly fell to zero. When the five experts saw this horrific damage, they looked as if they had seen a ghost. This is bad, I'll definitely die if I stay here. When Brother Deep, the only survivor remaining, saw Shurfong look directly at him with a smile, his heart pounded as goosebumps covered his body. He was clearly in stealth, other players should not be able to see him at all. Yet, pinned by Shurfang's gaze, it was obvious that the swordsman saw him as clear as day. However, Brother Deep did not know that, as a tier 1 class, Shurfang's perception was very high. Moreover, he also had omniscient eyes. An assassin's stealth was practically useless. Due to his momentary shock, Brother Deep failed to avoid the streak of black light. Immediately, his HP depleted, and he was forced out of stealth. Before he knew it, his body had fallen to the ground. Such a quick sword. Even in death, the assassin could not figure out when Shurfong had attacked. 
Their party had consisted of people who had experienced life or death situations many times, so their awareness of danger was particularly sensitive. However, none of them had detected the slightest precursor to Shurfang's attacks. They had not been able to detect Shurfang's sword when it was a few inches from their faces, much less been able to defend themselves. You'll be the sixth. Shurfang spoke softly as he looked down at the shocked assassin. Relax, you'll have more companions soon. Just who are you? Upon hearing Shurfang's words, Brother Deep craved the answer to this question. However, as his HP had reached zero, he could no longer open his mouth. When Brother Deep thought about such a person slaughtering his companions, goosebumps rose all over his body. If such an expert suddenly decided to take action against them, none of them would have any hope of survival. Chapter 476, Haunted Only after finishing off Overwhelming Smile's expert party did Shurfang begin to loot the items they had dropped. Since Overwhelming Smile and Zero Wing had labeled each other hostile guilds, none of the members of either guild would receive any crime value when killing each other. However, aside from slaughtering the members of Zero Wing, the expert parties of Overwhelming Smile also frequently killed players who possessed high-quality equipment, resulting in them becoming red names. As red names, the penalty they received for dying multiplied, resulting in them dropping an abundance of items when they died. The six Overwhelming Smile experts had dropped a total of 54 items. Of them, 45 pieces were equipment, with a majority of the equipment being secret silver rank, and only 8 being fine gold rank. However, this was a significant harvest. In addition, there were 9 items had dropped from the experts' bags. Of the 9 items, 7 had dropped from the first Berserker Shurfong had killed. In God's domain, the chance of players dropping items from their bags upon death was minuscule. However, as the overwhelming smile experts were red names, this chance had been multiplied by several times. Even so, it was still a very small chance. The fact that Shurfong had obtained 7 items from a single player's bag, in addition to the 45 pieces of equipment from killing a 6-man party, was mainly due to this Berserker dropping all of his equipment. He had nothing left. It was unbelievable. Just how abysmal is this fellow's luck? Did he do something to anger the heavens? Not even someone who had killed thousands would have such a fate. Shurfong could not help but pity the Berserker lying at his feet. Regardless of how Shurfong felt, he still pocketed the Berserker's items. However, when he looked through the items, he discovered a dozen bottles of a black potion. Isn't this the potion that Berserker drank before the battle? Shurfong examined the black potion and suddenly recalled the Berserker's comment. He had not given the man's words much thought at the time, but as he looked at the potion now, he realized that it was something special. The black potion would actually increase the drop rate when killing players. However, the potion's effect similarly affected its user, and if the user died, their drop rate would multiply as well. This was the first time Shurfong had seen or heard of such a potion. There were over 10,000 types of potions in God's domain. Although he had played the game for over a decade, he was still ignorant of many of the items in the game. It was especially true for original creations of master alchemists, master forgers, and other lifestyle masters. Shurfong then read the black potion's data. Sure enough, this potion was crafted by a player. Shurfong could not help his shock upon reading the information of the black potion. This potion is called Haunted. Once consumed, the PvP drop rate increases from 100% to 300%. Meanwhile, if the user is killed by another player, their drop rate increases from 200% to 600%. Haunted has a duration of 5 minutes and a cooldown of half an hour. Whoever made this potion is amazing. Shurfong wanted to meet Haunted's creator. Unfortunately, the creator was displayed as unknown. It was clear that Haunted's creator wanted their identity to remain hidden. Shurfong had a significant understanding of God's domain. There were indeed tools that could increase a player's drop rate when killing other players, and every one of these tools were precious. However, Shurfong had never heard of a potion with such a function. It was inconceivable that such a potion had appeared. The current players of God's domain were still very low level, and the materials they could obtain were limited. To create such a powerful potion with such limited materials, this alchemist must be a genius. No wonder Overwhelming Smile is so zealously slaughtering other players. With Haunted, they can easily obtain plenty of valuable equipment. Shurfong suddenly understood the reason behind Overwhelming Smile's abnormal actions. Currently, as both Zero Wing and Overwhelming Smile fought in an all-out war against each other, both sides had suffered significant losses in terms of equipment. With Haunted, however, Overwhelming Smile could fund their battles with battles. The more well-equipped the player they killed was, the higher the quantity and quality equipment they could obtain. Normally, players would only drop one piece of equipment upon death. A single player had over a 10 pieces equipped. If only one out of those many pieces dropped, the chances of obtaining a good equipment was relatively low. After consuming Haunted, however, the members of Overwhelming Smile could obtain up to three pieces of equipment from the players they killed, significantly increasing their chances of obtaining good equipment. Since this is the case, I won't have to be polite with them, Shurfong revealed a faint smile as he stored the 12 bottles of Haunted in his bag. In reality, the PvP drop rate relied heavily on the luck attribute. Shurfang's current luck was relatively high. If he activated Divine Providence, he could raise his luck to 25 points. 
If your phone killed an ordinary player, even without consuming Haunted, it was almost certain that player would drop two or three pieces of equipment. Moreover, there was a relatively high chance for those two or three pieces to be the best pieces said player wore. If he included the effects of Haunted. Considering the situation, Sure Phone began to search through the guild channel, looking for any guild members in Watch Cemetery who had encountered an ambush. Perfect. You'll do. After a moment, sure enough, some members had reported through the guild channel that overwhelming smiles experts had ambushed them. They were in the Watch Cemetery. Immediately, Sure Phone input the coordinates into the seven luminaries ring and activated space movement. He then jumped into the spatial crack that appeared before him. In one of the gravel-filled prairies of the Watch Cemetery, a team of over a dozen players ran desperately for their lives. As they ran, the ranged classes on this team attacked the six robust-looking players pursuing them. If this happened anywhere else, it would confuse any onlookers. The side with more players actually fled from the side with less players. In the Watch Cemetery, however, nobody would find the scene surprising because the side with less players consisted of bloodthirsty lunatics with astonishing strength. Moreover, this party of lunatics consisted of only melee classes, there was not a single ranged class in their party. Damn, why aren't any of my attacks hitting them? One of the escaping male elementalists grumbled, dismayed as he watched the distance between his team and their six pursuers decrease. Hold on for a little longer. The tier 1 experts of our guild are heading towards us right now. A level 24 ranger, the leader of the team, tried to encourage his team members as he attacked with a frostbolt. Everyone on the team nodded to their team leader's words, newfound hope blooming in their hearts. The group of overwhelming smile experts behind them was simply too powerful. Before they had realized they were being ambushed, four of their team members had died. Although they tried to retaliate, the experts dodged or blocked most of their attacks, only a small number of control skills had any effect. Unfortunately, none of those skills were fatal. As soon as the battle had begun, they had sent out distress messages through the guild channel, reporting their current location. Fortunately for them, one of their guild's tier 1 expert parties was only a short distance away from them. They would be safe as long as they could reach that tier 1 expert party. Everyone, stop, the ranger shouted when he saw a cloud of cold air rising from the ground in front of them. Before any of them had noticed, another party had appeared. Moreover, the shield warrior standing in the lead was currently using a magic scroll. Unfortunately, the ranger's command was too late as a gigantic icicle suddenly emerged from the ground. The icicle struck the players at the forefront of their team, a damage of over minus 1000 points appearing above their heads. Simultaneously, frost shrouded their bodies, massively reducing their movement speed. We're finished. Despair filled the ranger's eyes as he stared at the massive icicle in front of them. They had barely survived the pursuit of a single party of experts. Now that another party had appeared, blocking their path, they no longer had any hope of escape. Ha ha ha. Come on. Keep running. I want to see how far you can get, one of overwhelming smiles experts sneered upon seeing the Zero Wing team's predicament. At this moment, however, a spatial crack appeared in the air, and a human figure suddenly emerged. Oh. It seems that I am quite lucky today. After Sherfone landed, he swept a glance over the two expert parties from Overwhelming Smile, a faint smile appearing on his face. Chapter 477, Yulan's Worries In White River City, shortly after Overwhelming Smile had established its guild residence, the street outside the guild residence was already packed with players hoping to join the guild. Over 10,000 players waited for their evaluation, far surpassing Zero Wing's guild recruitment. Currently, Overwhelming Smile offered three to four times more benefits than their rival. In addition, Overwhelming Smile had already become the unshakable overlord of Maple City. Now that Overwhelming Smile had its own guild residence, its momentum was unstoppable. As a result, many independent players who had observed the situation from the sidelines had decided to take action. In White River City, Zero Wing only had three advantages. The first was the presence of Black Flame, the number one expert of Star Moon Kingdom. There were also plenty of experts in Zero Wing, making the guild a good place to seek guidance and improve oneself. The second was the guild residence. Members of Zero Wing could receive a large number of high-level guild quests, allowing them to level up and earn money easily. The fact that members could accumulate a double EXP buff while resting in the guild residence was also quite attractive. The third was Zero Wing's guild warehouse. A lot of top-tier equipment was constantly available for guild members to earn, these items were not available outside of Zero Wing. However, to the majority of the players in White River City, Zero Wing's most attractive benefit was its guild residence. It was the reason that many had hesitated when choosing between Zero Wing and Overwhelming Smile. However, that issue had been resolved. Now that the well-funded Overwhelming Smile had its own guild residence as well, Zero Wing had lost its advantage. Currently, compared to Overwhelming Smile, the overlord of a city, Zero Wing was inferior. It was obvious which guild they should join. Ah. We are too late. A level 23 female cleric sighed helplessly when she saw the long line of players outside Overwhelming Smile's guild residence. The cleric then turned to the level 25 female elementalist beside her, grumbling to the innocent-looking girl in silver clothing, Rain, this is your fault. 
I told you that, as long as Overwhelming Smile establishes its guild residence, a ton of players are going to try to join. Now we've gotta wait so long if we want to join. Blue Bamboo, I've said it before, I'm only playing God's Domain because I am curious about this world. I want to understand more about this realistic fantasy world, and I don't really mind not joining a guild. Thoughtful Rain shook her head in response to her friend's words. She was not particularly interested in joining any guild. Rain, you're wrong about this. God's Domain is such a vast world, and there are plenty of dangerous places. If we're not strong enough, how can we explore those places? Meanwhile, joining a guild is undoubtedly the fastest way to grow stronger, the female cleric named Blue Bamboo countered. Just look at how poorly we are faring right now. We bought a majority of our equipment. To make things worse, our equipment is crappier than what guild members have. In that case, shouldn't we join Zero Wing? Thoughtful Rain asked, confused. I hear that Zero Wing's warehouse contains plenty of top-tier equipment that no other guild can match. Speaking of Zero Wing, Thoughtful Rain suddenly recalled the man named Yifong who had helped her before. She remembered that he was one of Zero Wing's members. The library emblem he had given her had helped her greatly, and she wondered how that man was faring. Don't you know? A war has recently broken out between Zero Wing and Overwhelming Smile, and each report is more amazing than the last. As a result, the independent players who had originally hesitated are now desperately trying to join Overwhelming Smile. Do you know why? Blue Bamboo asked mysteriously. That's because Zero Wing no longer has an advantage over Overwhelming Smile. Previously, Zero Wing slaughtered Overwhelming Smile's members, driving the guild into a corner. Now, however, the situation has completely changed. Overwhelming Smile has somehow managed to recruit a large number of experts, and these experts have slaughtered Zero Wing's members, scaring them from leaving the city. It probably won't be long before Zero Wing is destroyed, which is why so many players are rushing to join Overwhelming Smile. Moreover, Overwhelming Smile no longer targets Maple City. It has shifted its focus to White River City. The fact that the guild has established its first guild residence in White River City rather than Maple City had made that obvious. If we don't join Overwhelming Smile now, it will only be harder to do so in the future. Thoughtful Rain nodded, seeing the logic in Blue Bamboo's words. However, she looked at Blue Bamboo and said softly, you are correct. However, I still don't want to join Overwhelming Smile. Saying so, Thoughtful Rain immediately turned and left. Fine, then. I'll listen to you, but you better not regret your decision later. Blue Bamboo took one last glance at Overwhelming Smile's guild residence before following Thoughtful Rain. Meanwhile, inside Overwhelming Smile's guild residence, all of the guild members were currently in a celebratory mood. Initially, Zero Wing had been a thorn in their side. Now, however, their problems had been solved. With over 200 experts from their guild ambushing the members of Zero Wing, the war had turned to their favor. Many of Zero Wing's members were too afraid to leave the city. This greatly boosted the pride of everyone from Overwhelming Smile. At this moment, however, the atmosphere in the guild residence's meeting room was extraordinarily tense. What? You're saying that Little Deep's party was completely wiped out? How is that possible? Feng Xianyang was unable to stomach the news he had just received. The new batch of underworld guards that had been sent consisted of live combat veterans. Although not all of them were experts in God's domain, they were only slightly inferior. Even if these underworld guards encountered one of Zero Wing's Tier 1 expert parties, they could still drag one or two of their opponents to the grave with them if they went all out. However, a single player had annihilated one of these parties. They could not even escape. How could Feng Xianyang possibly believe this? Young Master Feng, there are countless experts in God's domain. The underworld guards aren't invincible, either. There is nothing strange about the slaughter. However, based on Little Deep's report of their assailant, it is likely that they ran into Black Flame. We already know the majority of the experts in White River City. Aside from Summer Sunshine, Black Flame is most likely the only player capable of this massacre, Yulan explained. Feng Xianyang had never watched a battle between true experts of God's domain. However, Yulan had personally witnessed Black Flame and Summer Sunshine's frightening encounter. Hence, she was not the slightest bit surprised about the appearance an expert capable of destroying an underworld guard party single-handedly. You're saying that Black Flame is responsible? Is Black Flame really that strong? Feng Xianyang asked skeptically. In his opinion, Black Flame was just a frog in a well. How could he possibly defeat a party of underworld guards by himself? Young Master Feng, I guarantee that Black Flame is more than capable of performing such a feat however, this is not the most important information we have received. Based on what Little Deep said, after they died, they could not log into God's domain for some time. Moreover, every underworld guard is currently a red name. If they die, they will lose at least half of their equipment. We will suffer a massive loss. Now that Black Flame has involved himself and is using such methods, if he focuses on hunting down the underworld guards, it will be a disaster for us. I suggest that we have the underworld guards stop their ambushes, retreat from the Watch Cemetery, and go elsewhere to level up, Yulan suggested. From the moment she met him, she had never been able to see through the man known as Black Flame. Now, Black Flame had suddenly begun to act and kill the party of underworld guards. 
This was not a good sign, and Yolan began to worry. Hence, she thought it best to quit while they were ahead. Yolan, you worry too much. Even if Black Flame is powerful, the Watch Cemetery is a massive area. Do you really believe that he can scour the entire map by himself? Feng Xianyang said disdainfully. Little Deep was simply unlucky and coincidentally encountered Black Flame. Losing one party isn't significantly damaging. On the other hand, our rampant ambushes on Zero Wing are severely wounding the guild. Moreover, there are so many treasures in the Watch Cemetery. If we give the area up, not only will it greatly reduce our guild's morale, but we will also lose a huge source of income. Besides, while Zero Wing has Black Flame, do you think that Underworld does not possess experts aside from the Underworld Guards? Feng Xianyang laughed. Chapter 478, Seven Ghosts Have they arrived as well? Yulan's beautiful eyes widened upon hearing Feng Xuanyang's words, shock coloring her features. Although the Underworld Guards were the core combatants of Underworld, they were not the peak combatants. Even so, the Underworld Guards were only slightly inferior to the peak combatants of other first-rate guilds, they were more than enough to deal with second-rate guilds. Since Feng Xianyang had said as much, the new arrivals were not members of the Underworld Guards. Instead, they should be the peak combatants of Underworld, the Seven Ghosts. That's right. To eliminate Zero Wing quickly and ensure that we obtain White River City, upper management has sent us two ghosts. With the two of them, Black Flame's good fortune will come to an end, Feng Xianyang laughed. Since two of the seven ghosts have arrived, Black Flame's hunting spree will no longer be an issue. On the contrary, this is our chance. Yulan nodded as she revealed a smile. Underworld was a massive organization, and those who joined the Underworld Guards were already considered experts. Meanwhile, the seven ghosts stood out among the Underworld Guards and stood at the peak of the organization. The seven ghosts held very high positions in Underworld, and even Feng Xianyang had to treat them with respect. Every one of the seven ghosts was an extraordinarily talented expert carefully selected by Underworld. Moreover, they had received Underworld's unreserved nurturing and hell-like training. Their strength had long since surpassed the realm of ordinary humans. If several ghosts worked together, even an expert like Summer Sunshine would be helpless. Now that Black Flame was going all out in his hunt of the Underworld guards, this was very good news for Overwhelming Smile. If the two ghosts found Black Flame while he was on his hunting spree, perhaps they could kill Black Flame and utterly destroy Zero Wing. Just as Feng Xianyang and Yulan discussed your phone, the man currently faced off against two Underworld Guard parties in the Watch Cemetery. Good luck. What an arrogant little brat. The two Underworld Guard parties glared at your phone, before turning to each other, smiling. The members of Zero Wing also watched your phone, who currently hid his appearance under his black cloak, astonishment filling their eyes. Shifeng had accidentally appeared and claimed to have good luck. Did he not know that the two parties surrounding them were the famous killing gods? Every one of these players was a demon who could slaughter people without batting an eye. Those who encountered these killing gods had only one ending, death. We have to hold our ground. Our guild's tier 1 experts are almost here. We'll be saved as long as we hold on for a little longer, the leader of Zero Wing's team said, gritting his teeth. A thread of hope appeared in the eyes of Zero Wing's members. When they looked at the two underworld guard parties surrounding them, their gazes burned with fighting spirit. Oh. You guys must have a death wish. Old Six, you deal with these guys. I'll deal with the new brat, a youthful looking level 26 swordsman named Fifth Ghost ordered with a deep voice. The youth was tall and robust, and he was currently garbed in golden battle armor. Brother Five, you're too cunning. This is the first expert we've found after such a long hunt, yet you're sending me to deal with the trash while you steal the expert for yourself, the level 26 berserker named Sixth Ghost complained. That brat is a swordsman. I'm also a swordsman, while you're just a berserker. Naturally, I should deal with him. If we meet a berserker, you'll deal with them. Deal. Fifth Ghost laughed. The berserker named Sixth Ghost could only nod in response. He then looked towards the underworld guards, saying, Leave these people to me. You guys only need to prevent them from escaping. Yes, the underworld guards immediately took up their formation. However, when Zero Wings members heard that the man named Sixth Ghost intended to deal with them alone, they rejoiced. Each side had about the same number of players. If the enemy faced them as a team, they stood no chance. If only one person attacked, however, they could probably kill the player and escape. We'll charge together. After we get rid of him, we can take the opportunity to break through the encirclement, the ranger team leader whispered. At this moment, when Shifeng saw Sixth Ghost approach the group, he suddenly said, No, you guys aren't his match. In a moment, run in the opposite direction. Elementalists, use ice walls and frozen circles while I hold them back. Zero Wing's elite team was strong enough that they had a good chance of defeating any ordinary expert. However, the berserker before them was not an ordinary player. The killing intent and pressure he radiated did not belong to an ordinary expert, so much so that even Shifeng sensed danger from the berserker. Moreover, when Shifeng used omniscient eyes to inspect everyone's data, Sixth Ghost's data surprised him. 
The berserker named Sixth Ghost was actually a Tier 1 class. This was the first time Shurfong had encountered a Tier 1 class belonging to another guild. The swordsman named Fifth Ghost was also a Tier 1 class. Judging from the respectful attitudes the Underworld Guard Party showed these two players, Shurfong guessed that the two were not ordinary characters. They were definitely high up in Underworld. Originally, Shurfong intended to hunt down Underworld Guards. Now, however, rather of hunting a cat, he had found a tiger. Thank you for the warning. However, we are the elites of Zero Wing. Even if he is powerful, he can't take us down easily if we work together, the ranger team leader said confidently. However, before the ranger could finish his words, Sixth Ghost had used charge, leaving only an afterimage behind him. In the blink of an eye, Sixth Ghost arrived before Zero Wing's battle-ready shield warrior. He then activated cleave and slashed his saber down on the shield warrior. Just as the shield warrior was about to block the attack with his shield, Sixth Ghost's saber suddenly vanished. The saber instantly reappeared in the shield warrior's blind spot and struck its target, sending the shield warrior flying backward. A damage of over minus 2600 points appeared above the shield warrior's head, reducing his HP by more than half. The entire process was as smooth as flowing water. None of the surrounding Zero Wing members had reacted to Sixth Ghost's attack. They could only watch as their MT was sent flying. Sixth Ghost's damage shocked Zero Wing's elites. None of them could believe that a Berserker could actually deal over minus 2600 damage to a shield warrior. However, Sixth Ghost was not done with the Shield Warrior. Twisting his feet slightly, Sixth Ghost transformed into an afterimage as he weaved through the crowd of players. He arrived behind the still airborne Shield Warrior and sent out another slash. Nobody had ever expected a Berserker to be so agile. Although the entire process seemed slow, in reality, everything had happened in an instant. Just as Sixth Ghost's saber was about to strike the Shield Warrior's back and end his life, Sixth Ghost suddenly spun and used Whirlwind Slash. Bang. Dazzling sparks scattered around him. Sixth Ghost's battle saber collided with a pitch black sword. Meanwhile, the owner of this sword was none other than the mysterious newcomer, Shurfoam. Brat, you sure are in a hurry to die. Sixth Ghost licked his lips, a hint of excitement appearing in his eyes as he smiled at Shurfoam. Since you can attack soundlessly, you should have also reached that realm. If not for his many years of combat experience and his senses picking up on Shurfang's faint killing intent, he would not have detected Shurfang's attack. Fortunately, he sensed the attack at the very last moment and instinctively used Whirlwind Slash. Otherwise, Shurfang's attack would have been successful. Other than his sparring sessions with the other ghosts, this was the first time he had encountered such a situation. Chapter 479, Triple Cut Saber and sword intersected, scattering sparks. Following which, Sixth Ghost and Shurfang exchanged moves continuously. Both Shurfang and Sixth Ghost possessed frightening strength, the ground beneath them cracking under the pressure. Surprisingly, neither expert had actually taken a single step back. However, it was a different story for the player's watch from the sidelines. Due to the resulting impact from the weapon's collision, the spectators were forced to retreat. They are so powerful. Even from this distance, I can feel how intense the impact is. No wonder Little Horse was sent flying, the ranger team leader muttered as he watched the scene before him. Fear filled his gaze as he watched Sixth Ghost. Since he had started playing God's Domain, this was the first time he had seen a player with such ferocious strength. It was simply terrifying. However, the fact that Shurfong could contend with such a monster was just as astounding. At this moment, the Tier 1 swordsman, Fifth Ghost, gaped at the two combatants with utter disbelief. Just who is that? He can compete with old Sixth Strength. Fifth Ghost's gaze sharpened as he began to watch Shurfong carefully. In terms of strength, a Tier 1 Berserker was definitely the strongest of all the classes. Moreover, Fifth Ghost knew how Sixth Ghost had allocated his free attribute points, they had all gone into his strength. Every piece of Sixth Ghost equipment was also strength-based. Yet, a swordsman like Shurfong was on equal footing with Sixth Ghost. It was inconceivable. Among the seven ghosts, Sixth Ghost's strength ranked third. Even a swordsman like himself refused to confront Sixth Ghost directly, relying on techniques to achieve victory instead. Now that an expert, capable of matching Sixth Ghost's strength, had appeared, Fifth Ghost could not help but focus on the fight. Brat, it seems that you're a tier one class as well. I won't continue playing games, then. Sixth Ghost roared, and suddenly, the skin covering his entire body turned red. His momentum had also changed as a violent aura surged forth from his body. This move was a Tier 1 skill belonging to Tier 1 Berserkers, Bull's Rage, which increased the player's strength by 20% for 15 seconds. Sixth Ghost's strength had already been quite high. Now that it had increased by another 20%, simple gestures were enough to crack the land beneath his feet. You are 10 years too early if you think you can compete with my strength. Sixth Ghost swung his battle saber, which was as tall as he was, slashing the blade down on Shurfong. Both his speed and power far surpassed his previous attacks. Yet, Shurfong did not try to dodge this attack. Instead, he swung the abyssal blade in his hand towards Sixth Ghost's saber. Everyone was confused. 
Even Fifth Ghost, who watched from a distance, revealed a disdainful sneer at this sight. Sixth Ghost's bowl's rage was not the average skill. Rather, it was an enhanced skill. Unlike the normal version, the enhanced version of Bowl's Rage increased a player's strength attribute by 30%. Although it was just a measly 10%, to Sixth Ghost, that 10% was the equivalent of more than 30 points in strength. Having an additional 30 points in strength was like wearing an additional piece of top-tier equipment that added strength. In terms of a Tier 1 player's levels, this increase equated 4 or 5 additional levels. After activating Bowl's Rage, Sixth Ghost was the strongest among the seven ghosts. A Tier 1 swordsman stood no chance against Sixth Ghost's strength. Sure Foam overestimated himself if he thought he could challenge Sixth Ghost's attack head-on. The only way to deal with Sixth Ghost's attack was to dodge. However, even dodging was impossible. After all, even experts like them, who had reached that realm, found it extremely difficult to dodge Sixth Ghost's saber techniques. Everyone pictured Sure Feng's figure flying backward the instant the saber and sword collided. Boom. The ground beneath both combatants' feet cracked, the impact of the collision creating a dust storm that enveloped the battle. You. Sixth Ghost's eyes widened with shock upon seeing Sure Foam block his attack with just one hand. He had already activated Bull's Rage, yet, Sure Foam still blocked his attack. The skill had increased his strength attribute by over 100 points. This increase alone was already as much as what an ordinary player possessed. Yet, yet. Sure Foam had blocked it. The onlooking crowd gaped when they saw the small crater below the fighter's feet. Are they NPCs? None of them could believe what they saw. Was this really a battle between players? If not for the player-specific diamond-shaped markers hovering above both sides' heads, they would have suspected that the two were monsters of God's domain fighting over territory. So he really was telling the truth. Only now did Zero Wings members realize why Sher Fong had warned them before the battle had begun. With such frightening strength, even if Sixth Ghost had not utilized any skills and relied solely on his techniques and attributes, he would not have needed long to annihilate their team. Just who are you? After this single exchange, Sixth Ghost hurriedly retreated from Sher Fong. He was on high alert as he watched his opponent, no longer as calm as before. Even a fool could tell that Sher Feng's basic attributes were far superior to Sixth Ghost's. From their previous exchange, Sixth Ghost realized that Sher Feng had only been testing his strength. With this realization, an indescribable anger overtook Sixth Ghost's heart. All this time, he had been the one to test others' strength, never the other way around. Now that someone had done the same to him, Sixth Ghost's pride as one of the seven ghosts had been wounded. You attacked first. Why are you the one asking this question? Sure Foam chuckled. Brat, you're courting death. As Sixth Ghost bellowed, the battle saber in his hands transformed into three saber images. These saber images sealed off Sure Feng's path of retreat as they bombarded their target. At this moment, it looked as if Sixth Ghost held not one, but three battle sabers in his hand. Soundlessly, Sixth Ghost appeared right in front of Sure Foam. Hand-to-hand -hand combat relied on two things, attributes and techniques. Currently, Sher Feng's attributes were far superior, so Sixth Ghost chose to contend with Sher Feng using techniques. Triple Cut Sher Feng's expression immediately turned grave. Immediately, he brandished the Abyssal Blade, meeting the oncoming attacks. Triple Cut was a more advanced technique compared to Second Acceleration. Second Acceleration was a technique used to fool the enemy's eyes and attack the blind spot. However, Triple Cut was an advanced attack technique that relied on the body center of gravity to focus all power into a single point. The attack was extremely fast, to the point that others would see three weapons instead of one. In reality, these were only afterimages. Dang. 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 The sound of metal clashing echoed through the air. For a time, the area between Sixth Ghost and Sure Foam had become a whirlwind of blades. The constant and deafening clangs of metal on metal made everyone's ears ring. However, when they looked at the battlefield, they failed to see any collision between weapons. Such a powerful triple cut. Although Sher Fong had not received any damage, he struggled to defend against Sixth Ghost's attacks with the Abyssal Blade. Even though he was significantly faster than Sixth Ghost, he could do nothing but defend himself. This was the first time Sher Fong was at a disadvantage against a Berserker in a contest of speed. Sher Fong had to admit that an advanced attack technique could increase a player's combat power significantly. Fortunately, he was quite a bit faster than Sixth Ghost. He had also already entered the refinement realm. He could perceive both attacks and dodging maneuvers meticulously. Otherwise, he would have already died under Sixth Ghost's triple cut. However, although Sher Fong struggled to cope with the attacks, Sixth Ghost was not having an easy time, either. Even after using Bull's Rage, every time he crossed blades with Sher Fong, he could feel his hands tremble from the resulting impact. His HP had even begun to fall slowly with each consecutive impact. Although it was only a very tiny amount, after a long period, his HP would eventually vanish. Old Six, I'll help you. Suddenly, Fifth Ghost figure appeared behind Sher Fong. Immediately, he used triple cut with his two swords, aiming for Sher Feng's back. 
Chapter 480, Stepping into the Second Phase Fifth Ghost was a Tier 1 Swordsman. Although he did not possess Sixth Ghost's frightening strength, in terms of speed, he was significantly superior to the Berserker. In particular, Fifth Ghost's control over his center of gravity when using the advanced attack technique triple cut surpassed Sixth Ghost's. In addition, Fifth Ghost had used Wind Blade, increasing his speed significantly. At this moment, one could even vaguely see a fourth afterimage of his sword. Presently, Sherfong had already focused all his power into defending against Sixth Ghost's attack. He simply had no time to consider Fifth Ghost. When Fifth Ghost saw his sword piercing Sherfang's chest, a sinister smile appeared on his face. Brat, although your strength is quite good, you are still ten years too early if you think you can fight against a seven ghosts. Brother Five, be careful. Sixth Ghost suddenly shouted in panic when he saw Fifth Ghost's delighted appearance. Huh. Fifth Ghost immediately sensed that something was wrong because his instincts were telling him right here and now that he had already arrived at Death's door. He then realized the sensation he felt with his hand, when his sword stabbed into Sherfone, was as if he had just pierced through air. Suddenly, he felt goosebumps rising all over his body. He immediately activated his life-saving skill, defensive blade, and abruptly leaped forward. However, he was still a step too slow. Hua. 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 At the same time as he activated defensive blade, Fifth Ghost felt chilling sword auras striking at his back. These piercing sword auras were the attacks your phone had launched at Fifth Ghost upon arriving behind the ladder using silent steps. If Fifth Ghost had not activated defensive blade at the first sign of danger, allowing him to negate several instances of damage, he would have become a corpse by now. Just who are these people? Sure Fong knitted his brows slightly. Sure Fong found it truly hard to believe that such experts would actually appear in Underworld. He had also never heard of such experts in his previous life. After using silent steps, he had swung the abyssal blade immediately. At such a short distance, as well as with the element of surprise, experts of the same level definitely would not be able to react in time. Yet, Fifth Ghost actually managed to activate defensive blade and leap forward before the abyssal blade landed on his body. Furthermore, from the attack Fifth Ghost had sent out before, Sherfong could clearly perceive just how powerful Fifth Ghost was. When Sixth Ghost used Triple Cut, he was able to apply the technique only to a normal attack, he could not use the technique with a skill. On the other hand, Fifth Ghost was able to integrate Triple Cut together with a skill. In fast-paced close combat like this, other than some special skills like silent steps and instantaneous movement, the difficulty of using attack skills in battle was extremely high. Such attack skills simply had too long a cast time and required one to go through fixed motions before the skill could be activated. The speed of using an attack skill was simply incomparable to the speed of a normal attack. Moreover, even if one was highly proficient with a skill and could activate it very quickly, excessive speed could easily result in distortions in the motions and, consequently, a drop in completion rate, rendering the skill practically useless. Hence, the fact that Fifth Ghost was able to integrate an attack skill into the battle was something extremely difficult to achieve. Performing such a feat was no longer something feasible for ordinary men. Even Sherfeng's current self would not be able to do so. Moreover, Sherfeng had clearly been the one to attack first, yet he was still a step behind Fifth Ghost. This situation reminded Sherfeng of Soaring Snake's godlike reaction speed. Fifth Ghost might be similar to Soaring Snake, both of them possessing a reaction speed of less than 0.1 second. Sherfong estimated Fifth Ghost's reaction speed at around 0.07 second. However, it was obvious that Fifth Ghost was more proficient at utilizing his reaction speed to his advantage. Originally, Sherfong had thought of following up his victory with a hot pursuit. However, upon noticing Sixth Ghost charging at him, he had no choice but to shift his focus. Brat, not bad. Not only are your attributes so overpowered, you actually possess that sort of skill as well. You very nearly did me in just now. However, you will no longer get another chance like that. After regaining his composure, Fifth Ghost turned around to look at Sherfong, a hint of greed flashing across his eyes. He then took out a bottle of Haunted and drank it. Every piece of equipment they had on them was top tier. Yet, Sherfong had still managed to overwhelm them with his attributes. This showed that Sherfong's equipment was a cut above theirs. If they could kill Sherfong and obtain his equipment, it would definitely allow their combat power to rise to the next level. In a two-on-one -on -one situation, Sherfong no longer held back as he used Purgatory Power, increasing his attack speed by 100%. He then used Void Steps, vanishing from everyone's eyes. He disappeared. Sixth Ghost was stunned. Before he could figure out what was going on, he suddenly discovered that Sherfong had already appeared directly beside him, the Abyssal Blade mere centimeters from his neck. Sixth Ghost hastily bent his body away with all his might. However, he was still too late as a fountain of blood sprayed out from his neck, a critical damage of over minus 3000 points appearing above his head. From this attack alone, Sixth Ghost had lost more than half of his HP. Immediately after, Sherfong followed up with another strike. One more hit was all he needed to finish off Sixth Ghost. However, Fifth Ghost's sword was already curving towards Sherfong. Moreover, Sixth Ghost was now aware of the danger, his saber moving to greet Sherfong's sword. In this situation, Sherfong had no choice but to break off his attack. 
He then used void steps once more and disappeared from everyone's sight. So you're Black Flame. However, if you think you can rely on this footwork to defeat us, think again. Before coming to the Watch Cemetery, Fifth Ghost had already received information on Black Flame from Yolan. He had also watched the battle between Black Flame and Summer Sunshine, so Sher Feng's void steps was still fresh in his mind. Now that he was seeing the footwork in action, he determined Sher Feng's identity right away. Then, Fifth Ghost abruptly changed his sword's trajectory, swinging the weapon at the empty air beside him. Fifth Ghost's action confused the spectators, they could not understand what the swordsman was trying to achieve with this action. In the next instant, however, everyone immediately received an answer to their questions when Sher Feng suddenly appeared in the path of Fifth Ghost's sword. At this moment, Sher Feng was using the Abyssal Blade to defend against Fifth Ghost's attack. He's adapted to Void Steps already. Sher Feng was slightly surprised. Sher Feng knew full well that Void Steps was not an invincible technique. Although the footwork could force others to ignore his own presence, making it seem as if he had vanished from thin air, someone who had undergone special training could still catch him once they let their eyes adapt to the technique. There was nothing strange in people like Fifth Ghost and Sixth Ghost being able to perform such a feat however, the speed with which Fifth Ghost managed to adapt to the technique still exceeded Sher Feng's expectations. During Sher Feng's moment of surprise, Sixth Ghost had also slashed his saber at Sher Feng's back, forming a pincer attack around Sher Feng. Left with no other choice, Sher Feng activated Windwalk as well as Void Steps to retreat. Although the two ghosts had adapted themselves to Void Steps, there was still a brief moment of delay before their eyes could locate Sher Feng. Hence, Sher Feng still persisted in using Void Steps to retreat. For a time, both sides entered a stalemate. The exchange between saber and swords created a storm that engulfed the audience. The surrounding spectators were shocked by the scene, and not even their eyes could keep up with the three combatants' actions. Looking at the high-speed battle between the three, even breathing seemed superfluous. Despite Sher Feng's attack speed receiving a huge boost and the significant effect of void steps, Sher Feng was still forced into passivity. The two ghosts' attacks were extremely tricky to deal with. In particular, fifth ghost's attacks would always strike from various different blind spots and never once would the swordsman face Sher Feng in a direct confrontation. If not for the fact that Sher Feng had already entered the refinement realm, his grasp over attacks and movements becoming extremely precise, he would have long since lost his life to the two ghosts. Although Sher Feng was currently locked in a passive state, he was enjoying every moment of this high-speed battle. Ever since the increase in his brain activity, he had not had a chance to familiarize himself with the sudden boost to his perception as well as the sudden enhancement in his control over his own body. This battle was the perfect opportunity to get used to his new improvements. Chances to fight against experts were extremely rare, let alone against experts who were capable of forcing him into such dire straits, where even the slightest mistake could cost him his life. Moreover, Sher Feng could not help but admit that the coordination between Fifth Ghost and Sixth Ghost was indeed very amazing. Regardless of how he tried to attack or dodge, he could never fully defend against the attacks of the two ghosts. As a result, he had lost close to half his HP already. However, under the steady onslaught, the accuracy of Sher Feng's actions was also gradually increasing, the damage the ghosts inflicted was also gradually decreasing. Their attacks really are precise. At this moment, even Sher Feng could feel himself growing mentally tired. Die. Fifth Ghost took advantage of the moment Sher Feng used void steps and vanished to slash at the ladder's back, giving Sher Feng no chance to dodge or block at all. At the moment of life and death, a slight change came over Sher Feng. Suddenly, Sher Feng's movement stopped. In the next moment, Fifth Ghost sword actually brushed past Sher Feng's body. However, Fifth Ghost did not stop his attacks as he continued brandishing his two swords. Sixth Ghost kept hacking at Sher Feng with his saber as well, not giving him any chance to dodge or block. Yet, no matter how hard they tried to hit Sher Feng, he always managed to avoid their attacks ahead of time, it was as if Sher Feng had long since known the trajectory of their attacks. So this is the second stage of the refinement realm, the flowing water realm. It's no wonder I wasn't a match for those people in the past. Sher Feng could not help but smile while dodging the two ghosts' attacks. Chapter 481, Flowing Water Acceleration Fifth Ghost and Sixth Ghost immediately detected the sudden change in Sher Feng, and the two ghosts promptly distanced themselves from their target. As experts of God's domain, their perception of danger was far superior to ordinary players. On the other hand, the dazed players watching Sher Feng's battle were confused by the two ghosts' actions. There were no visible changes to Sher Feng's outer appearance, and neither were there any changes to his attributes. So, why did Fifth Ghost and Sixth Ghost suddenly choose to back away from him? Was it just my imagination? Fifth Ghost somewhat doubted his own senses. He could not understand why Sher Feng would suddenly undergo such a drastic change. Originally, the pressure Fifth Ghost felt from Sher Feng was that of a tiger. However, in the blink of an eye, Sher Feng had transformed into a violent dragon. Moreover, it was a violent dragon with extremely sharp fangs and claws. Let alone them, even ordinary people would know to distance themselves from Sher Feng upon sensing such a radical difference. Since you guys aren't going to take action, then don't mind if I do, Sher Feng said as he revealed a meaningful smile. He then raised his sword and slowly approached his two opponents. 
The refinement realm could be said to be what differentiated a true top-tier expert from an ordinary expert. As for players who set foot into the refinement realm, not one of them was not an expert who could single-handedly turn the tides of a battle. Once players entered the refinement realm, they would be able to exert the minimum amount of strength to achieve the maximum effect. This was especially notable when players were attacking or dodging. Despite the opponent's speed greatly surpassing their own, players in the refinement realm could easily dodge their opponent's attack using the simplest of movements. Not only could they dodge with greater efficiency, but they could also take the opportunity to better detect their enemy's weaknesses, to give their enemy a fatal blow. Due to this reason, the refinement realm became the dividing line for true experts. Meanwhile, there was an even higher realm above refinement, and that was the flowing water realm. Through detailed observation of the opponent, players could place themselves in their opponent's position in order to understand their opponent's every action. They could then anticipate their opponent's next action, or even multiple subsequent actions, and make the most appropriate response. In other words, before their opponent had even taken action, players in the flowing water realm could have already known what their opponents were going to do next and carried out appropriate countermeasures. Compared to responding only after the opponent had begun taking action, players would have a lot more time to react and perform swifter and more precise actions. Hence, for sure Foam, who had already seen through the coordinated attacks of 5th Ghost and 6th Ghost, it was very easy for him to dodge and react to his two opponents' attacks. When Sher Foam slowly approached 5th Ghost and 6th Ghost, the two ghosts unconsciously began backing away as well. Looking at the scene where one side was advancing while the other was retreating, the surrounding spectators were stupefied. In particular, the underworld guard's jaws nearly fell to the ground upon witnessing the scene. The seven ghosts were underworld's most formidable weapons. Yet, the two ghosts before them were actually displaying cowardice right now. How could this be any more inconceivable? Meanwhile, Sher Foam also wore a helpless expression on his face as he took in this situation. He promptly fished a bottle of Haunted from his bag and drank it. He then used Wind Blade on Fifth Ghost, his body transforming into an afterimage. In the blink of an eye, Sher Foam appeared in front of Fifth Ghost and swung the Abyssal Blade at the other swordsman. Sher Feng's slash was unimaginably fast. The spectating crowd only saw a flash of black light, they could not make out Sher Feng's sword at all. So fast. Fifth Ghost was greatly alarmed. It was definitely impossible for him to dodge Sher Feng's attack. However, with his godlike reaction speed, Fifth Ghost still managed to react before Sher Feng's sword landed on his body, instinctively using triple cut to block this fleeting sword. Dang. Sparks scattered into the surroundings. At the moment of imminent peril, Fifth Ghost succeeded in blocking Sher Feng's attack with the sword in his hand. As a result of the impact, however, Fifth Ghost was forced to retreat numerous steps before he could stabilize his body. His entire hand also numbed from the impact. How could this be? This is triple cut. Fifth Ghost and Sixth Ghost both looked at Sher Feng with horror-filled expressions, as they were extremely familiar with Sher Feng's previous attack. Triple Cut was an advanced technique that they had trained in bitterly in order to grasp. At this moment, however, Sher Feng had actually effortlessly used the technique against them. How could they not be shocked? So there's such an effect as well. Sher Feng looked at the Abyssal Blade in his hand, similarly surprised. Just now, he had taken advantage of the pressure Fifth Ghost and Sixth Ghost had placed on him to enter the Flowing Water Realm. However, he had not expected that, after he entered the flowing water realm, his attack would also receive such a boost. Originally, he had relied on eliminating excess actions in order to increase the speed of his attacks. At this moment, however, maybe because his control over his body had received a huge improvement, the instant he attacked, he was able to apply all his physical power into that single slash. As a result, not only were there no excess movements in his attack, but his attack had also received a huge acceleration, which allowed his sword to reach its maximum speed in the shortest amount of time possible. Taking Fifth Ghost as example, if the initial acceleration of Fifth Ghost's sword was counted as 100 and his sword's maximum speed is 20, then from the moment he started swinging his sword, he would need 0.2 second for his sword reach its maximum speed. As for Sher Foam, his current initial acceleration would be 200. If his maximum speed was similarly 20, then he required only 0.1 second to reach his maximum speed. Hence, his sword could reach his target much faster than Fifth Ghost's. However, this was assuming both sides possessed the same maximum speed. In reality, as Sher Feng's attributes were much higher, his maximum speed was a lot higher than 5th Ghost's and 6th Ghost's. Thinking up to this point, Sher Feng could not help but grow excited. Hoping to find the feeling from before, Sher Feng stepped forward and launched a fierce assault on 5th Ghost once more. Streaks of black light suddenly appeared before promptly disappearing. 5th Ghost was forced to go all out to defend against the attacks. However, no matter how hard he tried to defend himself, the attacks were simply too overwhelming, forcing him into a constant retreat. Seeing this situation, Sixth Ghost hurriedly charged forward to aid his companion. Immediately, he used Triple Cut, slashing his saber at Sher Feng's back. Originally, with Sher Feng's speed, it had simply been impossible for him to block the attack. However, Sixth Ghost suddenly saw a streak of black light emerge behind Sher Feng, the black light deflecting his attack completely. Just what is going on here? Sixth Ghost looked at Sher Feng's calm expression in abject horror. At the beginning of the fight, Sher Feng had been desperately trying to defend against his saber. Now, however, Sher Feng could effortlessly block his attacks without even turning his head around. 
During the brief moment Sixth Ghost was in a daze, a streak of black light penetrated Fifth Ghost's defenses, piercing right through the swordsman's heart. A critical damage of over minus 3,000 points promptly appeared above his head as the massive impact sent his body flying backwards. Because of the impact, Fifth Ghost's defense crumbled, allowing several more streaks of black light to land on his body. In the blink of an eye, Fifth Ghost's HP reached zero. At Fifth Ghost's death, the equipment on his body and the items in his bag dropped and scattered across the ground around him. This scene stupefied everyone present. How was the thing in Shurfang's hand a sword? That was practically a laser gun. With just a few shots, Fifth Ghost died without even being able to resist. Only now did Sixth Ghost finally react. Although he wished to help, he was already too late. Right then, Shurfang used void steps and disappeared once more. Don't think that you can easily do me in. Sixth Ghost bellowed as he used Whirlwind Slash, sweeping his battle saber around himself. In the next moment, however, a streak of black light shot at Sixth Ghost's weapon. Boom. Sixth Ghost's battle saber was abruptly stopped cold. Immediately after, another streak of black light pierced Sixth Ghost's body, instantly ending the Berserker's life. Once more, equipment and items were scattered across the ground. The members of the Underworld Guard shivered and paled at the sight of Fifth Ghost's and Sixth Ghost's bodies lying on the ground. They promptly turned around and fled. As Underworld Guards, they knew full well just how powerful the two ghosts were. Working together, the two of them could easily annihilate four or five Underworld Guard parties. Meanwhile, the fact that Shifeng succeeded in defeating the two ghosts all by himself showed that he was also fully capable of annihilating their two parties. If they did not escape, only death awaited them. Want to escape? Too late. Shifeng immediately changed the aura of space to the aura of wind, increasing his movement speed greatly. He caught up with the fleeing Underworld Guards in no time, and just like a whirlwind sweeping away the clouds, he practically killed each Underworld Guard with just one hit. In the blink of an eye, the ten remaining Underworld Guards were turned into a pile of corpses, their equipment and the items inside their bags scattering all over the ground around their corpses. Chapter 482 The Strength of a Single Man This haunted really is frightening. It is actually able to force a red name to drop every single piece of equipment they are wearing. Underworld should be shedding tears right about now. Sure Feng's heart was filled with joy when he looked at the ground littered with items. Killing the elite members of a guild would not cause any significant damages to said guild as these elite members only had advanced equipment. Such equipment could be easily replaced. The equipment of experts, on the other hand, was different. Every single expert was an accumulation of a guild's top-tier equipment. Meanwhile, behind every piece of top-tier equipment was the sacrifice of a large number of players. Being able to steal a piece of top-tier equipment from a guild was the equivalent of slicing a piece of flesh off said guild. The Underworld Guard parties had a total of 12 members. Of them, 10 were mostly geared in level 25 secret silver equipment mixed with a few pieces of level 20 fine gold and even dark gold equipment. As for 5th ghost and 6th ghost, their equipment was only slightly inferior to that of core members of Zero Wing. The majority of their equipment consisted of level 25 fine gold equipment, and even the most inferior pieces were level 20 dark gold equipment. Now, however, these 12 players were left with not a single piece of equipment on their bodies, thanks to Shurfong. In addition, the 12 had also dropped plenty of items from their bags. Among them were plenty of haunted potions, as well as the good quality equipment such as level 20 secret silver and fine gold equipment they had harvested from other players. Making a rough estimate, Shurfong had earned more than 100 gold just from killing these 12 players. Split this advanced equipment among yourselves. Don't forget to leave some for your dead companions. Shurfong only collected the top tier equipment and haunted potions for himself, leaving the remainder for the team. He then disappeared into the dense forest in search of other underworld guard parties. So cool. Is that person really our guild leader? A female summoner asked as she watched Shurfang's departing figure, her gaze carrying a seductive charm. It should be. Before, when that person named him Black Flame, he did not deny it. Moreover, he has even willingly left behind so much good equipment for us. Other than our guild leader, I doubt there would be anybody who would do such a thing. The ranger team leader nodded in reply, his heart filled with an indescribable sense of excitement. It really is great to be a member of Zero Wing, the others could not help but exclaim. Despite the ongoing war between Zero Wing and Overwhelming Smile, as the leader of a guild, Shurfong had actually taken the initiative to enter such a dangerous location all by himself. He had even rushed to their rescue at the first sign of trouble. With such a guild leader, even if they fell back to level zero as a result of battling Overwhelming Smile, they would still do so willingly. Although guild leader has left all this good equipment to us, I suggest that after we set aside several pieces for those who died, we should place the remainder in the guild's warehouse. Now that we are waging a war against Overwhelming Smile, the guild's expenditure is very large. We can't take advantage of the guild at such a crucial period, the ranger said. The others promptly nodded in agreement. Currently, Shurfong was searching for treasure chests in the Watch Cemetery while waiting for Space Movement's cooldown to end and news to appear in the guild channel. Space Movement had a five-minute cooldown. As he did not wish to waste time during this period, he had started hunting for treasure. Shurfong could not be more familiar with the Watch Cemetery. 
He had visited this place many times in search of treasure in his previous life. Moreover, in the past, many treasure chest locations had been published on the official forums. Back then, as treasure chests that had already been found would not reappear at the same location, nobody actually cared about keeping these locations a secret. Instead, they actively publicized and showed off their discoveries. As a result, their actions would now benefit Sherfoam. There were plenty of secrets in God's domain. In reality, Sherfoam had just taken a casual glance at these treasure chest locations back then, he had not paid any particular attention to them. Even if his memory was very good, he could only vaguely remember these locations now. After all, nobody knew that they would reincarnate into their past lives. However, due to the improvement of Sherfang's brain activity, even his memory had received a huge boost. The things he could only vaguely remember before were now as clear as the sun at noon to him. Hence, his search for treasure chests became a very easy task. It was as if he was looking at a treasure map while treasure hunting. After just a brief search, Sherfong had already discovered a bronze treasure chest, obtaining more than three silver coins and a level 25 mysterious iron weapon from it. The number of treasure chests in this area is too little while the number of players is too high. Many of the treasure chests should have already been discovered by someone else. It seems that I can only try my luck somewhere else, Sherfong muttered as he collected the items inside the bronze treasure chest. Currently, level 25 mysterious iron weapons were still in high demand. He then took a look at the system map. As I recall, there should be plenty of high-quality treasure chests located in the inner regions of the Watch Cemetery. Following which, Sherfong dashed directly towards the inner region of the Watch Cemetery. For a couple of hours, Sherfong searched for treasure while killing any underworld guard parties that dared show themselves. During this period, Sherfong had opened more than 30 treasure chests. Among them, 14 were bronze treasure chests, 16 were mysterious iron treasure chests, and 6 were secret silver treasure chests. He had also killed 11 underworld guard parties. Overall, he had gained a frightening harvest. Although these underworld guard parties did not have experts like 5th Ghost and 6th Ghost, they still contributed plenty of top-tier equipment to Sherfang's harvest. After all, these underworld guards normally killed many players, so they had accumulated quite a lot of good stuff, both on their bodies and in their bags. Now, however, all these items belonged to Sherfang. In other words, these underworld guards had just carried out free labor for Sherfang. Just the number of top-tier equipment Sherfang obtained exceeded 100 pieces, not to mention advanced equipment. Sherfang's harvest had instantly made up for much of the losses Zero Wing suffered before. Inside the guild residence of overwhelming smile. Fifth ghost and sixth ghost died. How is this possible? Feng Xuanyang's eyes widened in shock upon reading the report he just received. He could not at all accept this matter as real. Fifth ghost and sixth ghost were Underworld's most formidable weapons. Now, not only had both of them lost all their equipment, but they could not even log back into the game right now. Just how was he supposed to report this incident to the higher-ups? This black flame is simply too vicious. Seated to the side, Yulan, who was garbed in a set of alluring purple robes that placed her exquisite figure on full display, knitted her brows tightly, a gloomy expression currently on her face. Contrary to expectations, Yulan was not particularly concerned about this piece of news. Compared to fifth ghosts and sixth ghost deaths, she was more concerned about the number of deaths in the underworld guard parties. Currently, statistics showed that more than 80 underworld guards had already died. As of this time, underworld had sent over 200 underworld guards to overwhelming smile, and close to half had died. Practically all the underworld guard parties posted at the Watch Cemetery were dead by now. This loss was already well over the limit they could endure. Even if they emptied Overwhelming Smile's entire guild warehouse, they would not be able to make up for the loss in top tier and advanced equipment. Aside from that, there was also the loss of levels, as well as the fact that all those killed by Sherfone were unable to log back into God's domain for a long period of time. Just how did he manage such a feat? Yulan muttered in confusion. The underworld guard parties were clearly scattered far apart from each other, making it extremely difficult to catch them all. Yet, Sherfong had only used a few short hours to wipe out nearly every underworld guard party within the Watch Cemetery. While Feng Xianyang and Yulan were feeling depressed, information regarding Sherfang's feet spread like wildfire throughout White River City. Players who received this piece of news were thoroughly amazed. One hit per person. Sherfong had actually managed to suppress a powerful guild all by himself, slaughtering overwhelming smile to the point where it had no choice but to recall all its members from the treasured land known as the Watch Cemetery. This was simply too frightening. For a time, Zero Wing was once more the topic of conversation in the entire White River City. Chapter 483, Everlasting War Although the fight in Watch Cemetery had not been on a large scale, it had dealt a massive blow to overwhelming smile. This was not a matter of winning or losing. Instead, it was because Overwhelming Smile had conceded. This one point proved that Overwhelming Smile was inferior to Zero Wing. In addition, Sherfang's stunning performance had calmed the rush to join Overwhelming Smile. Previously, they all had an optimistic view on Overwhelming Smile, believing that the guild was about to overtake the position of White River City's overlord. Now, however, the situation had taken a 180-degree turn. 
Needing only one hit per person, Sure Foam had wiped out all of Overwhelming Smile's experts within the Watch Cemetery. Without that hindrance, Zero Wings Tier 1 experts were able to display their strength as they swiftly wiped out the normal members from Overwhelming Smile, forcing the guild to pull back from the treasured land known as the Watch Cemetery. The Watch Cemetery was White River City's most resource-rich level 20 to 30 map. Losing it would undoubtedly be detrimental to Overwhelming Smile's future development. Although Overwhelming Smile was wealthy, that wealth would be meaningless if they could not convert it into leveling resources. The sky slowly darkened as the setting sun gradually disappeared past the horizon. After a day's struggle, many players had begun to return to the city to rest and celebrate their day's harvest. Bars, restaurants, clubs, and many such establishments were already crowded. At this moment, in the rooftop dining room of a high-class restaurant, two female players feasted on delicacies as they enjoyed the view of White River City. Many male players present snuck glances at these two women. Of the two female players, one was petite and lovely, while still sporting stunning curves. The other was even more beautiful. Her face was so pure that it put flowers to shame and outshone the moon. Her snow-white skin looked so delicate that it seemed as if it might break from the gentlest touch. Currently, although she wore a long, aqua-blue mage robe, trimmed in gold, the clothing failed to conceal her graceful body. These two were none other than Blue Bamboo and Thoughtful Rain, the pair that had originally planned to join Overwhelming Smile. Blue, what did I tell you? Look how quickly Zero Wing suppressed Overwhelming Smile, Thoughtful Rain said as she glanced at Blue Bamboo, the gentle smile in her ink-black eyes intensifying. Previously, due to her refusal to join Overwhelming Smile, Blue Bamboo had pestered her ceaselessly, giving her a huge headache. Only now that Zero Wing had forced Overwhelming Smile to submit did the girl finally relent. Overwhelming Smile is truly disappointing. To think that I thought so highly of it, it actually dared to let me down. I don't want to join Overwhelming Smile anymore, either. Blue Bamboo pouted, disappointed. I already told you that Zero Wing is far superior to Overwhelming Smile. After all, it was the first guild to own a guild residence in White River City. Not only that, it claimed the best residence available in White River City. It also has plenty of experts. Currently, the various guilds in White River City barely have any Tier 1 experts in their guilds. Yet, I hear that Zero Wing already has over 50. Zero Wing has long since taken the lead. Furthermore, its guild leader, Black Flame, is a titled expert. Thoughtful Rain's thin lips shifted slightly as she explained, smiling tenderly. Since that's the case, why don't we join Zero Wing? Blue Bamboo could not help but have expectations. Zero Wing's exam is very strict. I might be able to pass it, but I'm afraid that you... Thoughtful Rain shook her head after evaluating Blue Bamboo. Humph. Who says my techniques are bad? I've only recently begun playing virtual reality games. After some time, I'll be more amazing than even Black Flame. Besides, Blue Bamboo's ink black eyes suddenly shone as she revealed a meaningful smile, saying, Rain, I know that you've encountered one of the higher-ups of Zero Wing before. His name was Yifong, I think. He gave you a permanent pass to the library. All of my classmates turned green with envy when I told them about that item. Since he gave you such a precious pass, he should be able to admit us into the guild without any issues with his position. I am only acquaintances with him. Blue, stop overthinking things, Thoughtful Rain hurriedly explained. Besides, if he invites you into Zero Wing, and you perform badly, what then? Others will question his ability to manage the guild. Are you my best friend or his? You're actually defending him, yet, you claim that there is nothing going on between you two. I don't care. In any case, I want to join Zero Wing. I have always wanted a piece of level 25 fine gold equipment. With your felonious body, you just have to say the word, and he'll let me into the guild and smother us with fine gold equipment. Blue Bamboo stated as she swept a glance at Thoughtful Rain's graceful body, her lips hooked up into a deep, suggestive smile. Thoughtful Rain was suddenly speechless. At this moment, a party of six suddenly appeared before the female duo. The leader of this party was a middle-aged man with a burly body, examining the two with world-weary eyes. None of the party could be underestimated as the other five also gave off an air of danger. The party's stance alone left the surrounding witnesses breathless. Their levels were even more astonishing. Of these six, the lowest leveled player was level 26, while the leading middle-aged man was a level 27 guardian knight. Excuse me, ladies, I couldn't help but overhear that the both of you are familiar with the higher-ups of Zero Wing. I wonder if you can introduce us to them. If you do, this level 25 morning dew staff will be yours, the leading middle-aged man said, smiling warmly. He then retrieved a two-handed staff made of pure white jade from his bag, placing the weapon on the table. Red gemstones were inlaid in the staff, and with a glance, it was obvious that the staff was no ordinary weapon. Wah. This is a secret silver staff. Its attributes are awesome. Blue Bamboo was immediately mesmerized by the Morning Dew staff. She then turned to Thoughtful Rain, saying, Rain, we're heading over to Zero Wing anyway, so why don't we take them with us? I don't know. Why do you want to meet Zero Wing's higher-ups? Thoughtful Rain only swept a glance over the Morning Dew staff before shifting her gaze back to the middle-aged man. She was no fool. 
Since they had offered a level 25 secret silver weapon as a token of appreciation, then they were definitely plotting something. She would not be a proper friend if she abruptly contacted Yi Feng without knowing their intentions. Miss, please don't misunderstand. My name is Everlasting War. We seek the higher-ups of Zero Wing purely with the intention of conducting trade. This trade will only benefit, not harm, Zero Wing, so you can rest assured. If we really wanted to cause trouble for Zero Wing, we would have already done so. We wouldn't have to go through this much trouble, the middle-aged man explained. All right, then. I'll contact him for you, but it will be up to him whether or not he meets with you. Thoughtful Rain nodded in agreement, feeling that Everlasting War's words sounded reasonable. Following which, Thoughtful Rain called up her friend's list and contacted Yifeng. Chapter 484, King Currently, Shifeng carefully scoured one of the dark, quiet tombs in Watch Cemetery's core region. While he explored, Shifeng had received news from Aqua Rose about overwhelming smile withdrawing from the competition over the Watch Cemetery and shifting its focus to several other level 20 maps with fewer resources. The members of Overwhelming Smile had also begun to keep a low profile. With the threat of Overwhelming Smile gone, Shifeng decided to transfer Steep into Watch Cemetery's core. The tomb he currently explored was unique. It was a resting place for royalty. It was also known as a King's Tomb. Locating this particular tomb had not been easy. As it had been built to prevent grave robbers from plundering the valuables buried with the dead, this place had been carefully hidden, it had been built inside a cave under a steep cliff. After its construction, the original path used to travel to this place had been destroyed. After several hundred years, vines had covered the cliff, making it even more difficult to notice the cave. In the past, a skilled assassin had accidentally discovered this location. Afterward, that assassin had led a powerful team to the king's tomb and successfully plundered the treasure inside. After claiming the treasure, he sold the item for over 1,000 gold, earning everyone's envy even so, in the god's domain of that time, the assassin had still taken a loss when he sold the item. Why had it been a loss? Although the item was utterly worthless to an independent player, to guilds, it was priceless. Various large guilds would willingly spend 2,000 or 3,000 gold, much less 1,000. The treasure the assassin had found was a guild residence promotion order. All guild residences started out as a one-star residence when established. If a guild wished to upgrade it to a two-star residence, they needed to meet two requirements. First, a guild needed a sufficient amount of guild popularity. The second thing they needed was a two-star guild residence promotion order. If a guild residence reached two-star status, the guild could establish certain facilities that were unavailable to a one-star residence. More importantly, a guild residence's private rooms would change. Guilds could only establish one-star private rooms in a one-star residence, whereas two-star private rooms could be established in a two-star residence. By resting for 24 hours in a one-star private room, players could store up to 20% of the double EXP buff. In a two-star private room, however, players could store up to 25% after 24 hours. In addition, a guild could establish a smithy inside a two-star residence, allowing members to have their weapons and equipment repaired. Moreover, the repair fees as the guild's smithy were 10% cheaper than elsewhere. Repair fees were always expensive. Although there was only a 10% difference, players could still save a significant amount of money. Currently, Zero Wing's popularity had exceeded 5,000 points, it had met that requirement for the upgrade. Hence, now was the perfect time for Shurfone to collect the promotion order. Danger awaited any player inside the King's Tomb as traps had been built throughout the crypt. Unfortunately, none of these traps proved to be useful against Shurfone. He destroyed every trap he encountered with a single slash. This should be it, Shurfone muttered as he entered a majestic stone room, focusing on the tightly sealed white jade sarcophagus lined with gold that occupied the center of the room. Wetting his lips, he advanced towards the sarcophagus. When Shurfone was only 20 yards away, the sarcophagus suddenly opened. Black smoke slithered out of the sarcophagus. Soon, the black smoke coalesced into a youth in golden armor. The youth had a white cape draped over his shoulders and a golden crown adorning his head. More importantly, the youth carried the air of a king, anyone who basked in his aura would tremble and submit body and soul. However, this youth's body was currently in a half-transparent, ethereal state. He was not a physical entity, but a ghost. To be precise, this youth was the ghost of a king. As expected of the king of a generation. Even in death, he still possesses such a powerful aura. If he were still alive, I'd have no hope of escaping with my life, Shurfone muttered after observing this ghost king with omniscient eyes. King of Ghosts, Monroe Bell, High Lord. Level 30. HP 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Being capable of receiving the title of king proved that Monroe Bell had been a tier 3 class before he died. The pair of swords in Monroe's hands indicated that he had been a tier 3 sword king, the equivalent of a great lord, during his lifetime. However, after Monroe Bell died, he had weakened significantly. Now, he was only as strong as a high lord. Even so, he would not be an easy challenge for sure foam. Immediately, Shurfong activated Heavenly Dragon's power, increasing his strength by 100%, HP by 300%, and defense by 300%.
Suddenly, Shifeng's HP rose past 27,000. However, his HP could not compete with the King of Ghosts, which possessed 4 million HP. Shifeng then used the activatable skill of the Seven Luminaries Rings Aura of Water, Life Bloom, recovering 20% of his HP every second for 40 seconds. During this period, it would be the equivalent of having a powerful healer healing him indefinitely. Grave Robber received the Sword of Justice's retribution. Monroe Bell's pitch black eyes locked onto Shifeng. Taking a step forward, the King of Ghosts dashed towards Shifeng as he sent a flurry of sword thrusts at the intruder with his king's sword. The King of Ghosts' sword carried with it a majestic aura. The aura alone was enough to scare an ordinary player, much less the flurry of thrusts. Monroe Bell's attack was like a tsunami, he gave Shifeng no opportunity to evade the strikes. Shifeng immediately activated Purgatory Power, allowing his attack speed to soar. He then used Wind Blade and charged forward. Facing the countless oncoming sword thrusts, Shifeng chose to face brutality with grace, and rather than confronting the attack head-on, he deflected the strikes to the side. However, despite the extreme speed of his swords and the fact that he was already in the flowing water realm, he could not keep up with the dozens of sword thrusts. As a result, he received multiple hits. Shifeng was not courageous enough to face Monroe Bell directly. A high lord far surpassed an ordinary lord. Monroe Bell suppressed Shifeng completely in terms of strength and speed. Even if Shifeng activated twofold berserk, the result would be the same. Furthermore, Monroe Bell was not an ordinary High Lord. The King of Ghosts had been a bona fide Sword King before he died. In terms of combat technique utilization, he was even stronger than ordinary experts. Hence, challenging the High Lord in a direct confrontation would only be detrimental to Shifeng. If Shifeng had not reached the Flowing Water Realm, gaining insight into an opponent's actions, he would never have come here, only to die. After all, level 30 was a dividing line in God's domain. Monroe Bell's attack power was also terrifying. Shifeng had received close to minus 2,000 damage from a casual slash and more than minus 4,000 damage if the King of Ghosts struck him with a skill. If Shifeng had not activated Heavenly Dragon's power, increasing his defense significantly, Monroe Bell's normal attack could have dealt over minus 4,000 damage, whereas a skill would deal over minus 10,000. As Shifeng received damage, Life Bloom displayed its impressive effects. After factoring in the passive effects of the Aura of Water, Life Bloom regenerated more than 8,000 HP every second, the amount of healing Shifeng received surpassing the damage he received. While Shifeng and the King of Ghosts fought an intense battle against each other, a figure had stealthily appeared beside the sarcophagus and proceeded to open the treasure chest within. This treasure chest did not have a level restriction, so anybody could open it. However, opening it required 20 seconds. During this period, the person opening the treasure chest must not receive any damage. Otherwise, they would have to start the opening process all over again. Meanwhile, the person currently opening the treasure chest was none other than Shifeng's doppelganger. Although the doppelganger could not pick up any items, it could open the treasure chest. In the past, the 50 men team the assassin had led had similarly made various sacrifices to open the treasure chest before fleeing for their lives. Although Shifeng was alone, he still chose to give the king's tomb a try. After all, not only did he possess the strength to resist a high lord for a short time, but he also had his doppelganger. No one else would have a chance of completing the task by themselves. The moment the doppelganger opened the treasure chest, Shifeng instantly swapped positions with it, having his doppelganger delay Monroe Bell while he looted the contents of the treasure chest. Monroe Bell was simply too powerful. Shifeng's doppelganger barely lasted three seconds before it died. However, during those three seconds, Shifeng had emptied the treasure chest. Seeing Monroe Bell charge towards him, Shifeng hurriedly switched the aura of water to the aura of space before activating space movement and leaving the king's tomb. Chapter 485, Number 1 Guild Near one of the mass graves in Watch Cemetery's outer region, a tear in space suddenly appeared in midair. In the next moment, Shifeng emerged. I finally escaped. Even after Shifeng landed, he could still hear the King of Ghosts' angry roars. However, the tear in space had already closed. Even if Monroe Bell recovered his strength as a Tier 3 Sword King, he could not reach Shifeng now. Now that I have the promotion order, it should be about time to make a trip back to White River City. Shifeng's lips curled up slightly when he saw the glittering silver token in his bag. Originally, he had only intended to retrieve this Guild Residence promotion order after he reached level 30. However, he had not expected to set foot in the Flowing Water Realm. Even though he was only level 26, he was already capable of delaying Monroe Bell. Other than the promotion order, Shifeng had obtained three items from the King's Tomb. Of these three items, one was a fiery red two-handed staff, one was an azure two-handed greatsword, and the last was a silver stone tablet. Appraising these items with omniscient eyes, Shifeng discovered that both the two-handed staff and two-handed sword were actually level 30 dark gold weapons. However, the silver tablet surprised Shifeng far more than the two weapons. Shifeng was very familiar with the silver tablet. Secret Sword Technique The pattern engraved on this tablet is too vague and incomplete, and no information can be deciphered. However, some kind of divine power hides within this pattern. 
If one gathers all of the stone tablets, this vague and incomplete pattern can be restored. Current tablet count, one sixth. The tablet for the secret sword technique. Sherfong had accidentally obtained a part of it while he had completed the Blade Saint's legacy trial. Back then, he had suspected that the silver tablet was something extraordinary, so he had stored it in his warehouse. He never expected to obtain another piece so soon. Just what is the secret sword technique? Despite examining the tablet, Sherfong could not find any differences between the tablet he had just obtained and the one he had found in the origin sword domain. The two pieces looked identical. Sherfong even suspected that the piece he stored inside his warehouse had somehow grown legs and run to the king's tomb by itself. Forget it. Let's head back for now. Following which, Sherfong retrieved a return scroll. However, just as he was about to start channeling. D. 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 Suddenly, Sherfang's communicator rang. Thoughtful Rain, a girl he had only met once before, was contacting him. Is she looking to buy equipment? Sherfong looked at Thoughtful Rain's name, feeling slightly surprised. Previously, when he had met Thoughtful Rain at White River City's library, the latter had expressed her interest in purchasing weapons and equipment from him. Sherfong felt a sense of familiarity from Thoughtful Rain. Now that his brain activity had increased, he could recall even the smallest fragment of the past. Yet, even after his memories had refreshed, he still could not recall the girl. He only felt that she was familiar, but he did not know why. Miss Rain, since you have contacted me, are you interested in purchasing some equipment? Sherfong asked pleasantly, smiling. I'd like to, but today, I'm contacting you because I have found a big business opportunity for you, Thoughtful Rain said, smiling sweetly. A group of people just happened to overhear me when I spoke about our acquaintance. In the end, these people asked me to contact you for them. They hope to meet with you now. Do you have the time? Who are these people? Sherfong asked. He says his name is Everlasting War. He's a level 27 Guardian Knight, and his companions are all level 26. From the looks of it, they seem quite powerful, and they have excellent equipment. I'm assuming that someone with significant financial power backs them, Thoughtful Rain said. All right, then let's meet at Zero Wings Guild Residence, Sherfong nodded before disconnecting the call. He then activated the return scroll. Sherfong had heard of Everlasting War before. That person had been a famous character in God's domain, having the title of Everlasting War God. He was also an apex expert, and his fame was not the slightest bit inferior to Summer Sunshine's. In a direct confrontation, even Summer Sunshine would not be a match for Everlasting War. Twenty seconds later, Sherfong transformed into a streak of white light as he teleported back to White River City. The sky gradually darkened. A large number of players had returned to the city, and people crowded the streets. Passing through the lively streets, Sherfong soon arrived at the bank. He then stored all of the top-tier and advanced equipment he had obtained in the guild's warehouse. He also placed the level 30 Dark Gold Staff, the Roaring Blaze Staff, and the level 30 Dark Gold Greatsword, the Azure Heart, on full display in the guild's warehouse. For a time, the members of Zero Wing went into an uproar. The war between Zero Wing and Overwhelming Smile had significantly depleted the stock of equipment inside the guild's warehouse. Now, however, over 1,000 pieces of equipment had suddenly appeared. Aside from the large amount of advanced equipment, the stock of top-tier equipment had already exceeded 100 pieces. Beyond that, there were actually level 30 dark gold weapons inside the guild's warehouse. Currently, the players of various large guilds still struggled to obtain level 25 equipment. Bronze equipment was a challenge to obtain, much less mysterious iron. On the other hand, their guild had level 30 weapons, they were dark gold weapons to boot. They were definitely the best weapons in all of God's domain right now. However, shortly after everyone in the guild started spreading the news, Sherfong had arrived at the Adventurers Association. He handed over the guild residence promotion order, officially promoting Zero Wings residence to a two-star residence. Star Moon Kingdom System Announcement Congratulations to Zero Wing for becoming the first guild in Star Moon Kingdom to own a two-star guild residence. Rewarding 30,000 guild popularity, 500 gold coins to the guild, and one guild smithy promotion order. White River City System Announcement Congratulations to Zero Wing for becoming the first guild in White River City to own a two-star guild residence. Rewarding 10,000 guild popularity and 200 gold coins. The system announcement repeated three times, and every player in White River City heard it loud and clear. Damn. What is this crap? Our guild hasn't even obtained a guild residence, yet, already, Zero Wing has a two-star guild residence. What's this two-star residence thingy? Lots and lots of money. Suddenly, Star Moon Kingdom's official forums exploded with activity. Everyone discussed Zero Wing, and the various large guilds had also begun asking around about the benefits of a two-star guild residence. Also, what was a guild smithy promotion order? However, the activity on Star Moon Kingdom's forums paled in comparison to White River Cities. Zero Wing is simply too amazing. Overwhelming Smile has only managed to establish its guild residence after much difficulty, yet, Zero Wing has already obtained a two-star guild residence. I've just received news that Zero Wing's warehouse has received an influx of top-tier equipment. 
There are even level 30 dark gold weapons in there. Now, Zero Wing's guild residence has been promoted to two stars. Zero Wing is simply overpowered. It seems that Zero Wing is still the true overlord of White River City. Although Overwhelming Smile is rich, it still cannot compete with Zero Wing. Now, even Overwhelming Smile's financial power in the game is no match for Zero Wing. We will have a better future if we join Zero Wing. That's not all. I've just made some inquiries and found out that guilds can establish a guild smithy inside a two-star guild residence. The repair fees there are 10% cheaper than elsewhere. Meanwhile, that guild smithy promotion order can be used to promote a one-star guild smithy into a two-star guild smithy. The repair fees of a two-star are even lower, 15% cheaper. You can save so much on repair fees alone. Other guilds have no chance against Zero Wing. All hail Zero Wing. I want to join Zero Wing. For a time, Zero Wing became the number one guild in the hearts of White River City's players of White River City. Suddenly, White River City went into a frenzy as players tried to join Zero Wing. Chapter 486, Generous Benefits Inside the Adventurers Association, Cherfone was currently applying to establish a forge inside Zero Wing's guild residence. Sir, this is the model list for smithies. In addition, there is also a list of blacksmiths. You may choose any of the names listed there. The NPC at the counter smiled as she passed two lists to Cherfone. In God's Domain, buildings were not limited to a single model, there was a large variety of models available for players to choose from. Players could even design their own buildings, though designing one from scratch required a lot of time. If not for highlighting the uniqueness of one's own guild, most players would choose one of the hundreds of models that were already available. Promotion of buildings only required a promotion order, there was no need to spend any money. However, constructing a new building or reconstruction required a large sum. Depending on the size of the building, the materials required, and the building's function, the price of construction would vary. A guild smithy was extremely important. Hence, Sherfone needed to decide carefully. Smithies were differentiated by three grades, ordinary, refined, and luxury. Though the price of each smithy was higher than the last, each grade was also more efficient. Ordinary smithies cost between 100 gold and 200 gold. Aside from repairing weapons and equipment, guild members could also sell their unwanted items to the NPCs at the smithy. Refined smithies cost between 300 gold to 500 gold. Aside from having all the functions of an ordinary smithy, refined smithies had a more refined and luxurious appearance. Refined smithies also had a weapon maintenance function. If a player left their weapon in the smithy's care, its durability consumption rate would drastically reduce for a period. At the same time, one could also hire intermediate blacksmiths if they had a refined smithy. One should not underestimate the function of blacksmiths. These blacksmith NPCs all possess different capabilities. For example, some blacksmiths might take less time than others to repair weapons and equipment, other blacksmiths might produce stronger maintenance effects. Hence, hiring a powerful blacksmith was of utmost importance. Lastly, luxury smithies cost between 800 gold and 1000 gold. Aside from having all the functions of a refined smithy, luxury smithies had a rest area that allowed guild members to accumulate the double EXP buff. However, 48 hours of rest was required to accumulate 20% of the buff. In addition, luxury smithies contained forging rooms. Moreover, these were advanced forging rooms, which were far more effective than those at the Star Street trading firm. One could also hire advanced blacksmiths. For the guild's future development, we'll get the most benefits from the best option. Let's choose this 1000 gold model, then. After looking through the model list, Sherfone chose one of the largest luxury smithies available that allowed him to invite up to 10 blacksmiths. After deciding on the model, he began to choose his blacksmiths. Sherfone had received 700 gold from the system reward alone. In addition, he also received over 300 gold for each dragon scale set equipment that sold at the Blackwing auction house. At this point, he had already sold more than 20 sets. Currently, Sherfone had more than 8,000 gold on his person, making him wealthier than any single guild in Star Moon Kingdom. Moreover, gold would continue to fill his bags as more sets of dragon scale set equipment sold. So, he did not mind constructing the best smithy available. Following which, Sherfone chose to hire 10 advanced blacksmiths. These 10 NPCs were the most skilled blacksmiths one could currently find. Their monthly wages ranged between 3 and 5 gold. After Sherfone finished dealing with the smithy, he searched for a secluded location to adjust his appearance back to Yifone. He then hailed a horse carriage and returned to Zero Wing's guild residence. When Sherfone arrived at the residence, he discovered a sea of players crowding the entrance, creating an extraordinarily lively atmosphere. There were currently two berserkers and dragon scale set equipment standing guard and maintaining order at the residence's entrance. The fine gold rank glow from the sets thoroughly awed the players who had come to sign up for the guild. Is that a fine gold set equipment? I've seen it on the forums before. I think it's the dragon scale set equipment. Currently, a single set costs more than 300 gold. Zero Wing is just too rich, they actually bought two sets. Not just two. I hear that Zero Wing's warehouse also has one set available for trade. As the crowd discussed Zero Wing's wealth with astonishment, the newly constructed smithy also attracted their attention. The smithy's construction was not as tedious as the guild halls. 
the smithy required much less time as it had fewer functions. As long as the guild paid the construction fees, the smithy could be completed in less than 10 minutes. Zero Wing Smithy was three stories tall. The smithy's luxury grade appearance dazzled the onlookers, and many among the crowd even believed that they had arrived at the capital city's advanced smithy. The smithy was large enough to accommodate several hundred players, and it was even larger than an ordinary guild hall. This is my first time seeing such an extravagant smithy. Zero Wing isn't giving Overwhelming Smile any chance of survival. Zero Wing Smithy is almost the same size as Overwhelming Smile's guild hall. It's so much fancier than their guild hall, too. From what I heard from Zero Wing's guild members, the smithy even has a weapon maintenance function that reduces the durability consumption rate of a weapon for a certain amount of time. With this, who knows how much money we can save when grinding monsters and raiding dungeons. For this guild smithy alone, I'll do anything it takes to join Zero Wing. The independent players who had come to participate in Zero Wing's test watched the guild's transformation with reverence, their desire to join Zero Wing intensifying. Morale among Zero Wing's members soared when they saw the growing flood of players coming to join their guild. Now, whenever they strode down the streets with their six-winged emblem revealed, they would receive countless envious stares. Standing a short distance away from the residence's entrance, Thoughtful Rain quickly noticed Shurfang's arrival. Waving her hand, she shouted, Yi Fong, we're over here. Shurfang promptly walked over. Standing beside Thoughtful Rain was the expert who Shurfang was extremely familiar with, Everlasting War. However, though Shurfang knew about Everlasting War in the past, the reverse was not true. The five companions by his side were also outstanding experts. In the past, Shurfong had lived in an entirely different world from them. He had failed to reach even the upper ranks of God's domain, much less the pyramid's peak. Yifong, let me introduce you. This man is Everlasting War, he wishes to discuss business with you. Thoughtful Rain slowly introduced Everlasting War's party to Shurfong. At this moment, Everlasting War was shocked after evaluating Shurfong. The pressure he felt from Shurfong was intense. He had not expected Zero Wing to possess another unfathomable expert besides Black Flame. Hello, I am Yifong, Shurfong said, smiling faintly at Everlasting War. This place isn't suitable for a discussion. Why don't we head inside to chat? Saying so, Shurfong led the group into the rest area in the guild residence's smithy. The rest area was very elegant. Even having beverages available for guild members, this rest area was no less impressive than the city's restaurants. Wah. Is this really a smithy? Trailing after thoughtful rain, Blue Bamboo's eyes shone brightly as she entered Zero Wing's residence. It was as if she had just stepped into an entirely different realm. Secretly, she said, Rain, look. That's the weapon maintenance room. There are such high-quality weapons inside. Even the blacksmiths are the rarely seen advanced blacksmiths. Rain, make sure you say something to Yi Fong later. With such awesome guild benefits, it would be a huge shame if we didn't join. Chapter 487, Dark Arena Thoughtful Rain glanced at Blue Bamboo's pleading look before examining her elegant surroundings. Indeed, no other guild could compete with Zero Wing, so it would not be a bad choice for them to join this guild. Ha! Ah, I only met Yifong by chance, our relationship isn't what you imagine. I can only try my best, don't expect too much, Thoughtful Rain replied softly through their private chat. MHM. Blue Bamboo nodded vigorously. Compared to Blue Bamboo's fascination, Everlasting War and his companions only considered Zero Wing's benefits and environment decent. However, compared to a small, unknown guild, the sudden emergence of a great expert like Shurfong was what truly shocked them. Carefully observing his surroundings, Everlasting War suddenly realized that Zero Wing's members were actually quite powerful. They were much stronger than the members of other guilds. As the rumors had said, Zero Wing was the true overlord of White River City. A moment later, Shurfong had led the group to one of the small rooms located in the rest area. The environment inside the room was excellent, and the pleasant aroma filling the air soothed everyone's tense spirits. Shurfong had to admit that the luxury version of the smithy was worthy of the price. He had not spent 1,000 gold for nothing. What would you like to talk about? Shurfong asked casually as he looked at Everlasting War. Originally, I had hoped to ask Brother Yifong to introduce us to your guild leader, Black Flame. However, seeing as Brother Yifong possesses such strength and is one of the upper managers of Zero Wing, discussing this matter with you should have the same effect, Everlasting War said leisurely. Truth be told, we are not players from Star Moon Kingdom. Rather, we are from the Beast Empire, the eighth strongest country in God's domain. As you can see, although we are independent players, our weapons and equipment are not the possessions of ordinary independent players. Indeed. The majority of your party's equipment consists of level 25 fine gold equipment. The level 25 shield and weapon in your hands are even dark gold rank, something extremely rare throughout God's domain. There are not many guilds in Star Moon Kingdom capable of obtaining those items. Sure Foam nodded in agreement. He could not help but admit that there was a massive difference regarding resources between the empires and kingdoms of God's domain, not to mention the difference between Star Moon Kingdom and the current 8th strongest country in God's domain, the Beast Empire. 
Their weapons and equipment are all level 25 fine gold and dark gold rank. How is this possible? Blue Bamboo looked at Everlasting War's party, her eyes widening with surprise. Blue Bamboo knew that Everlasting War was very powerful. She could tell that just by looking at his level. All this time, however, Blue Bamboo had thought that the fine gold and dark gold rank glow effects surrounding Everlasting War's body originated from level 20 weapons and equipment. She never considered that he had level 25 weapons and equipment. Level 25 fine gold equipment was a luxury to any guild, much less dark gold rank. By the side, Thoughtful Rain was also shocked. Only now did she understand why this party did not mind giving them a level 25 secret silver staff. It turned out that these players were all using level 25 fine gold and dark gold ranked weapons and equipment. Is this the gap between a kingdom and empire? Thoughtful Rain was greatly confused. Upon seeing the shock on Blue Bamboo's and Thoughtful Rain's faces, Everlasting War's companions felt proud even though they had long since gotten used to the shocked expressions of White River City's players. You're mistaken. Although there is indeed a gap, it is not as large as you imagine. Moreover, they are no ordinary independent players. Someone has sponsored them, Sherfong explained. In God's domain, both players in kingdoms and in empires face similar difficulties when leveling up. However, since empires mirrored the major cities in the real world, claiming the players who lived in said cities upon character creation, empires had far more players within their borders. As a result of the astounding player population of an empire, the competition in an empire was far more intense than in a kingdom. The intense competition, in turn, gave birth to greater motivation, which resulted in empire players improving their techniques faster. Naturally, the levels and equipment of empire players were slightly better than kingdom players. As for Everlasting Wars Party, even in empires, they were far above ordinary players. So, how could the ordinary players of White River City possibly hope to compete with them? Shurfang's declaration stunned Everlasting Wars companions, shock coloring their expressions as they stared at Shurfang's calm smile. Shurfang's words were not incorrect in the least. It was as if he had seen through every detail about them. Brother Yifeng is as amazing as expected. Someone has indeed sponsored our weapons and equipment. This is also why we have come in search of guild leader Black Flame. Everlasting War did not deny Shurfang's statement. Slowly, he said, you might not know this, but a few days after God's Domain launched, the various major corporations around the world began to invest in the game. In order to prevent an overly intense struggle, these corporations began hidden competitions with each other. These competitions take place in the dark arena. The various major corporations send their experts to face each other, taking the chance to probe the opponent's strength. The victors earn large amounts of gold, credits, rare materials, and other benefits that you cannot even begin to imagine. I have come here today with the purpose of inviting guild leader Black Flame to join our battle team. If our battle team wins, it will benefit a guild such as Zero Wing that lacks funding. Not only can you obtain a large sum of credits, but you can also obtain a large sum of gold coins and top-tier equipment that you cannot even imagine exists. Now, however, I want to invite Brother Yifeng to join us, instead. What are your thoughts on this? Although Everlasting War's voice was soft, it was sufficient to shock everyone present. This was a competition between the top 500 corporations around the world. This competition was several times more intense than the competition between first-rate guilds. The experts that were invited to participate were on an entirely different level. I understand. I can agree to your invite, but I have a request, Sherfone calmly said. He had long since known about this dark arena. It was a gathering place for experts. However, the experts there were far more powerful than the experts one usually saw in the virtual gaming world. Moreover, the financial power these people possess was several times greater than a first-rate guild's. If one could obtain consecutive victories in the dark arena, it was even possible to obtain more credits than what Underworld possessed. Take Everlasting War for example. Originally, he had not been a professional virtual reality gamer. Before God's domain came into existence, he had been a top-class professional bodyguard tasked with protecting world-class characters. He had undergone both specialized mental and physical training. Ordinary people could never hope to be a match for him. Only, the price the Dark Arena had offered was very high. It was enough to tempt even Everlasting War to play God's Domain. In the end, Everlasting War had become the Everlasting War God of the Dark Arena, one of the apex existences of God's Domain. In the past, Sherfong had been fortunate enough to witness some of the matches in the Dark Arena. However, he had never even come near to qualifying to participate. As this was a competition between major corporations, only those who were invited were allowed to participate in the Dark Arena. Request Everlasting War could not help his surprise. He had not expected Sherfone to maintain his composure. However, he decided to ask, may I know what this request is? Chapter 488, Young Genius Although Everlasting War had already spoken, his companions had frowned in response to Sherfeng's reply. They had never expected that Sherfone would try to negotiate. 
Countless people yearned to join a competition of such level. Yet, even many of the experts on the God's Domain experts list had been rejected. They were already stooping pretty low by willingly inviting an unknown expert such as Shurfone. Even world-renowned players fought to join the Dark Arena. Participating in the Dark Arena was already a supreme honor in and of itself. Not only could one win endless riches, but they could also receive the admiration of millions. It was even possible for one to become an international celebrity with a single battle. Not even the ruler of Star Moon Kingdom was a match for the Dark Arena's participants in terms of status. After all, that was a stage at the international level. Thoughtful Rain and Blue Bamboo's little jaws hung in shock, their eyes filled with disbelief as they watched her phone. The competition between guilds and gods' domain was intense. Almost every guild was supported by many corporations. However, not even the backer of a first-rate guild could compare with international corporations, it was merely an ant in the eyes of such giants. Although the virtual gaming industry's total value rose with each passing year, it was still significantly inferior to other top industries. If a guild could obtain the financial support from such a corporation, they could instantly become a super guild, surpassing any first-rate guild in God's domain. With such a good opportunity at hand, Sherfone actually had a condition. However, Sherfone did not care about what others thought about him. Taking a sip of tea, he returned his gaze to Everlasting War, saying slowly, My request is very simple. I hear that each battle team participating in the Dark Arena consists of ten members. Seeing as you only have six members at the moment, I wish to invite three of my people to join. That way, we will have a full battle team. What do you think? You must be insane. Just inviting you is already leader's limit, yet, you still want to invite three others to join the team. Who do you think started this battle team? A youth of in black armor shot up from his seat in anger. The other members of Everlasting War's party were also clearly angry. Everlasting War, on the other hand, watched Shurfong seriously. The member limit for each battle team had only been recently confirmed, so only an extremely small group of people know this information. How did Shurfong, an upper manager of a small guild, find out about this? Suddenly, Everlasting War realized that the young man before him was shrouded in mystery. The only goal of the corporation sponsoring your battle team is to secure victory. Naturally, the stronger the chosen team members are, the better. I can guarantee that the players I want to include are all very formidable, Shurfong explained. Although Shurfong had not personally participated in the Dark Arena, he had a certain understanding of it. After all, it was the future battlefield for the Apex Experts of God's Domain. He had learned plenty of techniques from the matches held in the Dark Arena. For example, he had learned void steps from watching the Dark Arena's battle videos. If he could allow the experts of the guild to participate in the Dark Arena and experience those battles, it will enable them to improve their techniques further. Brother Yifeng, I am afraid that I am really powerless on this matter. There are a limited number of slots for the battle team. Although I am the team leader, I only have one invitation for the test, not the member slot for the battle team. Originally, I intended to test guild leader Black Flame's qualifications. However, even if he is qualified, I believe that, as the leader of a guild, he should be very busy with its management. Even if he has the strength, he should not have that much time to spare. That's why I wanted to invite Brother Yifeng, Everlasting War said, smiling bitterly. The competition between these international corporations was extremely intense. Every position on the battle team was unimaginably precious, so how could they give them away to Shurfong so easily? I expected as much. All right, I accept your invitation. When will the test be held? Shurfong nodded. He knew how valuable the slot was. The invitation alone had already greatly surprised him. However, he still wanted to know how much power Everlasting War, this battle team's leader, wielded. If he could obtain another slot, he would have truly profited. The unified testing time has yet to be determined. Let's add each other as friends for now. Once those in charge have decided on a time, I will contact Brother Yifeng immediately. Everlasting War promptly sent a friend request to the swordsman before him. After Shurfong added Everlasting War as a friend, they chatted about matters relating to the Dark Arena. Seated by the side, Blue Bamboo was utterly stunned by the two's conversation. She had never imagined that Zero Wing was so amazing. It had actually received an invitation from an international corporation. If the guild received support from such a corporation, its potential would be unimaginable. Blue Bamboo's decision to join Zero Wing solidified. After both sides chatted for another half an hour or so, Everlasting War's group departed. Big Brother Everlasting, there are countless experts in God's domain. Aside from Black Flame, how could you invite Yifeng so casually? What if he fails to pass the test when the time comes? It won't look good to our superiors. Why don't we head over to Star Moon City and take a look? There might be some other amazing experts there, a beautiful female elementalist wearing crimson robes suggested. I know. Our superiors gave me an invitation slot precisely because they wish to test my judgment and to see whether or not I am suited to lead this team. They will definitely replace me if I fail. Knowing this, I won't act recklessly. However, this Yifeng is indeed amazing. Based on his appearance, I'm guessing he is only around 20 years old. Yet, when he moves, not a single action reveals a weak point. There were not even any excess actions in his movement. 
I have already been in the refinement realm for close to 27 years already, so I can tell that he has clearly already set foot into the refinement realm. Moreover, his progression into the realm is also not shallow. This Yifeng is simply unbelievable. He is truly a young genius. As for Black Flame, I have already watched his battle videos. Although Black Flame is indeed amazing, his performance shows that he has only taken half a step into the refinement realm. He only displays such overwhelming might due to his equipment and skills. With the power backing me, I can easily obtain things such as top-tier equipment. Otherwise, I would not have chosen Yifeng. Refinement realm experts are as rare as phoenix feathers in God's domain. We are already very lucky to have encountered one. Even if we went to Star Moon City, it is unlikely that we will find another such expert. Alright, let's return to leveling up for now. His teammates could not help their surprise after listening to Everlasting War's reasoning. They had not realized that Everlasting War had such a high opinion of Shurfone. However, they also had to admit the scarcity of refinement realm experts. Even the five of them had only taken half a step into that realm. After Everlasting War and his party left, Shurfone turned to Thoughtful Rain, thanking her, I am truly grateful for Miss Rain's help today. If not for your introduction, I would not have such a fortuitous opportunity. If Miss Rain wishes to purchase equipment for yourself, I can offer a 50% discount. Really? Thoughtful Rain knew how expensive top-tier equipment was on the market. Moreover, top-tier equipment was not necessarily available. If she could purchase top-tier equipment at a 50% discount, she could save tens of thousands of credits with each item. She could save over a million credits if she bought an entire set. In addition, the equipment available on the market was nowhere near as good as Zero Wings equipment. Of course, Sure Foam laughed. Great. I want to buy a set, then. Also, my best friend here, Blue Bamboo, has always been very interested in joining Zero Wing. However, as she has only recently started playing virtual reality games, she's not very strong. Can you perhaps allow her to join? Thoughtful Rain asked meekly. I'm afraid I really cannot help you with that. Not even an upper manager like myself is allowed to bend the guild's rules, Shurfong said, shaking his head. However, I can allow your friend to join and train herself with our guild's elite parties, having her learn the combat techniques of God's domain. Once she's sufficiently strong, she can then become an official member of Zero Wing. What do you think? I'll do it. I'll go. Originally, Blue Bamboo had been extremely disappointed when she heard Shur Feng's initial refusal. However, being able to improve herself with the elites of Zero Wing was not a bad alternative. Chapter 489, Shop Upon hearing Blue Bamboo's agreement, Shur Feng immediately contacted Aqua Rose and had her organize an elite dungeon raiding party. A dungeon was a very good place for players to improve their techniques. Independent parties normally only raided normal mode dungeons. Even ordinary guild parties would only occasionally raid hard mode dungeons. As for elite parties, they raided hard mode dungeons slightly more often. Zero Wings elite parties, however, were different. When they raided dungeons, hard mode was the lowest difficulty they would choose, though they would often challenge hell mode. To raid a hard mode dungeon, players only needed to meet the minimum requirement for equipment, the requirement for techniques was not very high. However, it was a different story for hell mode. Hell mode had a very high technique requirement. Even if players' equipment was good enough to overwhelm the monsters that waited inside the dungeon, that did not guarantee that they could clear it. Their techniques needed to reach a certain standard before they could raid the dungeon successfully, so it was a very good place to train one's techniques. Zero Wing also had a requirement set for its elite members. Every week, elite members needed to raid Hell Mode dungeons a certain number of times. Although this was a stringent quota, members who fulfilled it would earn plenty of guild points as compensation for the deaths they suffered inside the Hell Mode dungeon. This was also why Zero Wing's elite members were so much more powerful than the elite members of other guilds. As long as Blue Bamboo trained diligently and polished herself in Hell Mode dungeons for a time, she should not have any issues passing Zero Wing's evaluation. Following which, Thoughtful Rain and Blue Bamboo each purchased a set consisting of level 25 secret silver and fine gold equipment for elementalists and clerics, spending over a million credits in total. Despite such a large expenditure, however, both girls were extremely satisfied with their purchases. They even felt that they had profited significantly. They knew very well that, should they purchase level 25 top-tier equipment from the Virtual Trade Center, they would have to spend over 2 million credits at the very minimum. Moreover, there was no guarantee that the equipment would be available. After all, every guild was in dire need of top-tier equipment. Naturally, they would not sell such equipment easily. After Shurfong finished dealing with these matters, he immediately departed from the residence and headed towards the Star Street trading firm. Rain, you're the best. I can't believe you actually know someone like Big Brother Yifong. Previously, one of my classmates boasted in front of me about how her boyfriend wore several pieces of level 25 fine gold equipment. If she finds out that I now have several pieces of level 25 fine gold equipment, she will definitely turn green with envy. Blue Bamboo laughed as she fiddled with the fine gold equipment in her hands. Honestly though, Big Brother Yifong really treats you nicely. On the way here, I've researched the forums and found out plenty about Zero Wings elite members. These elite members normally raid Hell Mode dungeons, and they never offer to carry anyone, not even their own ordinary members. 
I've always wondered what it feels like to clear a hell mode dungeon. Now that Big Brother Efone has arranged for us to accompany Zero Wing's elite parties to improve our strengths, it won't be long before we become experts, too. Say, seeing as how Big Brother Efone is such a young and handsome man, do you think he has a girlfriend? If he doesn't. He. Rain, this could be a good opportunity for you. Even an international corporation is trying to recruit him to their battle team. Once he becomes famous, who knows how many people will be gunning for him. Your chances with him will decrease significantly if you wait. You little girl. Thoughtful Rain blushed slightly. Snapping, she said, I'm going to ignore you now. Seeing that Thoughtful Rain had turned around and was about to leave, Blue Bamboo hurriedly pulled her friend back, panicking, no. White River City, Star Street Trading Firm. Smile, how many strengthened armor kits have you guys produced? Sure Phone asked. Guild leader, the three of us have forged over 10,000 pieces. Are we going to put them up for sale now? Melancholic Smile asked. MHM, bring all of the strengthened armor kits and follow me. Right, also bring the gold we've earned so far, Sure Fong said. Although the strengthened armor kits were inferior to the mana armor kits, with three people producing them, Sure Fong did not have to forge the armor kits himself. Naturally, the stock they had created was astounding. With the burden of 30,000 gold on his shoulders, Sure Fong felt that it would be best if he dealt with the problem as soon as possible. After all, there was not much time remaining. The looming penalty for failing the epic quest was also quite stressful. Moreover, Horizon Alliance had already nurtured quite a number of lifestyle players, forgers in particular. They had also recruited close to half the advanced forging apprentices from White River City's seven neighboring cities. The Horizon Alliance even employed basic forgers, which no other city possessed. Once Sherfong accumulated the 30,000 gold, he would no longer have a connection to the Star Street trading firm. Hence, Sherfong had been planning and accumulating his wealth, preparing to open his own market. And now was the perfect time to do so. Fortunately, he had accumulated a sufficient number of gold coins. It was time to display his strength. Guild leader, I have everything with me. Aside from strengthening scrolls, we also have the 13,000 plus gold that we've accumulated, Melancholic Smile said as she placed the money and the items on the table. This was the first time she had ever seen so much money. There were more than 13,000 gold coins stacked on the table. This was the accumulation of all the money Star Street Trading Firm had earned from the eight cities it occupied, including White River City. There was not a single guild in Star Moon Kingdom that could compete with the Horizon Alliance's wealth, a guild would be quite well off with only one-tenth of the Alliance's fortune. If converted to credits, 13,000 gold was worth hundreds of millions. One had to admit that God's Domain's money-making potential was formidable. Moreover, the game had only launched less than a month ago. However, no fool would exchange so much gold for credits, yet Melancholic Smile had no idea what Sherfone intended to do with so much gold. After giving the items on the table a casual glance, Sherfone quickly stored them in his bag. Follow me, Sherfone said as he exited the forging room. Melancholic Smile promptly followed. After leaving the Star Street trading firm, Sherfone led Melancholic Smile to White River City City Hall. Lord Viscount, how may I be of service today? A female manager asked politely, smiling when she noticed Sherfone enter the building. I wish to purchase some land, Sherfone said. Please follow me. Saying so, the female manager led Sherfone and Melancholic Smile to a VIP meeting room. After a short wait, a tall, middle-aged man entered the room. Lord Viscount, I have prepared a list of all available commercial land. My lord may choose any plot of land on this list, and because of your esteemed status, you will receive a 10% discount on all land. Okay. Sherfone only glanced through the pages, not bothering to read them in detail. He then said, I want these two plots next to the bank and the auction house. If one pointed out the most valuable plots of land in White River City, the first would be the plot directly beside the auction house, the second was next to the bank, the third was near the two aforementioned establishments, and the fourth was next to the Virtual Trade Center and the Adventurers Association. This held true for every city in God's domain. In the past, these plots of land had been highly sought after. Renting one of these plots for just a month could be astronomically expensive. Moreover, as God's domain developed, the money one could earn would grow. Naturally, it also cost a significant sum to purchase these plots of land. Moreover, one must also possess certain status if they wanted to purchase land, money alone was not enough. As a viscount, Sherfone could only purchase a limited number of plots. Thus, he chose only one plot per location to begin his shop's operation. Chapter 490, Candlelight Trading Firm Without hesitation, Sherfone requested the two most popular plots of land in White River City. When Melancholic Smile saw the prices, her little mouth fell wide open. These prices were outrageous. An ordinary plot of land in White River City cost over 1,000 gold. If the land were in a densely populated central district, it would cost more than 3,000 gold. As for the two plots Sherfone had set his sight on, each cost over 8,000 gold. If they converted 8,000 gold to credits, they could establish a relatively large company in the city in reality. 
However, Chirfong did not consider his choices to be expensive. In the future, these two plots would become extremely valuable. In the past, he could not have obtained them even if he wanted to. Players frequented both the auction house and the bank. Hence, the traffic was guaranteed. If not for his need for money right now, Chirfong would have preferred to purchase several more plots of land. By the time White River City became the number one city in Star Moon Kingdom, the value of the city's land would soar by more than a hundredfold. Lord Viscount, for the two plots of commercial land you have chosen, one costs 9,200 gold, while the other costs 8,800 gold, coming to a total of 18,000 gold. After including the 10% discount, your total is 16,200 gold, the mail manager said with great excitement. In addition, after purchasing these two plots of land, there will be a 15% property tax each month. If taxes aren't paid for in three months, these plots will be locked. If the taxes aren't paid for in half a year, the city will reclaim the land. This is a scam. Melancholic smile nearly shouted when she heard the mail manager's explanation, flushing with anger. They had already spent so much money to purchase these two areas, yet, they were still required to pay a 15% property tax every month. In total, they were required to pay 2,700 gold in property taxes for the two plots of land. Not even first-rate guilds had that much gold. Most importantly, they had to pay this tax every month. Here is 16,200 gold. Sherfong handed over the money without hesitation. Sherfong was very familiar with God's domain's rules, so he had expected this. Moreover, the main God system had implemented this property tax with the purpose of avoiding someone powerful from monopolizing a city's land. Although the property tax seemed absurdly expensive, gold coins would become easier to earn as players leveled, resulting in their depreciation. Gold coins would not remain as valuable as they were now. Hence, paying 2,700 gold each month was no big deal. A short moment later, the manager passed the deed for the two plots of land to Sherfong. With this, Sherfong could now establish shops on these two tracks anytime he wanted to. Moreover, these two areas were relatively large, they were in no way inferior to the Star Street trading firm. At the end of the day, the Star Street trading firm did not belong to Sherfong. Even if he managed it well, the firm still belonged to NPCs. However, if he established shops on the plots he had purchased, he could do whatever he wanted to them, it was a lot more convenient. Soon after, Sherfong chose two relatively good building models in the city hall, with both being three-story buildings. He could use the first floor to sell products and use the second to establish a warehouse, forging rooms, and other necessities. Finally, the third floor could be an office area. However, to construct these two shops, Sherfong had spent another 2,000 gold. After which, he hired over 20 advanced NPCs to conduct daily management and sales in each shop. After spending all this money, little remained of Sherfong's funds. Fortunately, the Dragon Scale said equipment sold consistently in the Blackwing Auction House, and a large sum of gold coins would fill Sherfang's pockets every now and then. Smile, I'll leave the management of these two plots of land to you for now, I've already given you the authority you need. Begin transferring our members from Star Streak little by little. As for our products, we'll set the strengthened armor kits as our main focus, there is no need to sell them over at Star Streak, Sherfang said. Guild leader, if we only sell the strengthened armor kits at these two locations, it will divert traffic from Star Streak, impacting our business there, Melancholic Smile said, concern filling her voice. That is precisely my intention. I want to lure all of the old customers of Star Streak to the new shops. Just do as I say. As for the price for these strengthened armor kits, set them at 7 silver coins minimum, we can't afford a loss from selling them, Sherfong laughed. Although the Star Streak trading firm was still somewhat useful to him, its greatest purpose to Sherfong lay in the initial business. Now that he had accumulated sufficient capital, he had to abandon it, little by little. After all, the moment he earned the 30,000 gold and completed his quest, the Star Street trading firm would sever all ties with him. If he did not prepare for it now, it would be too late in the future. Guild leader, rest assured, I will make sure the prices of the strengthened armor kits stay above 7 silver coins, Melancholic Smile said. She was very confident about the strengthened armor kits they had produced. Even as basic forgers, their success rates at producing the strengthened armor kits were below 30%. Meanwhile, the material cost for producing each strengthened armor kit was over 1 silver. In other words, the actual cost for producing a complete strengthened armor kit was more than 3 silver. In reality, selling them for only 7 silver coins was simply too cheap. Even if Sherfong had not given the order, she had intended to set the initial price of the strengthened armor kits at 10 silver. After all, with the current average level of players, a price of 10 silver coins was definitely affordable. Guild leader, you haven't named the shops for these two locations yet. What will you call them? Melancholic smile asked as she looked at Sherfong. A small spark may kindle a raging fire. Let's call it the candlelight trading firm, Sherfong sighed as he looked at the deeds to the two golden real estates in his hand. At this moment, he finally had his own capital. With these two plots, he had taken a large step ahead of the other guilds. His guild would have a relatively stable source of income in the future, and he wouldn't have to fear becoming any guild's target. Shortly after, both Sherfong and Melancholic Smile visited to the two plots of land they had just purchased. At this moment, however, the buildings were still under reconstruction, so they could not view the shop's full elegance. 
It would take several more hours before the reconstruction work would be completed. At that time, they could open for business. There sure are a lot of players in White River City right now. Sure Fong examined his surroundings, discovering a sea of players near the auction house. The area was even more crowded than it had been in his previous life. Guild leader, this is a given. Zero Wing and Overwhelming Smile are constantly competing over White River City. Zero Wing is also the first guild to own a guild residence in Star Moon Kingdom. In addition, there are Overwhelming Smile's impressive offers to consider. As a result, many players from other cities were tempted to migrate and develop themselves in White River City. Based on the statistics published the day before yesterday, White River City is currently the second most populous city in Star Moon Kingdom, it is only slightly behind Star Moon City. An ordinary city could not compare with a capital. Even if White River City offered a massive advantage, many players still preferred to mingle in the capital city. Star Moon City Upon hearing Melancholic Smile's words, Shurfone suddenly remembered something. He had befriended someone in Star Moon City before and had intended to purchase land through him. Originally, he had planned to direct Zero Wing's development towards Star Moon City. In the end, he had dismissed this notion and focused on making White River City the number one city in Star Moon Kingdom. After all, unlike in Star Moon City, Zero Wing had an extraordinary background in White River City. Currently, although he no longer intended to develop Zero Wing in Star Moon City, the capital city's population was still very attractive. After all, in God's domain, players were a city's resource. The more powerful a city was, the more powerful the guild controlling said city could become. It seems I need to make a trip to Star Moon City. Sure Fong suddenly thought of a plan that could advance White River City's development further. Chapter 491, Holy Land for Experts Just as Sure Fong was about to head towards White River City's teleportation hall, the clear ring of his communicator reached his ears. Aqua, what's wrong? Sure Fong asked after accepting the call. Guild leader, good news. Previously, your feat of killing so many of overwhelming smiles experts boosted our guild's morale. Currently, our members are flooding the fields to participate in the war. As overwhelming smiles expert parties are no longer appearing on the battlefield, we've gained significant advantages. We have already taken out over 20,000 overwhelming smile members. Probably because we're the first guild to kill over 20,000 players in an all-out war, an advanced NPC from the Adventurers Association just visited, issuing an epic guild quest. The quest is called, Ancient Battlefield, and only the guild leader of the guild is allowed to accept the quest. Moreover, only 10 guild members can participate in the quest. Unfortunately, we can't learn any more until we accept the quest. I'm worried that this epic guild quest might disappear if we don't accept it soon, so I contacted you immediately after learning about it. Aqua Rose was extremely excited when she spoke. This was her first time encountering an epic quest. She had only ever heard rumors of them on the forums. Every epic quest represented a massive opportunity. If one could complete it, they could receive extremely bountiful rewards. Based on the information she had gathered, epic quests would reward players with an epic item at the very minimum. If it were a high difficulty epic quest, one could even obtain two or three epic items. Meanwhile, the quest the guild had just received was an epic guild quest, it was a lot more difficult than an epic quest meant for individual players. If they could complete it, they would reap a frightening harvest. Ancient Battlefield Sure Fong was stunned upon hearing Aqua Rose's words, indescribable thrill growing in his heart. Hurriedly, he asked, Aqua, are you sure you read that correctly? The information on the guild's quest board is clear, and I made sure to read it very carefully. I can say with certainty that it is an epic quest. Even I didn't believe it at first when I was told. After verifying it multiple times, I am sure that it is the epic quest Ancient Battlefield, Aqua Rose said, practically glowing with excitement. If they could complete this epic quest and obtain several epic items, it could help them immensely when they raided large-scale team dungeons in the future. Now that Zero Wing waged war against Overwhelming Smile, morale was very important. The news about your phone taking out the Underworld Guards with one hit had caused Zero Wing to instantly become the publicly acknowledged number one guild of White River City. This incident had also placed significant psychological pressure on Overwhelming Smile's members. If Zero Wing could take the lead by conquering a large-scale team dungeon, gaining even more top-tier equipment and prestige, Overwhelming Smile would have no hope of competing with Zero Wing in the future. However, Aqua Rose did not know that, in reality, what had shocked Shurfone was not the difficulty of the quest, but the ancient battlefield itself. In the past, the ancient battlefield had been immensely famous in God's domain. It had become so famous because of its alternative name. The Holy Land for Experts the ancient battlefield was known as the Holy Land for experts because the map was a training ground specifically designed by the main god system for players. This training ground's purpose was to allow players to gain a better understanding of the combat style of god's domain. In the past, countless noobs and new players had instantly soared to become experts precisely because of the ancient battlefield. Moreover, it wasn't limited to ordinary experts, the ancient battlefield had even given birth to many apex experts. As a result, players called the ancient battlefield the Holy Land for experts. Countless players had dreamed of visiting and experiencing the wonders it had to offer. Unfortunately, this opportunity was too difficult to encounter. 
In the past, despite countless guilds and corporations offering astronomical prices for the slots to enter the ancient battlefield, nobody willingly sold the slots they had. Now that Sherfone had suddenly been notified that he had obtained the ancient battlefield quest, how could he contain his excitement? He had always dreamed of visiting the ancient battlefield in the past. Unfortunately, he had never been lucky enough to receive an invitation. Now, however, he had. I understand. The difficulty of an epic quest is not to be taken lightly, so set it aside for now. Don't worry about it disappearing. After a guild quest is issued, it will be available for three months or until someone accepts it. Since it has just been issued, leave it there for now, Sherfong said after calming down. However, although we are setting aside the quest, I have a few tasks that I'll need you to do for me. Tasks Aqua Rose was confused. She could not understand why Sherfong did not intend to accept this epic quest. Although she knew that the difficulty of an epic quest was unmatched, without accepting the quest, how could they possibly know whether or not they could complete it? It was a pity to leave the quest there like that. Most importantly, it was so tempting. That's right. In order to complete this epic quest, we will need sufficient combat power. I need you to contact Fire Dance and the others and tell them to stop trying to level up to deal with Overwhelming Smile, the same goes for you. All of you should focus on improving your combat techniques. I will also frequently give you pointers. In a few days, I will test you all to see how much your combat techniques have improved. At that time, I will select the top 9 players to participate in this epic quest, Sherfong laughed. What should we do about the team dungeons? I hear that Overwhelming Smile has already allocated their experts for raiding level 20 hard mode dungeons. If we lose the race to raid the team dungeons, it will deal a significant blow to our guild's prestige and empower the enemy. Aqua Rose simply could not understand Sherfang's decision. Previously, Sherfong had strongly advocated raiding dungeons first. Wasn't this change of plans a little too sudden? She wasn't even sure how to react. The most surprising thing was the fact that a busy man like Sherfong had actually offered to instruct them personally. This had never happened before. Having the number one expert of Star Moon Kingdom tutor them would yield effects hundreds of times better than learning from Sherfang's battle videos in secret. Countless players dreamed of such an opportunity. There were even some who had offered 1 million credits on the official forums, hoping to hire Sherfong as their personal trainer. It would be a lie if Aqua Rose said she was not excited. This was just as thrilling as the epic quest. Sharpening your axe will not delay your job of cutting wood. Do you think that conquering a large-scale team dungeon will be so easy without a certain degree of strength? Beyond that, the quest only requires 10 people. We can just have the others continue with raiding the dungeons, Sherfong did not bother to explain further, he could not reveal too much information. Aqua Rose had no idea just how important this ancient battlefield quest was. Raising an army was easy, nurturing a general was not. In the past, no one had been willing to trade their spot on the ancient battlefield even when offered a legendary item, the competition over a measly dungeon had meant nothing. If possible, Sherfong would have accepted the quest immediately. However, doing so would be a massive waste, besides, leaving the quest for players to see would provide a powerful incentive. Sherfong did not have any concrete information about the situation inside the ancient battlefield. He only knew that the better the combat techniques a player possessed, the greater their harvest would be. Hence, Sherfong had specifically instructed Aqua Rose and the others to spare some time to improve their techniques. By doing so, they would also increase their potential gain. I understand. I'll contact Fire Dance and the others immediately. They will be thrilled when they hear about this. Aqua Rose giggled as she disconnected the call. She then began to contact the other core members of Zero Wing. Meanwhile, Sherfong had arrived at Star Moon City, Star Moon Kingdom's number one city, through a teleportation array. Chapter 492 Plundering Resources With a clear moon and few stars, it was already nighttime in God's domain. As the number one city of Star Moon Kingdom, Star Moon City had brilliantly lit streets at this time. Magic lights illuminated the streets all around, making the entire Star Moon City seem as bright as day. As expected of Star Moon City, the population here is not something a regional capital like White River City could ever hope to match up to. Sherfong could not help but sigh as he waded through the sea of players crowding the streets. Now that players were higher leveled, many could afford the teleportation fee to travel to Star Moon City. At this moment, Star Moon City's player population was nearly 5 million, 2 million more than White River City's. If one could take control of Star Moon City, it would significantly improve a guild's development speed, the impact on a guild would be even better than having control of 4 or 5 smaller cities. In addition, the available resources in the vicinity of Star Moon City were very abundant. Hence, all powers staying within the capital city were a mix of both strong and weak. Other than the three first-rate guilds that had set Star Moon Kingdom as their main base of operations, first-rate guilds of other kingdoms and empires also had a presence in Star Moon City. Plenty of second-rate guilds were also taking root and developing themselves here. As a result, the competition at Star Moon City was extremely intense, and in this aspect, White River City was far from comparable. Even the average level of ordinary players here was much higher than at White River City. Before long, Sherfong arrived at Star Moon City City Hall via horse carriage. When Sherfong got there, a majestic and powerful-looking man was standing outside the entrance of the building. 
This man was none other than the Ghost Raider, Lifeless Blade. At this moment, Lifeless Blade was already level 26, not one bit inferior to Sherfoam. Initially, Lifeless Blade was stunned upon seeing Sherfoam, but he soon revealed a bitter smile. Although Sherfeng's outward appearance had not changed by much since the last time they met, inwardly, however, the gap was like the distance between heaven and earth. The last time he met Sherfoam, the latter gave the impression of being very ordinary, that there was nothing special about him at all. On the other hand, Sherfeng's every action right now had an indescribable sense of naturalness. The pressure Sherfoam radiated made Lifeless Blade feel as if he was facing a lord-ranked monster right now. The last time Lifeless Blade met Sherfoam, he had learned a lot from the discussion he had with Sherfoam on combat techniques. Moreover, the latter had even provided him with plenty of quests that raised one's reputation, allowing his reputation to swiftly reach the status of a noble, which afforded many conveniences for his team's development. Lifeless Blade was only where he was right now due to Sherfeng's help. Hence, he felt immense gratitude towards Sherfeng. During this period, Lifeless Blade had raided plenty of team dungeons. He had even raided Hell Mode team dungeons. There were also countless instances where he participated in field PvPs. If he were to speak for himself, he would say that his strength had improved plenty since his last meeting with Sherfeng. However, compared to Sherfeng, his improvements paled significantly. Brother Yifeng, I've already completed the task you requested, Lifeless Blade stated when he saw Sherfeng approaching. In a somewhat worried tone, he continued, but, Brother Yifeng, that plot of land you want is simply too far away from the high traffic areas of the city. You will only make a loss by purchasing the land there. With the same amount of money, you can easily purchase a plot of land in the high traffic areas of the city. This is really not a profitable purchase. No worries, I prefer a place that is somewhat peaceful, Sherfeng laughed. Star Moon City was extremely large. There was also quite a lot of land available inside the city. However, the prices of the land here were not one bit cheaper than in White River City at all. Even an ordinary plot of land had a minimum price of 2,000 gold. With this sum of money, one could purchase a relatively good plot of land in White River City already. Meanwhile, the land situated around the central district of Star Moon City had a price tag of at least 6,000 gold, whereas land in the golden areas of the city cost 14,000 gold at a minimum, the prices here were more than double those of White River City. However, precisely because of this reason, the guilds based in Star Moon City had a constant headache. There was no meaning in purchasing a useless plot of land for more than 2,000 gold. However, not to mention the land in the golden areas, even accumulating 6,000 gold required a lot of time and effort. Hence, practically nobody was paying attention to the land within the capital right now. However, the many guilds in Star Moon City had neglected a point. Since the land of the capital city was so expensive, wouldn't the guilds developing at the capital city at the initial stages of the game suffer immensely? Not to mention the expensive land, but there was also the high difficulty of earning reputation in Star Moon City. No matter how one looked at the situation, guilds that were developing themselves in the capital city would be at a disadvantage during the early stages of the game. In reality, however, that was not the case. It was only because everyone had yet to deepen their understanding of the commercial lands of Star Moon City. Only after some time had passed would everyone come to realize that some ordinary plots of land in Star Moon City were actually much better than land in the central district, and these were the lands surrounding certain special buildings. Star Moon City was the core of Star Moon Kingdom, and many powerful high-tiered NPCs were gathered here. There were even many establishments here that were unavailable in other cities. Although these establishments were not as popular as the auction house, bank, and such locations, the player traffic at these locations still greatly surpassed that of many of the lands located in the central district. In the past, many guilds and players who were lucky enough to purchase these plots of land had made themselves a fortune through them. Meanwhile, the plot of land Sherfone was planning to purchase right now was precisely located beside one of these unique establishments, the Underground Arena. Although only a small number of players frequented the Underground Arena at the moment, the traffic would increase, along with the growth in popularity of arena matches. In particular, players from other cities and countries would often visit Star Moon City, boosting the player traffic here to an even more frightening level. Sure Phone truly wished he could purchase every plot of land surrounding the Underground Arena. Unfortunately, he no longer had that much money on him right now. Forget it. It's your money anyway. Lifeless Blade shook his head and sighed. Including the ownership transfer fees, the plot of land Sherfong had set his eyes on cost nearly 3,000 gold. That was enough money to purchase a relatively good plot of land close to the central district. Following which, Lifeless Blade led Sherfong into the city hall and carried out the purchase and transfer procedures. After 10 minutes or so, Sherfong had obtained the best plot of land close to the underground arena. Moreover, he had also spent over 1,000 gold to construct the best available shop there, and had even hired 15 advanced NPCs to manage the daily affairs of the shop. Witnessing how Sherfong had spent close to 4,000 gold coins so casually nearly shut down Lifeless Blade's brain. This was his first time seeing a spendthrift like Sherfong. Not only had Sherfong wasted his money on an ordinary plot of land, but he had even spent over 1,000 gold to construct the best available shop. In Star Moon City, Lifeless Blade's team could be considered extremely wealthy. Yet, even so, their liquid assets only amounted to dozens of gold. 
Even a first-rate guild could not easily take out 1,000 gold. Yet, Sherfong had spent it casually, as if he was buying vegetables at a market. At this point, Lifeless Blade had even begun to wonder whether Zero Wing, the guild behind Sherfong, was manufacturing gold coins. In the face of Lifeless Blade's stunned reaction, Sherfong simply gave the man a smile. He did not bother giving any explanations. Now that he had established a branch of candlelight trading firm on this plot of land, he had the foundation to begin plundering the resources of Star Moon City. As long as he sold the strengthened armor kits here in limited quantities, the players here who needed these items would end up heading over to White River City's candlelight trading firm to purchase them when the local supply ran out. With this, Sherfone could secretly steal the player population of Star Moon City. Over time, the players of Star Moon City would become White River Cities. By the time the guilds competing over Star Moon City realized their situation, everything would be too late. Afterward, Sherfone discussed matters relating to Star Moon City's situation with Lifeless Blade. He then logged out of the game to rest as he patiently awaited the completion of Candlelight Trading Firm's construction. Chapter 493, Big Dipper Competition After logging out of the game, Sherfone exited his virtual gaming cabin and began today's training plan. Ever since his brain activity increased, it was as if Sherfone had entered a whole new world in regard to his control over his own body. During this period, he had continuously been adapting to the new changes. A human's body was subject to the brain's control. The brain controlled processes such as hormone production, cellular immunity, and physical power control. As these processes involved a lot of information, the brain carried out these processes automatically. Just like a computer, which ran its system programs in the background, the human brain had long since been set to deal with these processes automatically without requiring conscious effort from the brain. This was a sort of self-protective mechanism for the human brain. However, with the increase in brain activity and, simultaneously, brain usage rates, humans could actively control these processes instead of leaving the brain to passively control them. If brain activity increased to a sufficient level, humans could even control their own body's hormone production, fine-tuning their own bodies to increase their own lifespans, maintain a youthful appearance, and so on. In particular, with a high enough brain activity, one could even control their brain's subconscious inhibition of their body's physical power. If an ordinary person, who might originally have had a punching power of 100 kilograms, was able to remove the inhibition their brain placed on their physical strength, then they could instantly multiply that power by over a dozen, or even several dozens of, times. Like in the news, during times of emergency or danger, many people would suddenly display explosive power that they never possessed. As for the reason why these people could display such power, it was because their brains had removed the limiter placed on their physical bodies. However, it was exceptionally difficult to remove this limiter. There were also many people who failed to remove it, despite encountering a dangerous situation. Or even if they did manage to do so, it would be for only a very brief period of time. Nevertheless, with the increase in brain activity, one could consciously remove the limiter placed on their physical power. This was the case with Sherfong right now. The increase in his brain activity had boosted his brain usage rate. Originally, Sherfong was unable to control the limiter placed on his physical power. Now, however, he could adjust it slightly. As far as Sherfong knew, many martial arts grandmasters in the past had undergone long periods of training, in addition to consistently increasing their brain activity, in order to grasp this technique. Moreover, due to the popularity of God's domain, as well as the fact that the game played a significant role in developing a player's brain, many people in the past had also been able to reach this step. At this moment, Sherfeng's goal was to reach this step. During this period of training and learning, Sherfeng could sense that he had already touched the gateway. If he could grasp this technique, then his combat power in God's domain would definitely improve by leaps and bounds. However, if he wished to grasp a hold of this power, he needed to increase his brain activity once more. It was just that breaking through his own mental limit placed a heavy demand on his brain cells and required a large amount of energy. Meanwhile, only with S-rank nutrient fluids could he solve these problems. Although Sherfong had the money, he could not purchase any S-rank nutrient fluids by himself. Sherfong really wished to have a sufficient number of virtual gaming cabins and S-rank nutrient fluids in order to immediately nurture Aqua Rose, Fire Dance, Cola, and Violet Cloud into true top-tier experts and have them set foot into the refinement realm. At that time, Zero Wing's strength would definitely soar, and it would no longer be an impossible task to capture the several cities surrounding White River City. Just when Sherfong had completed his morning training and was about to have his lunch, the quantum watch on his wrist rang. Mr. Sherfong, I am Mr. Xiao Yu's assistant. Your competition today is scheduled at 5 p.m. I have come to pick you up in advance, the car is already waiting downstairs, the young and beautiful woman who appeared in the video call said, smiling. All right, I'll be there in a moment, Sherfong replied before disconnecting the call. Meanwhile, on the ground floor of Sherfang's apartment, a maglev limousine was currently parked outside the building. A man and a woman stood quietly beside the car, waiting. The woman wore a black dress. She had fine black eyelashes and a glamorous face with skin as white as snow. Her long hair was draped over her shoulders. Overall, she had a bright and beautiful appearance. As for the man, he was tall and ferocious. Wearing a black suit and a pair of sunglasses, he was like a ferocious beast, his entire body radiating a hostile aura that made others consciously distance themselves from him out of fear. 
When the residents of the community saw this scene, they thought that a big shot had come visiting. This guy sure knows how to take his time. The female assistant, Liang Jing, looked at her quantum watch. In an impatient tone, she grumbled, just what does Chairman Xiao see in him to actually have us come fetch him? She was the head assistant for Big Dipper Training Center's chairman. Yet, now, she was actually sent to escort a youth. The man standing beside her right now was also no ordinary character. He was called Lu Ji Hong, and he was the personal bodyguard of Chairman Xiao. Lu Ji Hong's strength was simply amazing, he could easily deal with seven or eight ordinary people simultaneously. Even if he participated in the city's fighting competition, he would have no problem obtaining a good ranking. At the moment, the company lacks the support of a martial arts master. Chairman Xiao is naturally trying to create a grander scene, Lu Ji Hong replied indifferently. He's just slightly over 20. How could he possibly be a martial arts master? Liang Jing had noted Shi Feng's appearance through the video call just now. No matter how she looked at it, she could not relate Shi Feng to those 30 to 40 year old masters. I hear that his opponent this time is quite amazing. Even Master Chen Wu has referred to that person as a fighting genius. That person has even defeated several martial arts masters before. I really cannot understand why Chairman Xiao still insisted on holding the competition this time around. The result of this competition is so obvious, he could clearly just choose that person, instead. She had personally seen martial arts masters before. Even from afar, every one of these masters gave off an imposing air that made others feel reverence for them. However, Shi Feng did not possess such a feeling. If not for Chairman Xiao personally confirming that Shi Feng was indeed a martial arts master, she really dared not believe that such a youthful master actually existed. While Liang Jing and Lu Jihong were conversing with each other, Shi Feng came downstairs. When Liang Jing saw Shi Feng's blue sports attire, however, she was immediately stupefied. How was this a master? Whether in terms of temperament or power, he was clearly just an athletic youth. At this rate, he would simply be seeking his own death by challenging a martial arts master. Contrary to Liang Jing's reaction, however, the bodyguard standing beside her revealed a completely different expression. Despite the faint smile Shi Feng had on his face, Lu Jihong felt as if he was staring at a dormant beast. Lu Jihong could not sense anything from Shi Feng's every action. That was right. He could not sense anything at all. For a seasoned bodyguard like himself, there was nothing more dangerous than being unable to pick up anything from someone's action. It was as if someone were pointing a gun at his head, and he still thought the other person was joking. If Shi Feng were to take action, Lu Jihong felt that Shi Feng could easily defeat him in just a few moves. Before the female assistant could even speak, the previously silent Lu Jihong hurriedly opened the car door, respectfully saying, Master Shi Feng, please, get in. We will take you to the venue immediately. Thanks. Shi Feng smiled as he entered the car. However, the female assistant, Liang Jing, was stupefied. What was this situation? She had never seen Lu Jihong act so respectfully to anyone before. Not even Chairman Xiao received such a treatment. Chapter 494, Gathered Big Dipper's Central Assembly Hall Although the sun was blazing, an endless stream of guests entered the hall. At the bright red carpet, well-known upper-class personages descended from luxury cars, one after another, and slowly walked into the assembly hall. Big Dipper's assembly hall was very lively today, it was even livelier than when the city's fighting competition was held. Quite a small number of people. Seated inside the limousine, Shi Feng swept a glance at the assembly hall's surroundings, noticing that the people who came to watch the competition were all well-known characters in Jinhai City, there was not a single commoner present at all. Logically speaking, by holding the competition this time, Big Dipper should be promoting itself to increase its popularity. In order to recover from its downward spiral, it would definitely want to widely publicize the competition this time around. Internal force experts were rare, and exchanges between internal force experts were even rarer. Countless people wished to feast their eyes on such a fight. However, when Shi Feng looked at the scene before him, it did not seem as if Big Dipper had done any promotion at all. Otherwise, the venue would have been completely swamped with people. Mr. Shi Feng, it is like this, the other master wishes to hold this competition in private, he does not wish it to be known by everyone in the world. Hence, the company has not made any attempt to promote the competition, and has only invited a few well-known figures. But even so, that master was not happy about it. If Chairman Xiao had not offered sufficient compensation, the number of people attending this match might be less than half the current head count, Liang Jing said as she looked at Shi Feng, her lips curled up in a mesmerizing smile. Charmingly, she continued, if Mr. Shi Feng thinks that this event is too small, after this competition is over, we can definitely arrange for your name to be known by all in Jinhai City. As the head assistant of Big Dipper's chairman, observing another person's every mood was Liang Jing's specialty. After seeing Lu Jihong's respectful performance before, even if she was a fool, she would have realized that Shi Feng was not as simple as he appeared to be. With such a great achievement at such a young age, Shi Feng would definitely become a dragon among men. If she could narrow the distance in their relationship slightly, the familiarity would be of tremendous help to her future. Naturally, she could not pass up this opportunity sitting before her right now. That person sure likes to keep a low profile, but it's fine. I don't like being watched by too many people, either, Shi Feng laughed. 
Originally, Sherfone had no intention of making himself famous, he wanted to develop himself while maintaining a low profile. If not for the 15 bottles of S-rank nutrient fluids and 5 virtual gaming cabins, he really would not participate in this competition. Soon, Sherfone followed Liang Jing to the backstage of the assembly hall to rest there as he quietly awaited the start of the competition. At this moment, the competition hall inside Big Dipper's assembly hall was already packed with people. Every one of these attendees held considerable status in Jin High City. Plenty of well-known figures from other cities had also turned up this time around. Meanwhile, seated inside the VIP room on the second floor were the few titans of Jin High City. At this moment, Xiao Yu was entertaining these VIPs. If Sherfone were present in this room, he would definitely discover a lot of people he was familiar with here. Seated in the center of the room was none other than Jin High University's headmaster and chairman, Su Wenqing. Seated beside him were Zhao Jianwu of the Zhao Group, Master Chen Wu of Jin High City's number one dojo, and many more high-profile characters of Jin High City. Little Xiao, you've surely given me a big surprise this time. You were actually able to invite two martial arts masters to conduct a competition with each other. This is a first for our Jin High City, Su Wenqing said as he stroked his white beard. A little excited, he said, I wonder if you can introduce me to the two masters you've invited this time around. The other VIPs promptly nodded their heads at Su Wenqing's words. In this day and age, fighting competitions were the most popular event in the world. The status of martial arts masters was naturally extraordinary, more so that of internal force experts. Normally, one could not see such experts in an ordinary city like Jin High City. Even high-profile characters like the VIPs present would not be able to easily meet such experts. Old man Su, you must be joking. How could I possibly be able to invite two masters to conduct a competition with each other? The two of them just happened to want to compare notes with each other, so they allowed me to arrange this competition, Xiao Yu said, laughing. Currently, his heart was filled with an indescribable sense of joy. The two masters are currently resting and preparing for the competition later. It would not be convenient to invite them over right now, but I'll definitely arrange for a meeting afterwards. I hear that the two masters competing this time are very young. Is that true? Su Wenqing asked curiously. Yes, the two of them are indeed very young. Both haven't even reached the age of 30 yet. Xiao Yu nodded, then added proudly, in particular, Master Chen Wu has also met the master that we've specially invited this time. Although he is only 27 years old, his strength is very frightening. He has already defeated several well-known masters. During this period, I heard that he is planning to join the qualifiers for an international fighting competition, and that he has a high chance of obtaining a good result. Indeed, that master Lei Bao is really a prodigy. I've compared notes with him before. Unfortunately, I was easily subdued in just a few moves. Now that Master Lei Bao has undergone over a year of intense training, his current strength should be even more frightening. When I met him before, I even felt chills running through my body. Chen Wu nodded as he sighed in admiration. Lei Bao was definitely the most powerful internal force expert he had met. A martial arts prodigy. In the future, it was highly possible that Lei Bao would become a martial arts grandmaster. At that time, Lei Bao would probably be able to defeat him easily even without using internal force. If Lei Bao used internal force, instead of just losing the match, he might even lose his life in a single move. Everyone found it inconceivable when they heard that Jin High City's famous fighting champion, Chen Wu, had been easily defeated, and that this had happened over a year ago. Not a single person present did not know who Chen Wu was. He was a character known by all in Jin High City. In his early days, Chen Wu had fought many martial arts masters. Although he was defeated in those exchanges, the martial arts masters that fought him also did not have easy victories. One could say that Chen Wu was a martial arts expert who was very close to becoming a master. Hence, everyone in Jin High City referred to Chen Wu as Master Chen. Currently, Chen Wu was still of a relatively young age, and he maintained his strength at its peak. Logically speaking, he should have already taken half a step into the ranks of masters. Yet, he only managed to last several moves against the martial arts master named Lei Bao. One could just imagine how powerful Lei Bao was. Oh! There's actually such a talented character. Little Xiao, you must introduce him to me after the competition. Although this decrepit old man has spectated international fighting competitions before, never once have I had the opportunity to chat with such a master. Su Wenqing's eyes glowed with anticipation upon hearing Chen Wu's words. Seated at the back of the room, Zhao Ruashi, who had come along with Zhao Jianhua, revealed an expression of worry as she listened to the conversation. What to do? Zhao Ruashi's heart was in distress. Although she believed that Shifon was very amazing as well, compared to the martial arts prodigy Lei Bao that everyone was talking about, whether it was in terms of strength or experience, Shifon should be quite inferior to Lei Bao. If Lei Bao did not hold back during the competition, it would definitely end in tragedy. Time passed little by little. Very quickly, the arranged time for the competition arrived, and the excitement inside the assembly hall reached the boiling point. This was the first time a competition between martial arts masters would be held in Jin High City. Usually, such competitions could only be seen on the international stage. Meanwhile, the majority of the people present here today had only ever watched an international competition through TV broadcasts, they never had the chance to personally witness such competitions. 
Just as the crowd was wondering what kind of people the two masters were, white smoke started emerging from the two passages leading to the arena. Meanwhile, the two people who had walked out from the white smoke were none other than the two protagonists of today's event. Lei Bao and Shifeng. When the audience personally saw the true appearance of the two masters, every single one of them was rendered speechless. They never expected the two masters to be so young. In particular, when the spectators inside the VIP room saw Shifeng, they were all shocked. Shifeng. Why is he here? Su Wenching rubbed his eyes. For a second there, he even thought his eyes had gone blurry. Chapter 495, Strength of a Thousand Kilos Su Wenching's memory of Shifeng was still fresh in his mind. Previously, not only had Shifeng defeated the university's number one fighter, Zhang Luowei, but he had also earned high praise from Chen Wu. Su Wenching had not expected Shifeng to actually appear at this place right now. It can't be, right? Chen Wu was similarly stunned upon seeing Shifeng. As he recalled, Shifeng was very amazing but had yet to reach the level of using internal force. At this moment, however, Shifeng was actually participating in this competition. It was truly shocking. When both sides stood in the arena, Lei Bao and Shifeng contrasted sharply. Lei Bao wore a black vest that placed his bronze muscles on full display. His muscles were not bloated, but instead were sleek like a cheetah's, giving others the feeling that his muscles were packed full of power. His disheveled hair coupled with his bestial aura and aquiline gaze made him seem exactly like a wild, ferocious beast. People would not dare to get even half a step closer to him. On the other hand, Shifeng looked just like your average university student. He possessed neither a sharp, sword-like aura nor a tall, robust body. He gave others the impression that he was completely harmless to both humans and animals, that there was no need for even the slightest bit of vigilance towards him. The battle between the two was a competition without any suspense. It was just like a fight between a ferocious lion and a cute little rabbit. There was absolutely no point to this battle at all. Suddenly, it was as if cold water was poured over the hot passion of the audience members. Wasn't this a match between two masters? Why is there an ordinary university student here? That's right, even if Big Dipper is trying to promote Master Lei Bao, can't they at least invite a slightly decent expert? What's the point of inviting a youth that hasn't even grown all his hair yet? Even I can take care of that little brat with ease. The audience promptly burst into a heated discussion, they all felt that Big Dipper's chairman, Xiao Yu, was lacking sincerity. However, seated at a corner of the spectator stands, Zhang Luowei and Lan Hailong were both stunned when they saw this scene. How could he be a martial arts master? Zhang Luowei looked with eyes full of disbelief at Shifeng standing in the arena. Even until now, he still took to heart the defeat Shifeng had dealt him. During this period, he had trained constantly and had even sought meticulous guidance from Chen Wu, all in order to have his revenge on Shifeng. Yet, now that Shifeng had appeared before him once again, the man had actually become a martial arts master already. However, when Zhang Luowei looked at Shifeng's opponent, Lei Bao, a smile appeared on his face. He had heard plenty about Lei Bao's deeds from Chen Wu. Lei Bao was a fierce man who did not know how to show mercy. All those who had met with him in official matches had suffered heavy injuries at the very minimum, and some were even crippled. Hence, nobody was willing to compete with Lei Bao. When those in the world of martial arts heard the name of Lei Bao, even top-tier masters would try to avoid him as much as possible, nobody wished to destroy their own future by competing with Lei Bao. Originally, Zhang Luowei had thought it was some daring expert who had come to compete with Lei Bao this time around. Now, however, it would seem that Shifeng was just a hot-headed youth after all. Yet, before the anyone could voice out their complaints, the host of the competition immediately hyped up the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, before the start of this competition, the two masters will do a small warm-up, allowing everyone to clearly see just how powerful the two masters are. Now, let's welcome our two masters to showcase their strengths. As the host was saying so, some staff members pushed out a punching power testing machine into the arena. The punching machine was the latest model, and it was intended to test Lei Bao's and Shifeng's punching power. The first to take the test was Shifeng. Shifeng was very interested in regard to this test. He wanted to know just how much he had improved during this period of time. Standing before the punching machine, Shifeng took a proper stance before abruptly sending a punch forward. After piercing through the air, his fist made a loud boom when it landed on the target. The punching machine shook from the impact. Immediately, the numbers on the punching machine began rising madly. In just a moment, the numbers had broken past the 200 kilograms mark. A short moment later, the numbers rose to 320 kilograms, this value was already within the standard of professional fighters. In the end, the punching machine displayed a value of 401 kilograms. This result was almost comparable to those of well-known fighters of Jin Hai City. However, it was still significantly lower than that of the city's top professional fighter, Chen Wu. This sure phone is amazing. With this kind of punching power, it is no wonder Zhang Luowei was not his match. Su Wenqing laughed with satisfaction as he stroked his white beard. If he already possesses such strength at such a young age, he might be able to catch up to you, Master Chen Wu, in just a few more years. Chen Wu's punching power record could be said to be the record for the entire Jin Hai City. 
Chen Wu's punching power was 453 kilograms, a value that made ordinary people stare in admiration. With just a single punch, Chen Wu could bend even a thick metal board. Let alone the fleshy human body, Chen Wu could even turn a durable maglev car into a pile of scrap metal in a short amount of time. Meanwhile, Shifeng was just in his early 20s, so he still had great potential for growth. He would have no problem surpassing Chen Wu's punching power record. Old man Su, you jest. This is but the result little brother Shifeng has achieved using only his physical strength. If he used internal force, he would have surpassed my record. Moreover, I have also heard that little brother Shifeng has long since beaten my record. It seems the newest record right now is 576 kilograms. Chen Wu laughed bitterly. Yes, that's right. This record was indeed set by Master Shifeng. Xiao Yu nodded. It seems that Master Shifeng did not use his full power because he wishes to conserve his strength. Internal force places a heavy burden on the body. Since he needs to face off against Master Lei Bao in a moment, he naturally has to conserve his physical strength, Chen Wu explained. Nobody present knew just how demanding internal force was on a person's body. Even internal force experts would not casually use it. Otherwise, they would be lying on the floor, unconscious, in just a few moves. Hence, only a fool would use internal force in this test right now. Seated in the back row of the VIP room, Zhao Ruashi was very elated upon seeing Shifeng's test result. Only she knew how much Shifeng had improved. Previously, Shifeng's test results without using internal force were less than 300 kilograms. After not seeing him for a period of time, Shifeng's punching power had actually exceeded the 400 kilograms threshold. If Chen Wu were to find out about this improvement, he would definitely jump up in shock. However, as the occupants of the VIP room were conversing with each other, Lei Bao started his test. Ha! Huh. Letting out a shout, Lei Bao transformed his palm into a fist, a boom resounding as he struck towards the punching machine. The instant Lei Bao's fist landed on the target, the spiraling force borne by the fist pierced the target. Lei Bao's fist ended up landing directly on the steel plate behind the target. Bang! The durable steel plate was dented right away, and even the entire punching machine itself was knocked backwards. Meanwhile, cracks also started appearing on the marble floor beneath Lei Bao's feet, as if it had been struck by a sledgehammer. Ding! 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 The punching machine rang continuously. Most people in the spectator stands might be unfamiliar with this sound. However, for those who frequently trained and tested themselves, this was a sound that garnered their reverence. Because this sound was none other than the prompt for a record being broken. At this moment, however, nobody in the spectator stands was reacting to the sounds produced by the punching machine, because everyone was completely stunned by Lei Bao's destructive punch. Is he even human? Zhao Ruashi's alluring eyes widened, her attention fully focused on the value displayed by the punching power testing machine. 656 kilograms. This record was far above the one Shifeng had set. Sure enough, Lei Bao really is a martial arts prodigy. Even the strength he has achieved through training is incomparable to that of ordinary people, Chen Wu said, shocked. Chapter 496, Tiger Roaring Lei Bao's punch had stunned the entire assembly hall. A moment later, a loud round of applause, as well as gasps of admiration, filled the room. When this punch landed, it was as if a small car had struck the punching machine. In particular, if the steel plate were swapped with a human being, the end result would be horrifying. Master Chen Wu, is this the power of internal force? Zhao Jianhua could not help but ask. This was his first time seeing such destructive force from another human being. No. Chen Wu shook his head. He then explained, I've previously said that using internal force places a heavy burden on the body, and internal force experts would not casually use it. The same holds true even in a battle. Master Lei Bao achieved this result before us right now without using internal force, this is just his normal strength. This is also the reason why I am so shocked. Despite being called the fighting genius of Jin High City, Chen Wu's maximum punching strength was only 453 kilograms. In comparison, a martial arts prodigy like Lei Bao had managed to achieve a punching power of 656 kilograms without even using internal force. He truly possessed a strength of a thousand kilos. The gap between them was like the difference between heaven and earth. Little brother Shifeng will not have an easy time in this match. Chen Wu grew more alert as he looked at Lei Bao. Master Lei Bao is famous for not knowing how to hold back. Even when I sought him out to exchange pointers back then, he ended up breaking three of my ribs. I had to stay in the hospital for over a month for a full recovery. Now, he has even surpassed his strength from back then. If little brother Shifeng is not careful, it is quite possible that he will be hospitalized for over half a year, and there might even be residual damage. Upon hearing Chen Wu's words, Zhao Ruashi, who was seated at the back of the VIP room, grew even more anxious. Though she wished to stop this competition right now, she was powerless to do so. Both parties were martial arts masters. Since both sides had long since agreed to this match, and even the invited audience had already arrived, things had passed the point of no return by now. Shifeng's normal punching power was just slightly over 400 kilograms. Even if he used internal force, he would at most reach the level of Lei Bao when the latter was not using internal force. 
However, just how taxing was internal force? On the other hand, Lei Bao's every action carried the strength of a thousand kilos, he could send an endless stream of these powerful blows. It was highly unlikely that Shir Feng would emerge victorious in this competition. In truth, not even Xiao Yu had expected the gap between the two to be so wide. If he had known about this earlier, this competition would be absolutely unnecessary. It seems that I can only make amends with Shir Feng after this event is over. Xiao Yu had never expected Lei Bao to be so strong. With the addition of Lei Bao, Big Dipper Training Center could definitely become one of the top training centers in the country. As for Shir Feng, although he was a young genius, he was still significantly inferior to a current powerhouse. However, it remained necessary to maintain a good relationship with such a talent. In the arena, Lei Bao looked at the destroyed punching machine, feeling very satisfied with his own masterpiece. He then shifted his chilling gaze to Shir Feng. You're very good. Despite being so young, not only have you mastered internal force, but you are also able to behave so fearlessly while standing before me. You will certainly have a promising future. If not for my need to become Big Dipper's head instructor, I would not mind letting you have this competition. Although Lei Bao's voice was not particularly loud, everyone present in the assembly hall could hear his every word clearly. The arrogance in his tone was also unwavering, and one could not help but want to submit to him, heart and soul. I have always looked fondly upon martial arts geniuses. I won't try to bully you in this match. If you can last 10 moves against me, this match will be considered your victory. Listening to Lei Bao's words, everyone present found themselves admiring the man's magnanimity. Sure enough, a martial arts master would not bully those weaker than themselves. The audience members became even more reverent towards Lei Bao now. What if I lose? Sure Feng calmly asked, completely unmoved by Lei Bao's words. You really are smart, Lei Bao laughed. If you lose, take me as your teacher, I will pass on all my skills to you. I assure you that you can definitely surpass me in the future. This should be a worthwhile trade, right? Before this fight was arranged, Lei Bao had already heard about Sure Feng. He knew that Sure Feng did not have a master, so Sure Feng should be a self-taught martial arts master. In other words, Sure Feng was a true genius. Martial artists were very picky when it came to accepting disciples. After all, they would only be humiliating themselves if they chose a weakling as a recipient of their legacies. Hence, martial artists would always carefully choose their disciples. Meanwhile, a youth like Shifeng who had already learned how to use internal force at such a young age was naturally a prime candidate for a disciple. Just before, even Chen Wu had been tempted to take on Shifeng as his disciple. Unfortunately, Shifeng's current strength was no longer beneath him, so he had to dismiss this idea altogether. Lei Bao, however, was different. He was significantly more powerful than Shifeng, so he naturally had the qualifications to become Shifeng's master. Everyone was stunned upon hearing Lei Bao's words. Master Lei Bao was trying to solicit a personal disciple. Many in the spectator stands immediately turned to look at Shir Feng in envy. A single glance was all it took to tell that Lei Bao was a top-tier martial arts master. It even was highly possible for him to become a martial arts grandmaster in the future. Countless people out there wished they could become the personal disciple of a generation's grandmaster. Yet, such an opportunity had actually landed in Shir Feng's lap right now. Why is it him? At this moment, Zhang Luowei's eyes became bloodshot. Originally, he had been taking delight in Shir Feng's misfortune. Now, however, his heart was filled with an indescribable sense of jealousy. With a generation's grandmaster carefully tutoring and nurturing him, Shir Feng would definitely soar to become a dragon among men. In the future, he might even be able to vie for the championship of an international fighting competition. At that time, Shir Feng would definitely become the focal point of the entire world. What did the guild leader of some random guild in God's domain amount to? Even if it was the guild leader of a first-rate guild, they would be far from comparable to a world-class fighter. These people were all monsters who had surpassed the limits of the human body. Countless corporations would be willing to sponsor them. The money and status they could obtain were beyond the reach of a guild leader inside a virtual reality game. Ha ha ha. So this was your intention all along. Sure Feng could not help but laugh. He could tell that Lei Bao was wholeheartedly trying to take him in as his disciple. Okay, I'll agree to your conditions. However, if I defeat you in 20 moves, you have to promise to do one thing for me as well. How about it? Suddenly, the entire assembly hall went silent. Has he gone mad? He's actually provoking a top tier master. He's literally insane. Not to mention the guests sitting in the spectator stands, even the crowd inside the VIP room was stunned. They had not thought that Sure Feng was actually so daring. Ha ha ha. As expected of the person I have set my sights on. You certainly have a domineering spirit. Lei Bao had started laughing loudly as well. The more he looked at Sure Feng, the more he liked the young man. Ever since his debut into the world of martial arts, nobody had dared speak to him so arrogantly. Now that he was 28 years old, he was only a hair away from reaching the rank of Grandmaster. Unfortunately, even until now, he had yet to find a person to pass his legacy to. Meanwhile, he had only come to this place after hearing news about Sure Feng. Otherwise, how could a small-time training center like Big Dipper invite a true god like him? Saying so, both parties stepped into the ring. Upon the referee's order, the match officially began. Watch this. 
The instant the match started, Lei Bao strode forward, rushing up to Sher Feng like a furious gale. Immediately after, his fist made a turn as he did a half-step collapsing punch. There were no fanciful movements in Lei Bao's technique. His punch was simple and straightforward, yet fast and fierce. When sending out his punch, Lei Bao's body had also released the thundering roars of tigers. Peals of thunder echoed throughout the assembly hall, the sounds were absolutely breathtaking. Tiger roaring, muscle, and bone singing. Sher Feng was stunned. Lei Bao had actually trained both the inside and outside of his body to the peak. Chapter 497 Initial Mastery The instant Lei Bao sent out his fearsome punch, Sher Feng hurriedly leaned back like an agile monkey, he did not attempt to block Lei Bao's fist at all. When Lei Bao's fist was only centimeters away from its target, Sher Feng abruptly contracted his abdomen, narrowly avoiding the attack. Lei Bao's punch carried with it a fearsome shockwave. Even through a layer of clothing, Sher Feng could feel his abdomen receiving part of the shockwave. If that violent force landed directly on his body, the consequences would be unimaginable. The members of the audience were stupefied once again. Tiger roaring. How is this possible? Seated in the VIP room on the second floor, Chen Wu saw Lei Bao's punch, and his eyes glowed brightly and his heart thumped madly. The ecstatic expression on his face made it seem as if he had just seen a peerless beauty. Tiger roaring. The spectators beside Chen Wu echoed his words in confusion. However, seeing Chen Wu's excited look, they could guess that it was a very powerful technique. Chen Wu nodded. With great excitement, he explained, only when a person has managed to merge both their internal and external power can they produce that kind of sound. One could say that it is the proof that one has trained their body to its limits. Normally, only experts at the Grandmaster level are capable of such a feat I never imagined that Master Lei Bao had actually managed to achieve it so soon. With this, it won't be long before Master Lei Bao breaks through his limits and becomes a generation's Grandmaster. Countless martial arts masters had trained themselves desperately, yet still failed at combining their internal and external forces. On the other hand, before even reaching the age of 30, Lei Bao had already succeeded in pushing his body to its limits. Now, he could utilize internal force freely, applying it to his every action. He fit the term, martial arts prodigy, to A.T. Even if Sher Feng knew how to use internal force, when faced with Lei Bao, someone who had pushed his body to its limits, he had zero chance of victory. While Chen Wu explained, the roars of tigers filled the arena. Lei Bao's every move was incomparably fierce, alternating between collapsing punch and cannon punch one after another. Speed, accuracy, and ruthlessness, he made full use of all three of these aspects. After images of Lei Bao's fists filled the ring. Step by step, his violent attacks pressed Sher Feng harder and harder. If Sher Feng stopped evading these attacks, only a tragic end awaited him. Hence, Sher Feng had no choice but to keep retreating. Although Lei Bao held an absolute advantage in this fight, Sher Feng had yet to receive a single blow even until now. So strong. With each step Sher Feng retreated, he could clearly feel the power behind Lei Bao's punches growing ever so slightly, likewise, his fists were also speeding up. If not for Sher Feng's brain activity increasing, significantly improving his five senses and his control over his own body, Lei Bao would have defeated him in just a few moves. Even so, Sher Feng could only last a few more moves right now. He would still end up defeated soon. It was no wonder Lei Bao was so confident that he could defeat him in ten moves. In the next moment, Lei Bao's body tilted forward slightly as he sent a half-step punch at Sher Feng's face. At this point, he had already cornered Sher Feng, there were no more paths of retreat available to him. Suddenly, Sher Feng's body swayed as he took the initiative to welcome this punch. Is he trying to get himself killed? Lei Bao was dumbfounded. Meanwhile, outside the ring, everyone in the spectator stands thought they could foresee the ending scene of this competition. Many already envisioned the instant Sher Feng's had exploded into tiny little pieces. Some of the more timid women, who could not bear to watch this gruesome scene, had immediately shut their eyes. It's over. Chen Wu could not help but exclaim. Lei Bao's punch could dent even a sturdy steel plate. Yet, Sher Feng was actually using his head to meet Lei Bao's fist. The instant Sher Feng's head was about to collide with Lei Bao's iron fist. Whether it was Sher Feng's breathing or heartbeat, both seemed to have stopped completely. Before Lei Bao could react, he discovered that his fist had actually brushed past Sher Feng's face, only scratching the young man's cheek and leaving behind a small blood stain. Meanwhile, Sher Feng's fist had somehow landed on Lei Bao's abdomen already. Lei Bao only felt a huge thrust on and pain in his abdomen. Although he wanted to use the power in his muscles to dispel this force, he suddenly discovered that he actually could not, even in the slightest. Like a steel needle, this force penetrated directly into his body. In the next moment, his entire person went flying across the ring. When his body landed heavily on the floor, he immediately coughed out a mouthful of blood. At this point, he could no longer continue fighting. For a time, everyone in the assembly hall was completely flabbergasted. Originally, this competition's outcome should have been Lei Bao's victory. Yet, such a sudden reversal had actually happened. Nobody in the audience had even managed to get a clear view of what had happened. They had only seen Lei Bao's fist penetrating Sher Feng's head. In the next moment, Sher Feng's fist was already on Lei Bao's abdomen, and in the end, Sher Feng was the victor of this competition. 
Master Chen Wu, you are an expert yourself. Can you tell us what exactly happened just now? Su Wenqing was extremely curious about this situation. Everyone else seated near Chen Wu promptly turned to look at the martial arts master as well, hoping to obtain an answer from him. After some time passed. I have no idea, either, Chen Wu said as he shook his head. The two's exchange had simply been too fast. Their speeds were already beyond what he could respond to. Hence, not even he knew what Sher Feng had done exactly. He only knew that Lei Bao's lethal punch had not landed on Sher Feng. However, who was Lei Bao? Back then, the situation had already reached the point of no return. Even if Lei Bao did not wish to kill Sher Feng, he could do nothing to change the sudden development. Yet, Sher Feng had actually managed to evade Lei Bao's punch. Even more inconceivably, Chen Wu had not even seen when Sher Feng punched. Even Lei Bao had failed to react to the attack in time. You. At this moment, Lei Bao managed to pull himself back to his feet, and his eyes were filled with disbelief as he looked at Sher Feng who was currently standing proudly and calmly in the ring. Others might not have seen what had happened before, but when Lei Bao carefully tried recalling it, he immediately came to a realization. However, Lei Bao simply could not bring himself to believe that. A student barely in his twenties had actually broken past his body's limits and taken that first step ahead of him. Although it was only for an instant, Lei Bao had seen it very clearly. Midway through Sher Feng's charge, Sher Feng's body had actually accelerated once more. At the moment of life and death, Sher Feng had actually managed to evade his fist and, in turn, landed a punch on him. While the audience had their heads in the clouds, trying to recall the scene where Sher Feng defeated Lei Bao, Zhang Luowei, and Lan Hailong, seated in the spectator stands, were both frozen with fear. Their hearts were also filled with immense regret. For a moment, they looked like they had aged more than a dozen years. After this battle, everybody would know about Sher Feng. His future would also be limitless. As of this moment, he was already a big shot of Jin High City. Meanwhile, Zhang Luowei, as Sher Feng's fellow student, had actually tried to take action against Sher Feng. Looking back at his past actions, he had simply been seeking his own death. As for Lan Hailong, if he had known before that Sher Feng was actually so powerful, he would have long since given his all to recruit Sher Feng. He definitely would not have feuded with Sher Feng over a measly Ling Feilong. At this point, both Zhang Luowei and Lan Hailong entertained thoughts of getting rid of Ling Feilong. If not for that damnable Ling Feilong's little tricks, they would have long since climbed onto Sher Feng's massive boat and ridden along his waves of success, instead of being enemies with Sher Feng as they were right now. Luo Wei, tomorrow, you and I will both go and meet with Sher Feng. If we do not dispel the rage in his heart, our future will be grim, Lan Hailong whispered helplessly. Indeed. Fortunately, we only have a minor dispute with Sher Feng. The main problem is Ling Feilong. After we return, we must make a clean break with him. It would be best if we taught Ling Feilong a lesson as well. Perhaps this might even make Sher Feng forget about all the earlier unpleasant rise. Although Zhang Luo Wei was extremely reluctant, he still nodded his head heavily in reply to Lan Hailong's words. Chapter 498, Overnight Fame Although the competition only lasted a moment, none of the spectators had been disappointed by the show. On the contrary, the stands exploded with excitement. He defeated Master Lei Bao at such a young age, his future will definitely be limitless. We really didn't waste the trip. Get Master Sher Feng's address. Rearrange my schedule as well. We must pay Master Sher Feng a visit. The audience was not comprised of your average citizens. Every one of them was a reputable member of society. Now that Sher Feng had defeated a top-tier master like Lei Bao, his future was limitless. A small stage like Jin High City would not hold Sher Feng. He could only shine brightest on the world stage. If they did not try to befriend Sher Feng now, they would never qualify to do so in the future. However, compared to these guests, the chairman of Big Dipper, Xiao Yu, was so happy that he had nearly failed to contain his grin. He had originally thought that Lei Bao's willingness to become the training center's head instructor had been Big Dipper's greatest fortune. Xiao Yu had never expected Sher Feng to be so powerful, even capable of defeating a top-tier master like Lei Bao. This was a top-tier master. Even throughout the whole country, such mighty individuals were as rare as phoenix feathers. If Big Dipper Training Center employed such a martial arts master, its popularity and business would undoubtedly skyrocket. Uncle Xiao, how do you plan to thank me? After all, it was I who introduced Sher Feng to Big Dipper. Zhao Ruashi grinned, her eyes flashing with pride and excitement. She felt as if Sher Feng's victory were her own, and she passed in the success. Of course, we can't forget about you. In a moment, I'll have a diamond member card prepared for you. Big Dipper has only ever given out five of these member cards, so you'll be the sixth, Xiao Yu laughed. Zhao Jianwu could not help his shock when he heard Xiao Yu's words. Big Dipper's diamond member card was extraordinary. As a diamond member, one would receive a 50% discount, and all monthly expenses under a certain amount would be waived. Throughout Jin High City, only five people had received such privileges, and neither Zhao Jianwu nor Zhao Ruashi's father were of those five. Yet, his niece had actually become the sixth person to become one of Big Dipper's diamond members. Indescribable feelings colored Zhao Jianwu's stern expression. 
Before they, the older generation, could even reach this far, the younger generation surpassed them. Of course, this was all accredited to Shifeng's Feng's achievement. Now that Shifeng Feng had defeated Master Lei Bao, becoming famous overnight, even the giants in flourishing, first-rate cities would scramble to recruit Shifeng, Feng, much less those in Jin High City. At this moment, Xiaoyu was deeply afraid he could not hold back a true dragon like Shifeng. Feng. Now that he had a chance to solidify Big Dipper's relationship with Shifeng, Feng, he would maximize their generosity. After the competition ended, although Lei Bao had suffered relatively severe injuries, with the aid of modern technology and S-rank nutrient fluids, he would quickly recover to his peak condition. Master Shifeng, I am convinced of my loss in this competition. Please don't hold back and state your conditions. Since I have made the promise, I will not go back on my word, Lei Bao said weakly as he joined Shifeng in the lounge. At this moment, Lei Bao was still slightly pale. Lei Bao did not think that it was a coincidence that Shifeng just so happened to have broken past his limits, obtaining power and physical reactions beyond his body's capabilities, in the moment between life and death. At the very least, Shifeng should have already touched the boundaries of that realm. Shifeng was just a young man in his early twenties, yet, he had already reached such mastery. Shifeng was easily stronger than Lei Bao himself. Lei Bao could not wrap his mind around it. Even if Shifeng began training while still inside his mother's womb and had received all sorts of resources, he should not be able to obtain the power to surpass his physical limitations at such a young age. If Lei Bao was a martial arts prodigy, then the man before him was a demon. Even if he were not convinced of his defeat, he had to accept it. Since Master Lei Bao has agreed, then I want you to join my workshop, Shifeng laughed. Lei Bao was a top-tier master who had trained both his inner and outer body to their limits. Shifeng had only been able to defeat Lei Bao due to luck. Fortunately, Shifeng's brain activity had improved before participating in this competition. He had even grasped the beginnings of the technique to unlock his brain's physical limiter. Although he had only overcome the limiter for an instant, it had been enough for him to reach a new level of strength, allowing him to defeat his opponent. In addition, Lei Bao had also been caught unprepared. Otherwise, there was more than a 90% chance that Shifeng would have suffered defeat in this competition. To Shifeng's current self, it was still somewhat early for him to overcome his brain's limiter. The brain limited a person's strength to protect the body. Before the physical body reached sufficient durability, actively trying to remove this limiter would only do more harm than good. Not to mention, Shifeng had yet to grasp this power fully. It might seem that Shifeng had only received a small scratch during the competition, but in reality, his body had been significantly damaged due to the explosive force he had displayed. Even without moving, Shifeng felt like needles pricked his entire body. Hence, the moment Shifeng returned to the lounge, he had madly consumed A-rank nutrient fluids to alleviate his pain. After this competition, he would not be able to train for quite some time. Join your workshop. Lei Bao frowned. Every martial artist wished to remain free and unfettered. He barely had enough time to train and improve himself, how would he find the time to work? Master Lei Bao, please relax. My workshop is a virtual gaming workshop that focuses on the most popular game currently, God's Domain. You only need to work at night while you rest. The workshop will not interfere with your life during the day, you can do whatever you want during that time, Shifeng slowly explained. He knew very well what Lei Bao worried about. Although Lei Bao had never come into contact with virtual reality games, especially God's Domain, Lei Bao was still a top-tier martial arts master. Currently, although Aqua Rose and the others had the potential, their foundations were lacking. They still needed to improve before they could become top-tier experts. However, Lei Bao was different. His combat foundation was extremely sturdy. If he familiarized himself with his body in God's Domain and integrated the techniques he had learned in real life, he could very quickly become one of Zero Wing's top combatants. Okay, I'm relieved to hear that. Lei Bao nodded. He then left the lounge. Lei Bao's addition to Zero Wing would undoubtedly give the guild another fierce general. While Shifeng rested, three others entered the lounge. Lifting his head, Shifeng noticed that one of the new arrivals was none other than Big Dipper's chairman, Xiaoyu with Liang Jing and Zhao Ruashi following closely behind. At this moment, Zhao Ruashi wore a blue one-piece that looked both light and elegant. Her inky hair scattered around her waist like a waterfall, adding a few hints of elegance to her originally innocent temperament. Upon entering the room, Zhao Ruashi beamed at Shifeng, both worry and joy filling her eyes. Now that Shifeng had become famous overnight, the originally silent and unknown boy from school was no more. Now, he had become Jean High City's focal point. Even old man Su wished to have a proper chat with Shifeng. Chapter 499, Rising of Candlelight In the lounge, both Liang Jing and Xiao Yu approached Shifeng with far more caution and respect than in the previous meetings. Only Zhao Ruashi behaved as usual, smiling and laughing as she conversed with Shifeng. There did not seem to be any signs of a barrier between them. Master Shifeng, based on our previous arrangements, from today onwards, you will be Big Dipper's head instructor. At the same time, you will also become one of Big Dipper's directors, and as you requested, Big Dipper will also come up with an area that will be under your sole management. Saying so, Xiao Yu took out a half-transparent card from his suit's pocket, handing it to Shifeng, this is Big Dipper's diamond member card. The card's information has already been updated. 
In the future, all of your expenses at Big Dipper will be free of charge. Moreover, Big Dipper will also specially reserve a special training room for your use at any given time. When Zhao Ruashi heard Xiao Yu's words, even she could not help her shock. The usual training rooms only contained some fitness and testing equipment. However, Big Dipper's special training rooms were different. Big Dipper spared no expense when they had constructed these training rooms. Every item inside was state-of-the-art. The entire room was also controlled by a quantum computer. These rooms were usually only provided to professional fighters. Normally, these rooms contained a dedicated combat robot. Special training rooms also came with full virtual combat videos and combat systems that stored beneficial data, which users could reference and learn from. There was even a gravity control device that allowed one to adjust the gravity in the room in order to produce better results. Furthermore, each room had a health cabin that could help its users alleviate physical fatigue, accelerate physical recovery, and maintain the best quality of sleep each day. Hence, many of Jean High City's professional fighters loved come to Big Dipper. The training rooms in Big Dipper were categorized into four different ranks, basic, intermediate, advanced, and special. While the cost of each room increased with rank, the benefits also increased. It was especially true for the gravity settings. In the basic training room, one could adjust the room's gravity by 2G. The intermediate training room's gravity could be adjusted by 3G. In advanced training rooms, one could change the gravity by 4G. In special training rooms, one could increase or decrease the gravity by 6G. It was impossible for ordinary people to train in such an environment. Even moving one's fingers would be difficult. As for the rental fees, ordinary people could not even afford a basic training room. It cost 3,000 credits to rent a basic training room for a day, that was almost a typical person's monthly salary, of course, your average citizen didn't even qualify to become a member of Big Dipper, to begin with. To professional fighters, however, this was easily affordable. The intermediate training rooms cost 5,000 credits per day. A majority of the city's professional fighters usually preferred to rent intermediate training rooms. Unfortunately, there was not many available. Big Dipper only had 20 advanced training rooms, and they cost 10,000 credits to rent per day. This was practically the average price of renting a room at a 7-star hotel. As for special training rooms, there were only 5 in the Big Dipper Training Center, or better yet, in all of Jean High City. The rental for these rooms was 30,000 credits per day. However, one would be lucky if they even had the chance to rent one of these rooms. Yet, now, Big Dipper had specifically reserved one of these rooms for sure foam. Countless people would definitely turn green with envy if they found out. I'll have to trouble Chairman Xiao, then. Sure Phone did not hold back as he accepted the Diamond Member card. With the special training room's gravity enhancement, his future training would yield far better results. Master Sure Phone, there is also the matter of the 15 bottles of S-rank nutrient fluids and 5 virtual gaming cabins that we previously agreed to. Our board of directors has unanimously agreed to increase the count to 30 bottles and 10 virtual gaming cabins. We will have the items delivered to you in a few days, Xiao Yu said with a smile. Also, I will have my head assistant, Liang Jing, follow you. She is always very efficient. If you have any matters in Big Dipper you need to deal with, please let her take care of them for you. All right. Sure Fong did not refuse Xiao Yu's offer. He had no reason to refuse to begin with. Aside from how important S-rank nutrient fluids were to him, just the 10 virtual gaming cabins could raise Zero Wing's workshop to a whole new level. It would no longer be just your average workshop. As for the assistant named Liang Jing, Sure Fong did not know much about Big Dipper. If he wanted Big Dipper to take care of some matters for him, such as training the members of his workshop, an assistant like Liang Jing would definitely come in handy, she could save him a lot of trouble. Regardless of the other's optimistic view of his development in the fighting world, Sher Fong had no intention of changing career paths. He only had one goal in his heart, God's Domain. After all, God's Domain held the world's future. After Sher Fong chatted with Xiao Yu and the others for a while, he returned to his apartment. Before he left, Xiao Yu had Liang Jing prepare five bottles of S-rank nutrient fluids for him, which would help him quickly recover from the injuries he had suffered during the match with Lei Bao. After returning home, Xiao Feng immediately drank a bottle before resting in the virtual gaming cabin and logging into God's domain. A virtual gaming cabin also functioned as a health cabin. Only, it had an additional function of allowing its user to log into God's domain. Hence, when recovering from an injury, it would be best to lie inside a virtual gaming cabin. The time was currently 7 p.m. Although it was still dark in God's domain, the sound of three system notifications rang in Sherfang's ears the moment he logged in. These three notifications informed him of the two candlelight trading firms' completion in White River City and one in Star Moon City. The construction of all three firms had finished during the day outside of God's domain. Moreover, all three shops had attracted quite a bit of attention, the two candlelight trading firms in White River City in particular. Both shops were exquisite three-story tall buildings. Moreover, as both buildings had suddenly appeared beside White River City's auction house and bank, they had no difficulty attracting notice. In the end, many players had entered the buildings out of curiosity. Before they had investigated these new buildings, they had been ignorant. The moment they did, however, they were immediately startled. 
Not only were the shops equipped with a full range of items that players required, but the furnishing inside was also luxurious and magnificent. Both candlelight trading firms were far more glamorous than the Star Street trading firm. There were even lounges available in the two shops that allowed visiting players to enjoy beverages while they shopped. Most importantly was the appearance of an item that everyone in White River City thirsted for. That item was the Basic Strength and Armor Kit. Although the Basic Strength and Armor Kits were inferior to the Basic Mana Armor Kits, the latter was simply too scarce. Despite many people having heard of the item before, they had never personally seen it. Now that the Basic Strength and Armor Kits had appeared in the two candlelight trading firms, the first batch of players to enter the shops fought desperately to purchase them, afraid that the Armor Kits would sell out in a heartbeat. Sherfone had given Melancholic Smile the authority to determine the goods prices in the shops, so it was up to her to decide at what price she wanted to sell the basic strength and armor kits for. Yet, despite having set the initial price of the armor kits at 11 silver coins, it had taken only an instant for more than 100 to sell. As a result, Melancholic Smile had no choice but to raise the price once more. In the end, the price of the basic strength and armor kit rose gradually from the initial 11 silver to its current price of 16 silver per kit. This price had far surpassed Sherfang's initial expectation. Even so, in a short dozen or so hours, the three shops in White River City and Star Moon City sold more than 6,000 kits. Moreover, due to the basic strength and armor kits, every player in White River City now knew about the newly established candlelight trading firms. As a result, more players began to visit the trading firms, allowing business at the two shops to flourish. By the time Sherfone logged into the game, the two candlelight trading firms in White River City were already packed full of people. Everyone rushed to purchase the basic strength and armor kits. In addition to the several dozen sets of Dragon Scale set equipment that had sold at the Blackwing Auction House, Sherfone had suddenly become a wealthy man again, with more than 10,000 gold in his pockets. Chapter 500, Exclusive Control White River City, Overwhelming Smiles Guild Residence Vice Leader Yulan, I've finished my investigation of the candlelight trading firm, a level 23 male assassin reported upon entering Overwhelming Smiles meeting room. Who started it? Yulan asked in a hurry. Currently, Overwhelming Smile suffered in the field battles against Zero Wing. Their daily coin expenditures were also quite significant. Although Underworld had increased their investment in Overwhelming Smile, funds in particular, it was truly not easy to convert credits into coins. Despite spending a massive amount to purchase coins, the guild supply barely maintained balance with its consumption. In the beginning, Yulan had not expected that repairing equipment would cost so much. However, her thoughts changed as the guild's death toll continued to increase. Dying once might not cost much, but after two or three deaths, the guild members had spent practically all of their remaining coins. Afterward, in order to repair their equipment, these guild members had no choice but to choose coins as compensation. This situation had immediately given Yulan, who had initially been quite confident, a huge headache. She wished she could choke Black Flame to death. They had already paid out more than 1,000 gold as compensation, not to mention the amount of credits they had compensated. Moreover, it wouldn't be long before the guild had to pay compensation solely in coins. After all, if players did not repair their equipment, they could not go out and level up. If their equipment became scrap, they would have to purchase new equipment to serve as a replacement. However, good equipment was not easy to obtain. Every piece of a player's equipment had been earned through blood and sweat, losing even a single piece was a painful loss. If they lost every piece of equipment they had on them. Hence, before the durability of their equipment reached a critical point, even if players had to purchase coins with credits, spending their entire fortune, they had to repair their equipment. However, there was one point that confused Yulan greatly. Though Overwhelming Smile's losses were very heavy, Zero Wing's losses should not be any less. Not to mention, Zero Wing was not using credits as a form of compensation at all. Its consumption of gold should be significantly higher than theirs. Yet, even until now, not only had Zero Wing showed no signs of lacking money, but it was also spending more money than before. It was inconceivable. From the information Yulan had overheard, she knew that, aside from constructing the best smithy available, Zero Wing had also purchased several sets of Dragon Scale set equipment. At the very least, they would have to spend more than 2,000 gold on these purchases. Not to mention, there was also the gold they had to give out as compensation for the War of Attrition. Even Underworld would find it difficult to spend so much in such a short time. Yulan could only see one end, overwhelming smile withdrawing from White River City, if things continued like this in their War of Attrition. Hence, they needed to make a major change now. They must find a way to earn a large sum of gold. If one wanted to earn a large sum of coins in God's Domain, the only way to do so was through trade. Although the guild quests published in the guild residence were a large source of income, that potential was nothing compared to the money one could earn through trade. Although the various large guilds of God's Domain possessed a lot of gold, compared to the countless players in God's Domain, this sum was insignificant. Even if Overwhelming Smile only earned one silver from each of the millions of players in White River City, the total would be several tens of thousands of gold. At that time, they could easily afford a war with several other large guilds simultaneously, much less afford to deal with a single zero wing. 
In White River City, the most powerful trading firm was currently the Star Street Trading Firm. Not only did the firm occupy a strategic location, but it also possessed land in the seven cities surrounding White River City, allowing it to sell items to players in eight cities and earn tons of gold daily. The amount the firm earned each day was enough to make one drool. Unfortunately, the Star Street Trading Firm was an NPC's property, not a player's. Despite exhausting all of their means, the various large guilds in White River City were unable to form a cooperative relationship with the Star Street Trading Firm. In the end, they could only give up on their endeavors and try to open up their own shops. However, White River City's ordinary lands were not particularly valuable. Currently, the various guilds had all set their sights on the golden lands of the city and were consistently accumulating money and raising their reputation to achieve that goal. Now, however, the Candlelight Trading Firm had appeared and purchased two golden lands ahead of the other guilds. Although the Candlelight Trading Firm was not a match for the Star Street Trading Firm, with the basic strength and armor kits and the full range of products, it, too, stood among White River City's top trading firms. Over time, if the Candlelight Trading Firm introduced several other items that players direly needed, it would definitely surpass the Star Street Trading Firm and become the number one trading firm in White River City. Moreover, unlike the Star Street Trading Firm, a player had established and owned the Candlelight Trading Firm. That signified the possibility of cooperation. Thus, Yolan had sent her subordinate to investigate the firm. I heard that the manager there is a young woman named Melancholic Smile. Moreover, she is a forger, and was once a forger employed by the Star Street Trading Firm, the male assassin said slowly. In addition, aside from that woman, two other Star Street forgers seemed to have defected to Candlelight as well. The three of them produced the basic strengthening armor kits. Good, you've done well. Yolan smiled. Melancholic Smile. This is my first time hearing this name. There really are a lot of capable people in White River City. It seems that I'll need to make a personal visit to the Candlelight Trading Firm to have a chat. Overwhelming Smile wasn't the only guild with such thoughts. Several other large guilds also began to eye the Candlelight Trading Firm. Such a thriving trading firm was no different from a large gold mine that could provide their guilds with various resources. If they could obtain the trading firm, they could instantly raise their guild's strength by leaps and bounds. Meanwhile, Sherfone once again had over 10,000 gold in his pockets, and he began to reconsider the plots of land in Star Moon City again. Currently, as the underground arena was not particularly popular, the candlelight trading firm's business there was only passable. Attracting the attention of Star Moon City's players would be far easier if he set up a shop in the city's central district. Unfortunately, as Lifeless Blade was only an ordinary noble in Star Moon City, he could only purchase ordinary land, he did not qualify to purchase the lands in the central district and golden areas of Star Moon City. I need to think of a better way to raise my reputation. Sure Phone tried to recall information relating to Star Moon City's resources. After he pondered for some time, Sure Feng's eyes suddenly shone. Immediately, he hailed a horse carriage and hurried to the palace. Star Moon City was Star Moon Kingdom's core, so it was not easy to raise one's reputation here. If players relied on reputation quests, it would take them ages before they could become a baron of Star Moon City. For this reason, many players had given up on the notion of doing business in Star Moon City and had shifted their aim towards other cities instead. However, there were many players in Star Moon City. There was bound to be a few amazing characters amongst the millions of players. In the past, there were several independent players who had taken the lead and managed to become barons, even viscounts, before the various large guilds. In the end, these independent players had claimed a few good lands for themselves, taking the opportunity to make a fortune. The monthly rental they received was enough to allow them to live in luxury for the rest of their days. Despite being independent players, these few individuals were not ordinary characters, they were not penniless individuals. Instead, they were relatively wealthy individuals. They had been relatively famous in several other virtual reality games and had earned large sums of money during their time playing those games. Meanwhile, through a special method, these people had managed to grind large amounts of reputation points in a relatively short amount of time, quickly becoming barons. After this incident was revealed, these players had become the envy of every player in Star Moon City. That method was very simple. Players needed to purchase some supplies with coins, then contribute these supplies to a certain Grand Duke to receive reputation points for Star Moon City. Unfortunately, the conversion ratio of coins to reputation points would make any ordinary player curse the system. However, Sherfone did not lack money right now, he only lacked time. Even if it were a more expensive method, he would still employ it. 